You're not possessing a human body, Cole. You actually look like that. Yes. But a spirit's true form is always monstrous, or at least unnatural. The world doesn't make sense to them. It's too real. That's why they look wrong. And this is how you want to look? I want to help. Looking doesn't matter. Can you change your form, Cole? If you wanted to look like something else. But I don't want to look like something else. Hmm. There are magisters who'd be ecstatic if they could summon a demon who could pass for human. They would use it to hurt people. You're right about that. They would. Do you need to eat, Cole? Or sleep? I thought I had to, but I don't. The old songs can pull me. That's something. I don't know what, but it's something. What about when you're injured? Why do you bleed? Is it because you think you have to? Is that why you bleed? I, well, uh, yes. You have me there. <laughs> you ask a lot of questions, Dorian. I'm curious about you. I had no idea something like you was possible. I'm curious about you, too. You can ask me questions if you like. I'm not sure why you'd want to, but... Oh, good. Thank you. I'm going to regret this, aren't I? Dorian, you said I could ask you questions. It's true. I did say that. Why are you so angry at your father? He wants to help, and you know he does, but... I'm not certain I can explain it to you. You love him, but you're angry. They mix together, boiling in the belly until it kneads into a knot. Sometimes... Sometimes love isn't enough, Cole. Love isn't enough. Enough what? You didn't explain, Dorian. <sighs> I was rather hoping I had. His face in the stands, watching as I pass the test. So proud there's tears in his eyes. Anything to make him happy. Anything. Why isn't that true anymore? Cole, this... is not the sort of discussion for walking around. Please drop it. I'm hurting you, Dorian. Words winding, wanting, wounding. You said I could ask. I know I did. The things you ask are just... very personal. But it hurts. I want to help, but it's all tangled with the love. I can't tug it loose without tearing it. You hold him so tightly. You let it keep hurting, because you think hurting is who you are. Why would you do that? Can someone tell him to stop? Banish him back to the Fade or something? Cole wants to help you. Maybe you should let him. <sighs> Marvellous. Everyone's so helpful. You're an adult, Dorian. You want him to stop, tell him. I'm sorry. I keep making it worse. No. I'm sorry. Of course you don't understand. Just leave me with it for now. I've been trying to imagine how to explain it to you, Cole. The thing is, sometimes the ones you love are also the ones who disappoint you the most. You think that if they love you, they should understand. They shouldn't want to hurt you. So you feel betrayed. You say things you can't ever take back. Get out. You are no son of mine. Yes. Like that. He wishes he hadn't meant it. Did you enjoy the Winter Palace, Cole? There were so many wonderful hats. Did you try dancing? Or did you skulk around invisibly? Dancing is hard. You have to listen with your feet as well as your heart. And not poke around in the heads of the other dancers. There's a lot to do all at once. You're happier now, Dorian. Is that what that light tingly feeling is? I suppose you're right. Wishing but wondering, wounded and wistful. What if he doesn't want me after? But he did. Now you're smiling. <laughs> it's good. Why did you leave your home, Dorian? You know why. I had to stop the Venatori. It was more. There was the man with your eyes, angry, walking on cobblestones. I'm on my own now. Digging around in my head again, are you? You said I could ask questions. <sighs> it's rather like inviting someone into your house and they walk off with the silverware. Cole, you should be careful dancing around with those daggers when I'm throwing fire. It won't hurt me. It's friendly fire. That doesn't always mean what you think it means. Your clothes look like the fade, Dorian. The stuff of dreams. An explosion of colour and sensation wrapped in an enigma. It's shiny. 
Can you feel the bits of fade around you when you cast spells, Dorian? They pull around the veil, pulled by power, then push through to see this side. So when I cast a fireball, it's just the fade saying peekaboo. I don't think it says that. If it says anything other than I'm going to burn your face off, I don't want to hear it. Cole, are those real clothes or... They're real? What else would they be? I thought maybe you conjured them, like your physical form. Do you conjure yours? Is that why they look like that? Never mind. Forget I said anything. That little trick, Cole, when you dip into someone's mind and take a drink. Do you choose what you're looking for, or is it random? It has to be hurt, or a way to help the hurt. That's what calls me. Relinus. Skin tan like fine whiskey, cheekbones shaded, lips curl when he smiles. He would have said yes. I'll thank you not to do that again, please. Dorian, am I handsome? <laughs> you what? You say you're handsome all the time. Am I? I can't tell. You're all right. Might want to rethink the hats. But I like my hats. Dorian, what's a slave? Festus Biomo Canaverum. But you said I could ask questions. That's true. Just go ask the Inquisitor this one. Doran, I really wish you would tell me. I drew you a diagram. Isn't that enough? No. Good. Because the thought of you trying that frightens me more than a little. Cole, the wooden duck I found on my bed, was that you? No, I'm not a wooden duck. I mean, did you put it there? Yes. I couldn't find one with little wheels, though. I'm sorry. Cole, do you hear magic? Yes. Don't you? Spells sometimes make a sound, but I don't think we hear the same thing. Don't your spells whisper things to you? What is and could be music in the mind of strange, faraway places? Not lately. Then we don't hear the same thing. Cole, you saw Corypheus when he attacked Haven. What was your read on him? Fear inside, blackness like a pool of hate. So much has changed. I need to stop it, bend it to my will. Did he actually walk into the Black City? Is that true? Betrayal, blurred at the edges like a faded painting. Too long ago, so much confusion. I'll uh, take that as a maybe. There were people trying to kill me. That makes it harder. Any progress on protecting yourself from binding, Cole? Not yet. Hop to it. You're quick with those daggers. I'd rather not have them pointed at me. What's a desher from the Merchant's Guild doing in the middle of a battle against ancient evils? I could ask the same thing of a pampered noble to Vinter. You can't call me pampered. Nobody's peeled a grape for me in weeks. Talk to Josephine. She can arrange something. So, Sparkler, what do you think of the Inquisition so far? It's interesting, I'll give you that. An archdemon attacking me as a first. Five Royal says you'll see something weirder before the day ends. <laughs> I don't think I should take that bet. I've got to ask, does any of this shit make sense to you? To me? Are you referring to the giant hole in the sky or the creature out of Chantry Cautionary Tale who wants to be a god? Either. I'm feeling generous. What's the problem? Someone shows up, tears the place apart, declares himself king. That's half of history. <laughs> Corypheus is that terrifying drug nobody will ask to leave? <laughs> Even after he puts a hole in the ceiling. Terribly common. So what's your estimation, Varric? Think we can win? You aren't asking me to give odds on our beloved Inquisitor's success. What would that look like? Three to one? <laughs> in his favor? After Corypheus pulled an archdemon out of his ass, are you joking? You would actually bet against me. Now, now, if I weren't here, it'd be five to one at least. I'll take those odds. This is why I adore him so. Enough, both of you. I agree. So morally reprehensible to bet against your own side. <laughs> I am a bad man. We'll talk later. Varric, I want a new nickname. What's wrong with Sparkler? Not colorful enough for you? You must know me better now. Or does the moniker you gave me five minutes after we met still apply? I have the eyes of a storyteller. It's a gift. 
so I'm a bit of light you stick in a windowsill to impress passers-by. All flash, no heat. Hmm. That's actually pretty clever. See? Embrace your place in the universe, Sparkler. Varric, are you and Cassandra... What? No. Why would you even ask that? Truly? Bizarre. I'm right here. Just because two people dislike each other doesn't mean they're about to kiss, Sparkler. Not according to your books. Don't mistake me for that hack who wrote hard in Hightown, too. I can spell. Varric, when you were at the Winter Palace, did you meet Celine's handmaidens? The ones that finish each other's sentences? Yes, I did. They were asking me about you. Personal things. Uh, how personal? Something about your chest hair, and whether you were currently involved with anyone. Huh. Creepy. I'd assumed you'd go off to Weishaupt with Hawk, Farrick. Still business to deal with here, don't you think? You should be thankful. I've been to Weishaupt. It's not good. Carved into a mountain, cold, dour, everyone so bloody serious they can't take a piss. You wouldn't like it. Hawk would be there. And he is quite the ray of sunshine, that's true. I'm very sorry about Hawk, Varric. Yeah, well, what can you do? Does he have any family, or...? I've had to write some letters. Let's not talk about it. Varric, did I hear this right? You met Corypheus before? We didn't have tea and crumpets, Sparkler. I was there when he woke up. And he said what? Hello, I'm one of the magisters who broke into the Black City. Pleased to meet you. That's more like... <clears throat> Ah, I'm a dark spawn. Dumont, Dumont! <laughs> then Hawk killed him. Not very well, it appears. Tell me about it. So I hear you're kind of the black sheep in your family, Sparkler. Where does that saying come from? I'm not a sheep. No one in my family could be described as sheep. I'm just saying, you and I have something in common. Goodness, I had no idea. Okay, not that much in common. How are you feeling about that bet now, Sparkler? Still good, actually. You're crazy. We're beating Corypheus every time we turn around. He's on the run. We're beating his minions, my hirsute little friend. Not the same thing. Besides, the moment we crush Corypheus into the sand, I'll be more than happy to pay up. <laughs> if he crushes us, you'll be dead. That will make it harder to spend my winnings, true. Shouldn't you be married off by now, Sparkler? Little magelets running amok. If my family had their way... Had someone lined up for you, huh? Livia Herodinus. Bright girl, hourglass figure, wicked tongue. Relieved I'm gone, I expect. Sounds like you two would have made a happy couple. Oh, yes. Trading coy insults at every party would have been a delight. You owe me twenty royals, Varric. I'd like them paid in candid dates. I haven't lost that wager yet. You said we'd be arse deep in trouble. This is more like knee high. I didn't specify whose ass, did I? Leave it to a dwarf always lowering the bar. What do you think, Sparkler? Ten Royals says the next thing we run into farts fire. I'll take that bet. I win either way. Come on, just answer the question, Varric. My mother didn't raise any morons, Sparkler. I won't touch that one. You must have an opinion. And you're a dwarf, completely unbiased. There's no way I'm answering which Inquisition mage is the best dressed. Not for all the gold in Orzammar. Also, the answer is obvious. So you're not in the Magisterium? For the last time, not everyone in the Imperium is a Magister. Uh, but they do pretty much hand out seats like they're candy. Yes, but it's that black licorice candy with salt on it. Not the good kind. All right, never let it be said I don't pay my debts. Here you are, five royals. I tried to warn you. I had no idea Nugs possessed such creepy little feet. The stuff of nightmares. You know, Varric, I went to Kirkwall once. Yeah? Bit of a shithole. Yeah. Varric, you've seen this red lyrium before, yes? Wish I hadn't. Do you know if a mage could access its power? Don't go there, Sparkler. Don't wonder if it's useful. Don't even think about it. Care to play another game of cards when we get back to Skyhold, Varric? 
Not if it's with your crazy Tevinter rules. Now, now, nobody ever died from those. Lately. Planning on settling that 50 crown dead anytime soon, Sparkler? And if I don't? Do you have tiny enforcers come strip me of my holdings? Oh, I don't know. I suppose I could always send a letter to your family. The dwarf plays dirty. All right, all right, you win. This time. So these books you write, Varric, who actually reads them? Uh, anyone with some taste and lust for adventure. That's a lot of people. Do the southern masses even know how to read? Oh, you're such an elitist. Yes? I left my homeland, Varric. I didn't up and turn peasant. I see you eyeing Bianca, Sparkler. Hands to yourself. I wouldn't worry. She's not my type. Ha! And here I thought you were a man of refined taste. For fine wine and literature, Varric. Not for... whatever that contraption is. Contraption? Don't listen to him, sweetheart. His people are vilified for a reason. I hope it doesn't bother you to travel alongside a vint, Iron Bull. That what you are. You people all kind of look the same to me. I'm also a mage. Would you prefer me bound and leashed? I'd buy you dinner first. Hopefully before you sewed my mouth shut. Depends how much you keep yapping. Nothing at all, Bull? No trouble having a vint behind you? Hope you like the view. You can't deny you enjoy butchering my people. Hey, butchering implies I'm gonna eat them. Most vints are just gristle and fat in a red wine marinade. Well, that much is true. No canary would accept a Tevinter mage so easily, unless it was a ruse. When should I expect a knife in the back? You're expecting that from the Inquisitor, too. That's different. Oh, pardon me. I thought you said no canary, meaning we're all bloodthirsty savages. Fine. Not all of you. You ever use that fancy magic of yours to burn down a dormitory full of kids? Uh, not today. <laughs> then I wouldn't worry. A lot of other people need a knife in the back first. Think I know what your problem is, Dorian. I have only the one. You see a man who's burned out, who left his people and entire life behind. And for what? You're not suggesting we're similar. How's that mirror treating you? Pretty picture, isn't it? I may vomit. Wait, wait. I'll flex a little for you. Make it easier. Mm. Quite the stink eye you've got going, Dorian. You stand there, flexing your muscles, huffing like some beast of burden with no thought save conquest. That's right. These big, muscled hands could tear those robes off while you struggled, helpless in my grip. I'd pin you down, and as you gripped my horns, I would... Conquer you. Uh, what? Oh, is that not where we're going? No, it was very much not. I'm just saying, Dorian, you carry around this picture of the canary in your mind. Like, you see us as this forbidden, terrible thing, and you're inclined to do the forbidden. I have no idea what you're talking about. All I'm saying is, you ever want to explore that, my door's always open. You are impossible. This is... Oh. Good. I like that energy. Stoke those fires, big guy. So, Dorian, about last night. Uh, discretion isn't your thing, is it? Three times. Also, do you want those silky underthings back, or did you leave those like a token? Or, wait, did you forget them so you'd have an excuse to come back, you sly dog? If you choose to leave your door unlocked like a savage, I may or may not come. Speak for yourself. You're doing all right, Dorian. I know family stuff can be rough. What would you know about it? True Canari don't have families. Finding out you don't fit in with the people who raised you. Having to walk away from everything you grew up with. Knowing you've disappointed the ones who loved you. Burning out so hard you have to leave everything you've known and start over. I might know a bit. Takes a tough man to do it, too. So good on you, you big old fop. Yay, good on me. <laughs> Must grind your gristle, the Elder One is some crazy vint asshole, huh? I'm not thrilled to discover we should take those old legends at face value. Guess he thinks the modern Imperium is a real letdown, too. Why wouldn't he? 
Tevinter once covered all Thedas, its glory only matched by its depravity. It'd be like Coslin showing up and learning the Canari didn't conquer the world after all. Hmm, yes. Priesthood's been trying to explain that one for centuries. What does the Canari priesthood tell your people about losing the war? Uh, the usual. Water comes, water goes, but eventually the tides wear away the mountain, blah, blah, blah. They've been fighting Tevinta for centuries and still haven't won. Wait, you think we've been at war all this time? It's barely an eye-watering slap fight, I'll grant you, but every now and again it heats up. <laughs> That's just force of habit. A real invasion's different. What are they waiting for? Don't know. Someone to tell someone to tell someone it's on again, I guess. Still stewing on it, eh, Dorian? Abelas said the elves destroyed themselves. I'm still wrapping my head around that. Why not tell everyone? Thought you wanted to take your fellow Vince down a peg or two. For one, I've no proof. Secondly, if I did, they'd lose their collective minds. They might decide they have something to prove. Can you imagine? Mm. Good point. Guess that Vince will be pissed with you running to warn everyone at Haven, huh? Not that my warning did much good. Didn't see any rebel mages coming to do it. There is that. The ones who didn't join the Venatori either ran off or were killed. Ah, see? Good on you. Where'd I join the underdogs? I'm thrilled. Really. You seemed remarkably comfortable at the Winter Palace, Bull. I do my best. You didn't knock over a single priceless statue or fart even once near the dessert table. That you know of. I'm surprised you never spent time in the Tevinter courts. They would adore you. I did. After a while, the saddle just got too heavy. I will never understand why Kunari warriors spent half their time running around bare-chested. Thought you'd appreciate that. It's stupid. They should wear armor. You see a member of the Barasad in full armor, you run. Because it's war. They should wear armor all the time. Then they'd have to invade everyone. You're so bloodthirsty. <sighs> we have a Ben Hasrath with us. A spy. An actual Canari spy. That doesn't strike anyone as a bad thing? Says the Vint. When we're fighting, Vince. That's... <sighs> not a terrible point. Okay. Nice work with the magic back there, Dorian. You're pretty good at blowing guys up. It's significantly more impressive than hitting them with a sharp piece of metal. Hey, whoa, let's not get crazy. That staff's in pretty good shape, Dorian. You spend a lot of time polishing it? Uh... Shanta Kafas, don't you ever bathe? You like it. Sometimes. You want to watch, don't you? I'd rather stand upwind. Human sweat smells like pork that's been sitting in the sun. Just saying. Dorian, you've been to Minrathus, right? Of course. I'm not a plebeian. You ever been to that place in the Vivazi Plaza, with the big cracked bell hanging off the roof? With the dancers, yes. You're making me homesick. Watch where you're pointing that thing. Dirty. Vishanta Kafas, I meant your weapon. Why is it always so cold? How do you southerners stand it? What's the matter? Not enough slaves around to rub your footsies. My footsies are freezing, thank you. You've killed lots of my countrymen, I take it. Sure, usually when I'm being paid for it. What? Never just for fun? I'm here, aren't I? Man's got to take his fun where he can find it. Better hike up your skirt, mage boy. I'm not wearing a skirt. You trip on that bustling whatever. Don't come crying to me. So they're the charges and you're the bull. That's clever. Worked that out on your own, did you? You have to keep the name simple so the nobles get it. They pay us to fight, not to entertain at tea. That I'd like to see. I must admit, Cassandra, I've never heard of these seekers of truth. Why would you? They do not exist in Tevinta. But what are they? Some manner of super Templar? Is this one of those sudden secrets like proper hygiene? Once we worked from the shadows, monitoring Templars and mages alike. Ah, that clearly worked out well. Your glibness does you no credit. The Mage Rebellion was beyond even our power to control. Incidentally, Cassandra, I'm well aware you lied to me. I lied to you? When you said the Mage Rebellion was beyond the power of the Seekers to control, I've since heard your order could have prevented it, but instead led the Templars into war once it started. It is why I left the order, yes. 
knee-jerk defense of your former comrades. I quite understand. Your earlier judgment of the Seekers was unfair, Dorian. Oh? Were they not responsible for keeping peace with the mages? And what would you say if one judged Tevinter solely on the actions of some of its magisters and slavers? Yes, let us dismiss your homeland as not having a single redeeming quality. The Seekers failed, without question. But the situation was complex, and you well know it. Cassandra, I owe you an apology. Apologize to me? For what? For judging your Seekers. Considering my feelings on Tevinter, I shouldn't throw stones. That is... remarkably decent of you, Dorian. I knew you'd come around. It was fun to go to you. You get this little knot between your eyebrows. See? There it is. Delightful. <laughs> Continue on this path and we'll see if it remains such. Still don't like me, Cassandra, after all this time. Why does it matter? We are different in every possible way. Not every way. There is my family. Your family of slave-owning Imperial Magisters. Ghastly, isn't it? Toss it all on the fire and be done with it, that's what I say. <laughs> Very well. There is that. What does Corypheus hope to accomplish? Dorian, you must know. Let me guess, because he's Tevinter. Well, you have better insight into the Tevinter mind than anyone else here. Darling Cassandra, Corypheus is from a Tevinter that's been dead and gone a thousand years. Whatever nostalgic vision he's selling, it has little to do with my Tevinter. Or his followers, frankly. Do you truly think the Venatori have no idea what Corypheus will do? Some of my countrymen look at the current state of our nation and despair. They hear how powerful and glorious we once were and think, that would be better. It has to be. What they overlook is that Corypheus wasn't here for our downfall. He has no idea it was unavoidable. Could he be convinced of the truth? You're asking me? I'll wager he believes he is the truth. Why, Cassandra, I've never seen you smile so much. I am not smiling. Now you're not, but only because I pointed it out. I am not a giddy schoolgirl, Dorian. That would be easier to believe if you hadn't just blushed. <laughs> You're smiling a great deal these days, Dorian. I always smile. People like my smile, and they should. I have excellent teeth. Do you always do it while staring dreamily into the distance? It depends how long until dinner. I take it your father returned to Tevinter, Dorian. <sighs> Let's hope so. My father died when I was very young. I barely remember him now. I won't say you're lucky because that's not true. But there are days... I understand. You have my sympathy. Is it true that the right of tranquility can be reversed, Cassandra? It is, although I'll not ask how you heard that. Make his breath, if I count the tranquil into Pinter alone. I'm surprised they used the right in your homeland at all. It's a sentence handed down by the Magisterium. Abuse of magic has so many convenient interpretations. The reversal process is not simple and must be investigated, but yes, it will have implications here and abroad. A little bird tells me you might be up for the sunburst throne, Cassandra. I suppose you'd prefer to see a man in the position. You'd certainly be a first step towards that. That will be less amusing should it actually come to pass. You'd be mad to consider it. Can you imagine the target it would place on you? I don't want to think about that right now. Do you think they'll actually make you divine? It seems anything is possible these days. It's so odd. Like waiting for the Chantry Fairy to appear. Congratulations, you're the ruler. We do not engage in pitched battle for the position as you do in Tevinter. The successor must prove he could slaughter his enemies. He doesn't actually do it. We're not savages. Indeed. The slaughter occurs after he becomes divine. <laughs> That's considered housekeeping. If the Archdemon survived the fall into the Abyssal Rift... I wonder if it can be slain. Proof it isn't an archdemon at all, I'd say. What do you mean? If Grey Wardens are good for anything, it's killing an archdemon. This one rose again. I'd say Corypheus created it. A tribute to his old gods, or an emulation of them. Meaning what? It cannot be slain unless he is? That? Or we need a much deeper chasm. Why are you looking at me like that, Dorian? I'm imagining what you would look like in a dress. Ugh, keep wondering. If my uncle couldn't put me in one, neither shall you. My family once took me to Navarra, Cassandra. You undoubtedly saw more of it than I ever did. I was young, and all I wanted to do was visit a necropolis. I was desperate. They're dark, 
and full of undead, and the smell of stale incense still makes me want to vomit. Ah, there goes that childhood fantasy. So tell me this, are Navarin cities of the dead actually filled with undead? Of course. The Mortalitazi lure spirits to possess every corpse buried there. And then what? Let them wander around willy-nilly? Only in the abandoned areas. The rest are sealed up in their tombs, I suppose. Forever? I almost feel bad for them. After a time, the moaning grates on the nerves. Trust me. How do you want to be remembered, Cassandra? Valiant yet sexy rebel against the status quo? I don't have any control over how I'll be remembered. Sword raised high, blue scarf dramatically fluttering in the wind, sun rising behind you. Blue scarf? Why would I be wearing such a thing? It's a painting, of course. Work with me, it'll be fantastic. If you were still a seeker, would you drag me to one of your circles? I'm not still a seeker. But you'd do it, even though I'm incredibly charming. Yes, I would absolutely drag you there, without question. We hear odd stories of Templars in the Imperium, Dorian. All true. I haven't even told you what I've heard. Doesn't matter. All true. Particularly the part with the grapes and feathers. Oh, I was leading towards that one, actually. You're not as handsome as you think, Dorian. I must be. Or you wouldn't have been thinking about it all this time. Anyone who claims it as often as you do must be dreadfully concerned they're not. Look at this profile. Isn't it incredible? I picture it in marble. Tell me, Cassandra, did your family throw suitors at you? <laughs> My uncle did, waves of them, until I broke one's arm. Then there were fewer. I must admit I never tried that. It was an accident. Well, mostly an accident. Cassandra, my mother has a friend who's a Pentagast. Perhaps you know of him. The Pentagasts are a large clan, Dorian. I cannot know them all, nor would I want to. Enormously fat man. Three chins, four mansions, five ways to sell you out, as Mother liked to say. Oh, I do know him. Cousin Lauren, with the wandering hands. Solus, I take it you study spirits? I do. Back in my homeland, we keep spirits as servants. So I have been told. The things they can be made to do are quite marvelous. You should see them. The Tavinta Imperium is not the safest place for an elf. Ah, yes. Uh, point taken. Do you use spirits as servants, Solus? You'd have no trouble capturing them. No. They are intelligent living creatures. Binding them against their will is reprehensible. How much will do they have? They're amorphous constructs of the Fade. Hmm. There's no harm in putting them to constructive use, and most mages back home treat them well. And any that show magical talent are freed, are they not? What? Sp spirits don't have magical talent? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about your slaves. Solus, have I offended you? If you have, why would it concern you? Because we're here, working together for a common cause, and because I respect your abilities. My abilities as a mage? Well, I realize there's more to you than that. The differences between us are not technicalities to be discarded, Dorian. I was hoping we might find common ground, that's all. Solus, for what it's worth, I'm sorry. The elven city of Arlathan sounds like a magical place, and for my ancestors to have destroyed it. Dorian! Hush. Empires rise and fall. Arlathan was no more innocent than your own Tevinta in its time. Your nostalgia for the ancient elves, however romanticized, is pointless. If you wish to make amends for past transgressions, free the slaves of all races who live in Tevinta today. I... don't know that I can do that. Then how sorry are you? You are still troubled by what you learned at the temple, Dorian. The Imperium is founded on the notion that we defeated Arlathan. It's not something my people should be proud of, but they are. It's ingrained in their psyche. You think they would not accept the truth? I'm worried what it might do to them if they did. That orb Corypheus carries, are you certain it's of elven origin, Solas? I believe so. Why do you ask? There are paintings in the Magisterium's archives of men holding similar orbs. They were depictions of a time long before the Magisters, the ancient dreamers, perhaps. The texts called those orbs Somniborium, vessels of dreams. Could they be the same thing? Perhaps. 
The humans of ancient times took much from the elves. And Corypheus isn't far removed from that time. Hmm. We found elves. Living, ancient elves at the Temple of Mythal. Does that bother you, Solas? I'm pleased we were not forced to kill them, if that's what you mean. I mean them being there at all. Thousands of years later and they live. There could be others in ruins we haven't yet discovered. Shouldn't we be looking for them? So they might be slain as well? No, I... <sighs> Never mind. Perhaps Abelas will do that. Hmm. I wonder if that's a good thing. I can't believe I was in the Fade. Physically. You think that is an achievement of which to be proud? It's the second time that's been done in all of history. That's not nothing, Solas. In all of human history. The Fade is still a mystery to us humans, yes. Probably always will be. Perhaps it's best it remain that way. Your magical skill is impressive, Dorian. You're not the first to say so. Would you not conserve energy with a less flashy style, however? Yes, and I'd live longer if I only ate rice and boiled vegetables, but that's just as unlikely. Solus, what's this whole look of yours about? I'm sorry? No, that outfit is sorry. What are you supposed to be, some kind of woodsman? Is this a Dalish thing? Don't you dislike the Dalish, or is it some kind of statement? No. Well, it says apostate hobo to me. Unwashed apostate hobo, more specifically. I am surprised you do not practice blood magic, Dorian. Is it not popular in Tevinter? While we're sharing surprises, you've done a lot less dancing naked in the moonlight than I expected. Tevinter lore about elves remains accurate as always. I wanted to see you make flowers bloom with your song, just once. I notice you used a nullification enchantment combined with an offensive attack. The nullification disrupts any ambient magic lying about. Things then burn hotter. Don't you then waste an inordinate amount of magic overcoming your own nullification? Ah, no. I warp the veil slightly to affect distance between the spells. Of course. Have you considered snapping the veil warp to enhance the relative energy? Like cracking a whip? Yes, tried it once. Made my teeth taste funny. Two of you doesn't make this normal. Ah, Solus. You startled me. You're always so... nondescript. Please speak up. I cannot hear you over your outfit. Solus, that little flair you sometimes do with your staff, you're redirecting ambient energy to your personal aura? Yes, the effect clears excess magical energy and creates a minor randomized barrier to impair income in magic. Fascinating. It's a Tevinta technique. I've never seen anyone in this part of the world do it. The technique is not Tevinta. It is Elven. Oh, that means we... Uh, never mind, then. But do go on about the wonders of Tevinter magic. Let me get this straight, Solus. You're an apostate, neither Dalish nor city elf, who lived alone in the woods studying spirits. Is that a problem for you? No, no. You're a special and unique snowflake. Live the dream. Official mage to the Orlesian Imperial Court. That sounds exciting. It is an esteemed position, darling, that many mages would envy. Yes, being paraded about like an exotic peacock is better than running frantically from Templars. Better an exotic peacock than one to vint a rat amongst many. Oh, a dig at my homeland. This should be fun. Vivian, are you saying you wouldn't rather live in a land where mages aren't herded into cages like dogs? Which land is that? The one where mages are feared and despised as tyrants? I'm the first to admit magisters aren't perfect, but they've also done great things. They're allowed to. Monstrous things as well. Or you wouldn't be here, would you? Locking people into cages isn't the answer. Naturally. First we execute those who will not submit, then we deal with the rest. <laughs> it's rather amusing, Dorian. Your outfit's entertaining, I'll give you that. The way you sneer at southerners, pretending to be a shark from a land of sharks. But you are not a shark and never will be, darling. They knew it, just as you do. I could have pretended. Wore fancy clothes, convinced everyone I'm something I'm not. Then I could take a position at court, whore myself out, and desperately hope no one realises what a fraud I am. Such snapping for a fish without teeth. You should put on a show. Charge for admission. I know, I'm taking notes. 
I'd see it. That's enough. My dear Inquisitor, whatever is the issue? We're having a perfectly civil conversation. It's true. I've heard worse from our gardener back home. Vivian, we can continue this dance forever if you wish. Presuming both of us are capable. I mock Elysian frippery and nonsense, you mock to into decadence and tyranny. There is, however, something far more important we should remember. Just what might that be? At least we're not Antiven. Quite right. Thank the Maker. I received a letter the other day, Dorian. Truly? It's nice to know you have friends. It was from an acquaintance in Tevinter expressing his shock at the disturbing rumours about your relationship with the Inquisitor. Rumours you were only too happy to verify, I assume. I informed him the only disturbing thing in evidence was his penmanship. Oh, thank you. I am not so quick to judge, darling. See that you give me no reason to feel otherwise. How well did you know Empress Selene, Vivian? As well as anyone could know a woman who lived in a gilded cage of intrigue and responsibility. Are you sad she died? The game inevitably turns against anyone who plays it, my dear. I mourn the loss of a fine player who lived for duty, but her time had come and the Empire moves on. Dwelling on the matter serves no purpose. There is, after all, much to look forward to. You must be greatly relieved, Vivian, after what happened at the Winter Palace. The entire Empire breathes a sigh of relief, darling. Your position is also secure, considering how instrumental the Inquisition was in Selene's survival. I was pleased to have even a small part in the endeavour. <laughs> We're not in court, dear woman. No need for the honey. I don't know what you're talking about. Vivian, I'm curious. You must have crossed paths with Lady Morrigan in the court, yes? There is no need to use that title, my dear. She is an ill-bred apostate, nothing more. Odd. I'd have thought you'd easily relate to a commoner of ambition. You thought incorrectly. It's outrageous that she's been forced on the Inquisition. I welcomed her among us, Vivian. As did Celine, yet the only one I've seen benefit is Morrigan herself. I wasn't happy about it, but she's since proven herself. As you say, Inquisitor, but I would not take my eyes off her were I you. We'll see how it turns out. I'm hoping she can help. More likely she will help herself. I agree with that. Sounds like someone's jealous their position at the Empress's side was usurped. Darling, if I was upset by every sycophant who claimed a portion of Celine's attention, I'd have no time to eat or sleep. I presume you know what they will say of Corypheus, Dorian. Darkspawn? Madman? Relic of an unwanted past? Don't keep me in suspense. They will say he is Tevinter. No. I'm aware you claim to be here to counter that, but the damage is done. Uh, I'm not here on behalf of my nation's reputation, Vivian. I'm here to do what is right. If only more of your countrymen felt as you do. Vivian, you've joined the exclusive club of majors who've strolled about the Fade. I'm quite aware, darling. Any thoughts? Only that it was a dangerous gamble, and those of us who lived can count ourselves fortunate. Why'd you ask? You were there. I wish I hadn't been. The fewer Tevinters who enter the Fade, the better. Why'd you ask? Are you upset I went and you did not? Oh, I'd rather no more Tevinters enter the Fade. We rather fouled things up the last time. You've walked into the Fade, Dorian, as did your Tevinter forebears. With somewhat less cataclysmic results. No observations beyond that. Only that I'm pleased we got out. Demons don't appreciate a man with good hair. Wait, you're jealous, aren't you? Don't be absurd. I'm trying to wrap my head around the idea that someone walked into the Fade again. We should count ourselves fortunate no cataclysm was unleashed. So far as we know. What are you suggesting, my dear? An invisible cataclysm lurking amongst us. We don't know what happened to Corypheus and his lot. Even he doesn't seem to, not clearly. I'm saying we should be careful what we assume when it comes to such matters. Hmm. Wise words, uncharacteristic as that might be. Vivienne, I heard about your friend, the Duke. Bastien was not my friend, darling, and I'll forego your bland and ill-informed observations. I only meant to say I'm very sorry for your loss. What would you say Blackwall's best feature is, Vivian? His absence, of course. I can hear both of you. 
my dear Dorian, what did you think of little Sarah's last Red Jenny mission? I'd call it medium. Medium, my dear? Yes. It wasn't rare, and it certainly wasn't well done. Vivienne, perhaps you can answer this. Why the bizarre Orlesian fixation with masks? It's part of the game, my dear. You never see your opponent's true visage. A strange custom in a culture where people assassinate each other for putting too much salt in the soup. An additional challenge to be navigated. Fail at the game and you die. And you people call Tevinta barbaric. You are barbarians, darling, but that's part of your charm. <sighs> what I wouldn't give for some proper wine. Skyhold Steward is a sadistic little man who is trying to kill us. Perhaps he found a bargain he couldn't pass up on vats of vinegar. <laughs> it could be worse, darling. It could be an Anders vintage. Egad, we'd be forced to retaliate. How is it, Vivienne, that you weren't part of the rebellion with the rest of the Southern Majors? Those of us outside of the circles could not be compelled to revolt. Ah, nothing like solidarity. This from a man who hails from a nation where mages kill each other for sport. I'm curious, Dorian. Have you ever met the Black Divine? I saw him once at a ball, but we never met. He had to leave early on account of assassination. Someone tried to kill him? Kill him? No, no. He killed a magister. Could have waited until the dancing was finished. Indulge me, Sarah. What do you think of when I say demon? Arrows. Fine. Magister? Arrows. Not helpful, but given our history, I'll accept it. Thaumaturgy. What? Magical endeavours. Helpful wonders. Oh, arrows. <sighs> I can't believe you're scared of magic, Sarah. It's a gift as mundane to me as your bow to you. Surely you see there's nothing to fear in a properly used tool. Tell that to all the proper mages waving their tools in people's faces. There's an image. What about Corythimus? How many proper tools does he have under him? Not hardly enough, if you ask me. And the rebel mages? How many proper tools have they raised? That's not... I don't think I can continue. Right, well, I don't care how gifted you are. Don't cram it where it's not wanted. Maker, how does she not know? <laughs> I'm lost. What, Dorian? Stop looking at me. I'm wondering if familiarity would cure your suspicion of magic. I don't need to be familiar with your tool. Please stop saying tool. And consider how much magic can accomplish. There are benefits for you and everyone. As the maker said, magic exists to serve. I don't care. I like you, Dorian. Don't ruin it. Are they losing their minds in Tevinter? I bet they are. About anything in particular? The Inquisition? I mean, you people believe weird stuff, right? About Andraste. Most of the Imperial Chantry's teachings are the same as in the South, despite some finicky bits about magic. The parts where you're wrong? Yes, quite. The parts where we're wrong. Do me a favour, Dorian. Give me some warning if you're going to bust out in demons or something. <laughs> How do you picture me busting out? I'm walking along and, oops, demon. I mean, it could happen, despite my training. You could also trip and impale your eye on an arrow. So you're going to warn me or not? Certainly but only because you're so dear to me. The people back in Tevinter, are they all just like you, Dorian? Meaning what, exactly? You know, not scary, keeping their magic rubbish to themselves. I'm going to take that as a compliment. Sadly, there's an element there who would welcome Corypheus with open arms. A stupidly short-sighted element. I know, right? He's a piss bag. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> Something particularly funny? You and Bull. <laughs> I, I'm glad it amuses you. But what I get from my affairs is my affair. I know what you get. It's like falling through a tree into custard. Too high, wham. Too fast, wham. Leaves, wham. Splat. I'm not sure which is worse, the mockery or the accuracy. Eh, uh, depends on how much risk the trees had. Leaves. Leaves? You and the Inquisitor, hey? What is that like? Jousting? Fewer horses, marginally. More cheering, definitely. <laughs> nice. I see you're having fun with your illustrious paramour. What? 
Is it showing? No, uh, no. I meant you appear to be enjoying your new relationship. You couldn't ask for a more personal introduction to magic. She's different, so it doesn't matter. It's that simple? Could be. Why not? I meant you appear to be enjoying your new relationship. Then why didn't you say that? I did, in words you apparently don't understand. What's the point of words you know but others don't? Who would you say them to? Let me do us both a favour and retract the question. Pity, because we're great. That's why I'm following her around with weirdies. You must have been driven mad in the temple, hmm? Knew I'd hate it. Felt like choking down a peach pit, knowing it would end bad. It was mystifying. Lovely turn of phrase, incidentally. Seriously, they pass like pine cones. Sad. I would have given half a toe to see it. Maybe you should be nicer to certain someones. <laughs> if I were any nicer to him, we'd be joined at the hip. I can't believe you made it through the Winter Palace in one piece. Whatever. They talk plenty, but if you don't play their stupid game, they're lost. You don't play their stupid game, they send an assassin or three your way. <laughs> they could try, sure. You have no problem with escalation, do you? <laughs> Not when I put enough arrows in it. When you were in the Fade... Shut it. I only meant to ask if... Shut it, shut it, shut it! Your Majesties, they all like coffee face. Not quite. Corypheus is one of a kind. An original darkspawn, it turns out. I mean, are they all crazy? Wanting to be gods? <laughs> like that? <laughs> that. Not all of them, but enough. And you let them live? Why? There's always more where they came from. Men like Corypheus aren't born, they're made. For being so unnerved by magic, you aren't shy about benefiting from its effects. I don't. I use normal things, not magic. You consider swathing yourself in flame or ice normal and not magic? For one, it comes out a bottle. For two, I mess up, I get burned. You mess up, your head chucks up a demon. For three, bottle, little burned, no demons. So there. That was only... <sighs> you know, if it lets you sleep at night, never mind. Demons, flappy robes. Thieves, dog stink. Culty shits. Treacherous towns. What? It's not a proper game of your people are shit if you make up words. Taeon is a Ferelden title, beneath only the family of the king. I'd have expected you of all people to know that. You're... well, that's... smart asses. Too late. I believe that's my round. Piss. I have only one question, Sarah. Did you cut your own hair? Yeah. Why wouldn't I? You could try using something other than a rusty butter knife. Oh, excuse me while I dig up my diamond-studded hair-cutting whatevers. Scissors. The word you're looking for is scissors. <laughs> Where do you get all your arrows, Sarah? You have hundreds. From your arse, that's where. My arse should open up a shop. It's apparently quite prolific. I can't figure you out, Sarah. That's a surprise, isn't it? <laughs> you just picked up a bow one day and poof! Expert marksman. A veritable savant. A what? A savant. A natural, meaning you needed no training. Not your business, if I do or didn't. Like I don't ask if you naturally shoot fireballs out your ass or just opinions. I'll keep that in mind. So you're fat with it, right? Me? Are you referring to... Do you sleep on silk while gold shits down all over you? Are you rich? I left all that behind, although I do miss the gold shitting from time to time. You really left it, hey? Me weren't all bad. You know, I've never met an elf quite like you, Sarah. I don't doubt it. They're all slaves where you're from. Not all of them, but yes, you have a point. You ever talked to one who wasn't? No, but I'm glad I have now. People are people. Who knew? The way you talk about magic... You've never been on good terms with a mage? The Inquisitor. A couple others. They were a bit weird, but all right. I knew a funny boy in Denerim. Started fires with his eyes. Templars nabbed him right quick, so he's better now, I guess. Better? Do you know what your southern circles are like? Meals and training? So he wouldn't starve or get stomped by a mob? 
I've seen both. <sighs> You're sadly right. Dorian, those words you say, what do they mean? What, you mean like mendicant, ultimatum? No ass when you're mad. Vishanti Kofas. You're swearing, I know it. Vishanti Kofas. It's Tavine, relics of the old tongue. We still use the colourful phrases. And it means what? Literally, you shit on my tongue. <laughs> Why not just say that? A mystery for the ages. You don't laugh like a Devinter. How is a Devinter supposed to laugh exactly? Cruel and stupid, like. <laughs> oh no. You're not allowed to laugh like that until you get your Magister license. Knew it. Varric owes me a sovereign. So you'll be careful when you throw all that fire around, yeah? As long as you're careful where you shoot all those arrows. You magic me. I'll put three in your eye. <laughs> now we can live together in peace and harmony. A Grey Warden recruiter. That sounds interesting. It's not easy finding people willing to shoulder such a terrible responsibility. Here I thought you poked around prisons, hunting for murderers, desperate to escape the noose. That's what you think of wardens. It's not such a terrible thing. Some of my best friends are murderers. They are men and women atoning for what they've done by giving of themselves. They fight for people like you. People in silks and velvets who talk and judge. Who's judging now? I know your kind. What do you know of my kind, Blackwall? I know that what comes out of your mouth is the same drivel that comes out of theirs. It might sound that way to someone who's been clubbed on the head too often. Careful I don't club you on the head. That's what I'd expect from your kind. You have something to say, mage. If I had something to say, I'd say it. That's it? I'd expect more from a man who can't stop talking about how clever he is. And I'd expect no less from a brutish thug. Better that than a pompous brat. If we're going to fight at each other's side, we need to get along. Tell that to Mr. Barely Concealed Envy Issues. <laughs> you two are such men. Well, I'm a man. Best pound your chest, so nobody doubts. Enough, both of you. I apologize, Inquisitor. <sighs> I can't imagine why more people don't join the Wardens. You need never worry about being worthy, trust me. So I hit a nerve with the whole murderer Grey Warden business. Are you speaking to me? Yes, you. Blackwall, or whatever your name is. Blackwall will do. I'm saying I understand wanting to atone for one's actions. Is that so? Enough to know when I've stepped in it. So I apologize. You did not have to apologize to me, Dorian. People who say that to me are usually wrong. I am indeed a murderer. And I escaped my past to become a warden, like many others before me. Obviously the original Blackwall saw something in you. I respect that. And you abandoned your life of privilege for the sake of principle alone. I didn't like that life. It was wrong of me to lump you in with peers you hardly resemble. Truce? Gladly. I've been thinking. Oh, this should be good. I was about to say that you're too hard on yourself, Blackwall. Too hard on myself? Is this setting up a punchline? You're not the thug I thought you were. You're not the thug anyone thought you were. Here it comes. Point is, you should let yourself off the hook. I know bad men, and you're not one. I'm not sure how to respond. Of course not. Let's not go crazy with defying expectations. It's odd how you've won over so many at Skyhold, Dorian. You're surprised they haven't all dismissed me as the charming but ultimately wicked Magister. Never. You're more the spoiled prince, and I question your reasons for being here. A prince? I've moved up in the world. My reasons for being here are the same as yours, thank you. I find that difficult to believe. Perhaps when you get past the simple heuristics that define your world, we'll get along. Word of what happened in Redcliffe had better not spread. Oh? Why not? You think mages will be better off if people know they can change the future? Ignoring that that's not the case, I suspect people will use any excuse to hate us. Then you should not give them more. Did everyone act like this when the sword was invented? 
Oh, my blushing butt cheeks. Round up everyone who can use these pointy things and lock them away. It is not the same thing, and you know it. Corypheus, one of yours, isn't he? One of mine? Like a pet? Like a giant darkspawn hamster with aspirations of godhood? Dorian, why can't you look after your little friends? Corypheus peed on the carpet again. In this analogy, the carpet is haven. Is he or is he not at a Vinter Magister? Meaning the source of everything bad and evil in the world? They are the same, yes? Certainly feels that way at times. I understand you were asking about me and the Inquisitor at Skyhold, Dorian. Only verifying certain rumours, big man. You understand. I'm not certain I do. Why the interest? Academic? Future generations will want to know. Leave it be. I overheard you at the tavern, Blackwall, asking about the Inquisitor and I. I was unsure I'd heard correctly. You have a question? Are your whiskers quivering with curiosity? I would not pry into the Inquisitor's business. Are you certain? I can draw diagrams. No, thank you. It's interesting watching you, Dorian. The way you carry yourself when you use magic. I am very good at the whole magic thing. No, it's not that. You find joy in it, not shame, and it shows. Why be ashamed? Power should be respected, not swept under the carpet. Something we Southerners need to learn, perhaps? <laughs> Maybe you're not a complete moron. We were having a moment, and now you've ruined it. Any thoughts on this Herald of Andraste business, Blackwall? Why? I just need to know you're capable of higher thought, for my own comfort. Then you'd be better served giving me a word puzzle. You'd do a word puzzle if I gave it to you? Not a chance. Any thoughts on this Herald of Andraste business, Blackwall? I've often wondered what the average man thinks about mage freedom. If you really cared, you could ask. Oh, but wait. That would involve talking to dirty commoners like me. True. So much for that. Dorian, I can't believe you drank that swill at the tavern. I can't believe they served that swill at the tavern. What is Skyhold coming to? Then why did you drink it? I couldn't stop. With each sip it was, it can't be that bad, can it? Before I knew it, I was analysing the nuances of its flavour, observing its effect on my nausea. I was in a catatonic trance, fueled by the stench of disgusting dwarven ale. Or you're a drunkard with terrible taste. There is that. You caught the eye of a young woman in that last village, Blackwall. I'm sure you're mistaken. You're right. She was undoubtedly looking at me. How do you get your hair to do that, Dorian? With magic. With proper hygiene and grooming. Maybe all three of you should get acquainted. Dorian, I would prefer if you stopped referring to me as that hairy lummox. When did I do that? The tavern, the smithy, the servants. You said it to the gate guards as we left Skyhold. Hmm. That does sound like me. Dorian, do you think we could ever be friends? Stranger things have happened. It would take work. And soap. Lots and lots of soap. So, kid. Why human? It was the shape that would help. Huh. Most people don't pick a shape. I guess I was hoping for something deeper with that question. It had to be him, but harmless. The him he wanted that wouldn't hurt. Well, that's deeper, I think. Hey, kid, back in the last village, that farmer was looking right past you. Why didn't you let him see you? He didn't need me. Maybe not, but you could learn something by talking with him. What would I learn? I can hear when they need me. You could learn not to scare them so badly that they have to forget you. I'll... try. How do you make them calm? Who, kid? Everyone. You talk and the fear fades, slipping to sleep. Not always happy, but not angry. Well, most people are like cats. They either puff up to look dangerous or they crouch down and hope you don't see them. You show them you're not a victim or a threat, and they're in your lap and purring before you know it. Cats swat my feet, even when no one can see me. That explains a lot. They were staring at me. Who's they, kid? In Skyhold. The servants in the courtyard. They were looking at me and whispering. 
It's the hat. Kind of hard to miss. Don't worry about it. And what's wrong with my hat? That's going to take a while. I'll explain clothes when we get back. Should I change my hat? Nah. If they're busy staring at your hat, they're ignoring all your other flaws. A silk shirt with three buttons left undone. Exactly. If you can't be flawless, and no one can, be flashy. Nobody will know the difference. How are you holding up, kid? You've been quiet for a while. My shoelaces keep coming untied. You're doing fine. Can you talk to them? They don't listen to me. Uh, maybe not so fine. Don't talk to them, kid. Just tie them in knots. How are you feeling, kid? If you don't get some sunshine, you'll wilt. She says she's not a plant. She's fine, but falling, faltering, foolish. Blood on her hands. People and demons always end in trouble. Too many daisies in this garden. I am good, Varric. I am me. You don't need to worry, but thank you for caring. All right. Uh, well, let me know if you ever... Uh, yeah. The heft in my hands, solid, strong, but curving, careful, like her. Soot smudge on her cheek, tiny scars on her fingers, old fires. Her little frown when she twists a gear ever so slightly. Yep, that's her, kid. But he died at the end of the last book. If he comes back, the readers will be confused. Okay, delving into my personal life is one thing, but a writer needs some privacy. Your stories aren't real, but then people read them and they are. Now get the readers invested and you'll have them forever. So many people reading, dreaming, feeling. Spirits spill around the veil, making shapes, reality from writing. I've got fans in the fade. Well, that's something. Shame I'll never meet them. Do you write to reach across? To hear the song that was sundered? I'm not sure what that even means, kid, but uh, probably. Hey, kid, what would a pride demon say to weaken a warrior's resolve? I need something that gets under her skin. Does she use a big sword or a sword and shield? Or one of the big two-handers. The next time you imagine him touching you, someone you love will die. Oh, well, that went a little dark. Who's him in this? She knows who he is. Does it not work for your book? No, it works great. Just glad you're not that kind of demon. I like traveling with dwarves. Well, glad to hear it, kid. You're quiet, but the old song still echoes inside. Almost like Templars. Okay, kid. Try it again like we practiced. Two pairs beats one pair. Four of a kind beats two pairs. She slips the ace of dragons into a thigh-high boot, calls to the barman for another round. Blondie stares at the table, angry, always angry. Focus, kid. You can't beat four of a kind with bad memories. Do they ever stop talking to you? Nouns, kid. Does who ever stop talking to me? The people in your head. They aren't real, but they have voices and thoughts, and sometimes you see through their eyes. If they stopped, I wouldn't have to write so much. I think I have it. Let me try again. All right, kid, let's see what you've got. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cole. Cole who? It's me, Cole. That is my name. No, no, you're still not getting it. Sorry, kid. Knock, knock. Okay, I'll bite. Who's there? The Inquisition. The Inquisition who? That's who we are, Varric. Uh, yeah, that's not working either. You didn't get that one from Sarah, did you? Okay, try it again. You'll get it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Me. <sighs> Me who? Me. And I'm telling a knock, knock joke. Uh, that was closer. Keep trying. So, kid, you don't have any formal combat training at all? No, I go where the knife needs to be. <laughs> Whatever works for you. So you can make people not see you, Cole. Can you do that for other people? Yes. It makes me tired and doesn't work if they're loud or angry or bright. Hmm. What about things? Can you make people ignore an object? Maybe. Like what? Oh, I don't know. A, a book or a box or a crate or a... Or a wagon full of crates? Turning creepy loose on your stuff. Not a good idea, Dwarfy. Smuggling? That is certainly a unique use of a spirit's innate powers of persuasion. Dwarf. I'm just asking. So, Cole, you're a spirit... demon... 
thing. Yes, and you're the Iron Bull, afraid of demons. Hmm, not fond of them, no. But you and I are fine as long as you don't do any weird crap. Lying awake, sheets soaked in sweat, afraid to call the Tamasarans, shadows make shapes in the dark. If it gets in my head, how do I cut it out? Itching, shaking, tears slide cold down my cheeks. Tama, I'm scared. Yeah, weird crap like that. Pretty much what I meant. Vassard was angry. He went first because he wanted to fight. Taking point, then points take him, red on his neck. I was just thinking about... Wait, you in my mind again, kid? Even if you went in first, there would have been another fight. Another time he didn't listen. It wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. I was in charge. Should have found a way to... Hey, that's pretty good. We could use that. You can use sadness? Ben Hathrath, kid. We can use anything. Hey, Cole, quick! What number am I thinking of? Raw and hot, trying to open it, but just darkness. How bad? How bad? No, done now. No sense worrying. The man they hurt coughs, shaking, but sits up. Eyes wide. No, not a man. A woman. Clothes torn. You're safe now. I'm Iron Bull. What do you want me to call you? Twelve. The number I was thinking of was twelve. <sighs> Demon interrogators. Stupid idea, anyway. So, Cole, you're polite, you're good in a fight, and your heart's in the right place. It is? Good. I've got a plan. I think this could get you sorted out, get both feet on the ground. I have to lift my feet. All the rocks make noise when I walk. Yes. When we get back, you're going to spend an evening with a nice lady named Candy. Can I lift my feet? <laughs> She's going to lift a lot more than that. So, how is Candy? You two have a good time? Yes. She danced. Then I untangled the hurt that made her angry at her mother. I helped her write a letter to send back home. She said I could call her Marguerite. The name didn't hurt anymore. Well, that was five royals well spent. The Iron Bull... In one fight, you let someone hit you so they wouldn't hit me. Yes. But you hate demons. Listen, Cole, you might be a weird, squirrely kid, but you're my weird, squirrely kid. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Just don't make it weird. No full hugs. Maybe a one-arm slap on the back, at most. All right. So, Cole... I was talking with the servants back at Skyhold. None of them can remember you. They're scared of me. Strange boy, doesn't move right. Magic, mage, monster. It's better for them to forget. Why do you let us remember then? Sarah's at least as freaked out by you as the servants. If she forgot me, she might hit me by mistake in a fight. Hmm, that'd be really disappointing for her. She's got her heart set on hitting you on purpose. I'm not touching that thing. Hey, Cole, did you know the servants at Skyhold remember you now? Yes, I'm more real. What they feel sticks, holding, heavy. I can't wash it away, but it lets me learn. Hey, good for you. Glad to hear it. I think. Friggin' right. Blood, crash of metal, but silent underneath. The horn didn't blow. That one-eyed bastard, I knew he'd betray us. Oh, good, you're doing your thing again. They died fighting. In your mind, they hated you, but you're doing it wrong. That isn't what Krem thought. Well, then... What did he think? Horns pointing up. Oh. Yeah. No, that didn't help. I tugged on the tangle and tore it. It's all right. I'm good. Tama, how will I follow the Kyun? Her hands, strong but gentle. Ruffle stubs where the horns will be. You are strong and your mind is sharp. You will solve problems others cannot. She smiles, but sadly. Looks like my old Tamasrin was wrong. Bet she's pissed one of her kids when Talvashoth. 
Agents with hushed tones, eyes stinging, forms to fill out, course corrections, reduce risk of similar losses. I remember the little boy, too wise, eager to help. Words break in small secret spaces. He got away. He got away. How could you know that? You've never even met her. Your hurt touches hers. Well, that's... Uh, creepy, but... Thanks. He almost says the word sometimes. Kato. He tastes it in his mouth. Sweet release, a breath away. Tongue tying it tenderly, like you tie him. But he doesn't for you, and for him, because it makes it mean more. A fuller feeling, a brighter burst. Yeah. <clears throat> How's he feel about you saying this in front of everybody? If a rift opened up right now and swallowed me, I'd be fine with that. Listen, do whatever works for you. You don't have to act restrained in front of us. Provided it tied you down first, one assumes. Bull and I are consenting adults. There's nothing wrong with what we choose to do in bed. Not just in bed. Sometimes it's up against the wall. Once on the war table. <laughs> Hope you took him right up the dales. <laughs> <clears throat> I look forward to informing Cullen. Moving on. Please do. I could not agree more. Oh, sorry. You act like you're in charge, the Iron Bull, but it's really him. He decides when, and you measure it carefully, enough to enjoy, to energize, but never to anger. He's tied, teased, tantalized, but it's tempered to what he wants. He submits, but you serve. Do you mind, kid? If you take away all the mystery, it's not quite as hot. Bull? Yes, it is. Right. My mistake. Carry on, kid. What's an Orlesian tickler? I'll tell you when you're older. No, you won't. No, I won't. Bull, is he right? The kid. Please. Next time we're alone, I'm going to pin you down and do things your body won't believe. But... <clears throat> Sorry. Oh, that makes sense. I'll stop. Will you? I'll try. You and Krim say words that hurt, but they aren't real, the Iron Bull. Yes, we give each other grief. It's a soldier thing. Doesn't mean anything. It means friendship. And that you're soldiers. Krem likes it. It makes him proud. I guess I can see that. Him, huh? Is that wrong? No, no. I just thought, since you do that thing where you see into people's heads, actually, you're good, kid. Keep it up. The armor is right. The body isn't. But it doesn't hurt him anymore. You make it better. All right, Cole. So when we run into a big guy with a shield... You are big, boasting, battering, and I blend behind. Daggers in darkness. One, two, three. Assuming that actually means what I think it does. Great. The Iron Bull. A woman in the last village wanted you to pick her up and take her clothes off. Most people do. In her mind, you were very big. Well, that's flattering. You got to pick your name. The Iron Bull. Sure did. Thanks for sticking the the on there, too. Most people forget. It kind of makes it sound like I'm not really a person, like I'm this dangerous thing, you know? You made it a joke on yourself, making mockery, so you would never be that. It kills the joke if you explain it, kid. Barman laughs, slides the drink over. Tankard in view the whole time, no chance poison was added. Blade at his waist, club under the bar. Moves with training, mercenary or guard. Use that if I have to. Yeah, I go for the shoulder. A shot he trained to take on the armor. But since he's a barman now and not a merc, he bleeds, flinches, and I trap the arm and break his neck. Why, the Iron Bull? I didn't do it, kid. It was just idle thought in case it came up. Do you think about how to kill everyone you meet? Do you not? I like your horns, the Iron Bull. But they're dragon horns, not bull horns. You could have named yourself the Iron Dragon. Oh. Shit. That would have been better. The Iron Bull, do you ever worry that a demon could be standing off to the left where your eye can't see? Well, I do now. When we fight, you make them not people, so their death doesn't stick to you. Yes, pick that up in Saharan. Got to keep it separate. 
Out here, anything could be a threat. You kill for the team, no questions asked. I see it. A wall of wounds. Nothing on this side has a family. When we're at the tavern or back home, it goes back to normal. People get to be people again. What if someone attacks you in a tavern? That's when shit gets messed up. You're a fast little guy, Cole. Do you wish you were faster, the Iron Bull? Nah, just as soon stand there and let them come to me when they're ready to die. Then it's them, not you. You don't want to kill, you want to defend. Hey, don't go around saying crap like that. I like killing. But you give them a chance. You make them choose, so it's their fault. Just... <sighs> Come on, kid. You're making it weird. If you are to fight alongside us, Cole, I expect you to follow orders. The Inquisitor believes you wish to help, but I will not allow you to threaten innocence. Yes. Help the hurt, save the small. If I become a demon, cut me down. Do not doubt me. I will do it. Good. You're serious, aren't you? Yes. I hope you are too. You're a better Seeker than Lambert. You care about everyone. You knew Lord Seeker Lambert? I killed him. He cared more about stopping mages than protecting people. You killed the Lord Seeker? Pathetic mages. Crush them at Andoral's reach or starve them out. Doesn't matter which. I need an example. Seekers succeeding, seizing power, overthrow the divine, triumphant in the eyes of the Maker. I am uncertain whether to believe you. You believe I killed him? Cole, do you have any proof about what you claim Lord Seeker Lambert did? I was there. I didn't need proof. But he could have been brought to justice. There are rules. He used rules to hurt people. He always found a way to be right, even when he killed my friend. You had a friend? A pretty Templar. She died protecting Reese and me, but she got better. I don't even want to know what that means. I have considered what you said about Lord Seeker Lambert, Cole. If it's true, then perhaps he deserved to die, though it need not have been you who killed him. He would have hurt people. It is not that simple. Why not? He made Templars see monsters instead of mages, made them push until it all fell down. We thought Lambert was assassinated. It made the rebellion worse, and many people were killed. But not by him. <sighs> Cole, you killed Lord Seeker Lambert so he wouldn't hurt people. Yes. Thank you for remembering. Sometimes people forget me. Is that why you went to Therenfall? Most sounded the same, but the leaders they listened to were hurt, hollowed, sick with a new song. They swallowed lies until they sang with darker music. The sound hollowed them. I wanted them to stop me if I harmed people, but I had to stop them instead. Oh, wait. You had a question. Perhaps we should think of something more pleasant. Like helping people? Yes, like that. Oh, that makes more sense. Why do you look at me when you say that? You found faith, not just a feeling. It was a spirit. We do not need to speak of this further. I'm a spirit that touched a body. You're a body that touched a spirit. We're the same, but backwards. Please stop. It's you, Cassandra. What? Breathing from the belly, cold air warmed, stones beneath me, candle before me, maker all around. Then nothing, empty. I'm cut, cauterized, then caught, cleansed by a light that carries me home. You're thinking backwards. You don't have faith because of the spirit. The spirit came because of your faith. It's you. Thank you, Cole. I appreciate that. So, Cole, I understand you are safe from binding now. Yes, I am unbound, unbowed, old wounds unbroken. I can be me. No fear of falling. Fear of falling? Antony falls, blood spraying, not the blood they wanted. If a scream or a blade, revenge would be easy. You didn't fall, but you faltered. Anger makes you other. You understand. Perhaps I do at that. What the Templars did to you, to the real Cole. I knew the treatment was harsh, but... Yes, beatings. Worse. 
you remember telling me? No, you can't do that now. The Tranquils don't say no to anything. Maker's breath. Not all, but enough. The good Templars were too afraid to stop the others. Whatever happens in the future, there will be changes to how Templars and mages govern themselves. The Inquisition may have a say in such changes. I would appreciate any insight you might have. Compassion and faith. Not all, but a start. I can help. I can try. You're sad about the Seekers. That takes no magical gift to understand, Cole. The room with the candle. It wasn't a lie. Your faith was real. The same could be said for Lambert or Lucius. A single moment of perfect faith does not make one immune to fault. Belly knotted, the candle burns like the sun. No voice but my own for months. Blessed are they who stand before the corrupt and the wicked, and do not falter. Blessed are the peacekeepers, the champions of the just. It will be enough. So, Cole, you've forgiven the Templar who killed you? I don't know if I'll ever forgive him, but I can live with him. Killing him won't make anything better. It's more complicated than that. I think that's the first time I've heard you admit anything is complicated. I don't understand all of it. I'm trying. What the Templars did to you, to the real Cole, I knew the treatment was harsh, but... There were beatings. Worse than beatings. If you tell anyone, I'll say you used blood magic. Not all Templars were like that. But not enough could stand up to the ones who were. Whatever happens in the future, there will be changes to how Templars and mages govern themselves. The Inquisition may have a say in such changes. I would appreciate any insight you might have. You'd take advice from a demon. I'll take it. I'm not promising to follow it. I was wrong to kill Lambert, wasn't I, Cassandra? What made you change your mind? I can see more. I could have helped the rebel mages. I could have warned someone. Things are connected, tied in a tangle. Fixing one thing might break something else. How do you do it? I try, but don't always succeed. You do your best and have faith it will turn out as it should. I was never a spirit of faith, but thank you. I will try to be more like you. You may regret that notion, but I wish you well. So, Cole, Varric tells me you are a spirit of compassion. Yes. How does compassion become such a deadly killer? Templars. Ah, I am truly sorry. Oh, don't be. You and Cullen care. That's more than most. Voices sing, but the hawk has flown away and cannot hear them. Standing by the door, legs stuck, I shouldn't be here. Where is his sister? Is she crying? Can she breathe? I couldn't breathe. Pain twists, but for which one? I knew the story more than the man. It isn't your fault he died. Perhaps not. Sometimes knowing that isn't enough. Can you know it more? Be easy, Cole. I will be fine. The frame holds, hand at the waist gently moves as body and thought spiral. Cole. Notes drip through the air. <laughs> That's not the song they were playing. No, but it's your favorite song. Where would the Inquisition go? What do you mean? The Wardens wanted to help, but they hurt people instead. You would have sent them away, Cassandra. I believe it may have been safer, but we cannot know for certain. If the Inquisition stops helping, where would we go to keep people safe from us? We must pray that it never comes to that. Prayer isn't a place. It would not save them from us. The Wardens fell. The Inquisition need not follow suit. The Wardens thought the same. So did the Templars. Then we must be vigilant. Warden Commander Clarel wasn't like you, Cassandra. Thank you, Cole. I think. I never met Clarel, but I will take that as a compliment. She fell because she fell. That's how Aramond convinced her to hurt people. He made it look like bravery. She called it a choice, but it was a lie. She was afraid. You aren't afraid. You won't fall. Thank you, Cole. I appreciate that. What of Magister Aramond? Do you sense a secret pain in him? No. 
Aramond is an asshole. <laughs> well said. Shield catches the blow, blade comes down, shiver through the hilt as it cuts, another bandit falls. A good strike, Lucius would have been proud. The bandit's eyes meet mine as he falls, so afraid, such a waste. Please leave my mind, Cole. You don't need to feel bad. I do not feel bad. The bandits needed to die. No, not that. You feel bad for being proud of it. You couldn't help the bandits. Some people have to die. Being happy for your skill doesn't make you cruel. Thank you. I suppose. Do you ever take off your armor and talk to it? No. It might say something nice. What is it, Cole? Why the odd looks? Light pastry with blueberries, sticky on your fingers, small hands reaching as Antony tears his in half. But when you got to the kitchen, they were all gone. Ah, yes. They are delicious, but do not last long. I would get you one, but they see me in the kitchen now. They ask if I want a glass of water, a piece of bread. They want to help me. It should be the other way round. Sometimes it's difficult to accept the kindness of others, but it can be worth the effort. I could get you one. The cooks don't see me. Just because they don't see you doesn't mean it isn't theft. Your elbow made him smile. My... who are you talking about? The blacksmith's apprentice. He repaired the armor. He was too shy to ask you if you were satisfied. He saw you smile as you tested the joint. It made him happy. It was fine work. I will remember to thank him when we are back at Skyhold. My elbows don't make anyone smile. You don't like dead people, Cassandra. Was that a question? Am I supposed to? The ones in the dark city, wrapped in cloths that smell like sunflowers, you hated the singing. Ah, the grand necropolis. Yes, I never saw the point. Maybe dead people like the singing. <laughs> I would rather not think about that. Your uncle misses you, Cassandra. Picked that up from my head, did you? No, he wrote you a letter. There was pain on the page. Stop going into my quarters. How many times must I tell you? Cole, I found a locket on my pillow earlier. It was Antony's. It was my grandmother's, actually. But it had Antony's portrait inside. I thought I'd lost it. You did lose it. I had to fight a rat for it. Oh? <laughs> Thank you. Ah, he wasn't a very big rat. Cassandra, who's Regalian? No one to concern yourself with. You were thinking about the time you... Now I'm thinking about something else. Can you guess? My hat wouldn't fit there. You're different, Solus. Sharper. You're in both places. I visit the Fade regularly. Perhaps you are sensing traces of it. You are a spirit who crossed the veil and took human form. Spirit or demon? The two are not so dissimilar, Cole. While the world may exert a pull in one direction or another, the choice is ultimately yours. It's brighter here. Glittering, glaring, glinting. I can't... It's a mild tremor in the veil. Nothing to worry about. Focus on what is here, in this world. But what is here? Feel the ground, the breath in your lungs, fabric rustling against your skin. Thank you. It's nothing. It can be overwhelming for anyone. How go your attempts to ease the pain of those at Skyhold, Cole? I made the scullery maid stop crying, and one of the boys in the stable is happier. Some of the servants are angry. My help makes work for them. Do you want me to stop? No. You exist to help others. You are kindness, compassion, caring. If you stopped giving comfort, you would twist into something else. As you did before, I suspect. Yes. I will not be that again. Good. Never forget your purpose. It is a noble one, even if this world does not understand. You are quiet, Solus. Unless I have something to say, yes. No, inside. I don't hear your hurt as much. Your song is softer, subtler, not silent, but still. How small the pain of one man seems when weighed against the endless depths of memory, of feeling, of existence. That ocean carries everyone. 
and those of us who learn to see its currents move through life with fewer ripples. There is pain, though, still within you. And I never said that there was not. I am sorry your friend died, Solus. Thank you, Cole. I didn't know there were spirits of wisdom. There are few. Spirits form as a reflection of this world and its passions. We will never lack for spirits of rage, or hunger, or desire. The world gives them plenty to mirror. The gentler spirits are far more rare. We can ill afford the loss of even one spirit of wisdom, or faith, or compassion. I will try not to die. Do that, please. Bright and brilliant, he wanders the ways, walking, unwaking, searching for wisdom. I do not need you to do that, Cole. Your friend wanted you to be happy, even though she knew you wouldn't be. Could you... If you would remember her, could you do it as I would? He comes to me as though the fade were just another wooded path to walk without a care in search of wisdom. We share the ancient mysteries, the feelings lost, forgotten dreams, unseen for ages, now beheld in wonder. In his own way, he knew wisdom, as no man or spirit had before. Thank you. Is there a way to save more spirits, Solus? Not until the veil is healed. The rifts draw spirits through, and the shock makes demons of them. Pushing through makes you be yourself. You can hold on to the you. Being pulled through means you don't have enough you. You become what batters you, bruises your being. Yes, exactly. Deliberately crossing the veil requires that a spirit form will, personality. That concept of self gives a spirit the chance to maintain its nature, wrenched into this world unwillingly by the rifts. Spirits suffer the same fate as my friend. Then we will help them. Are you well, Cole? Well wishing, waiting for once, clean and clear, uncluttered. I am glad to hear it. Can I help you? You healed my hurt, but yours is old inside, vast across the veil. I am fine, thank you. There are others who need your help more urgently. Yes. Do you wish you could return to the Fade, Cole? I can. I am light, unlittered. I could slip back across a small, kind thing. Yet you remain. I can help here. Then for as long as you remain, I am glad of your company. You don't need to envy me, Solus. You can find happiness in your own way. I apologize for disturbing you, Cole. I am not a spirit, and sometimes it is hard to remember such simple truths. They are not gone so long as you remember them. I know. But you could let them go. I know that as well. You didn't do it to be right. You did it to save them. Solus, what is Cole talking about? A mistake. One of many made by a much younger elf who was certain he knew everything. You weren't wrong, though. Thank you, Cole. Cole, I think Solus would like you to stop. It is no bother, Inquisitor. Cole is a spirit of compassion, and this world is too bleak to spurn compassion offered freely. I will never know that for certain, Cole. But thank you for saying it. How are you, Cole? Do you feel better, now that you have dealt with the Templar? I don't know. He hurt me, hurt the real Cole. I'm angry at him. I can't let that go. I have to become more. Let it make me real. You may well become fully human after all. I never thought to see it. When did you see it before? I did not say that I had. No, you didn't. It's harder to hear sometimes. Sorry. Good luck, Cole. You have taken a difficult road. How do you feel, Cole? Are you... I am me. I cannot be bound, broken. I will help the hurt and kill the killers. I see. I... Let me know if I can help. Stop. You are perfect exactly as you are. But then you turned away. Why? I had no choice. She feels her face marked, marred without malice. She didn't know. She thinks it's why you walked away. You cannot heal this, Cole. Please, let it go. Perhaps Cole can get a better answer from you than I did. He hurts, an old pain from before, when everything sang the same. You're real, and it means everyone could be real. It changes everything, but it can't. They sleep, masked in a mirror, hiding, hurting, and to wake them... <gasps> Where did it go? I apologize, Cole. That is not a pain you can heal. I'm sorry. 
It was my doing, not yours. If it helps enough people, it becomes more wandering, wishing, touched by them. Maker loves you and it grows. But I am me. Will I be more one day if I help enough? Is this a task, timed, temporary? No. It is a mistake to ascribe human motivations to them. So I am always this? You are always you. Why would they want to make people fight? Why would they fight the Maker? It is easier for people to believe that they were tricked into making terrible decisions. The brothers shouldn't fight. They should tell their troubles. Their father didn't teach them to talk. Often a problem, yes. It was a game, but more than a game. It meant he would get a family. Competition brings passion, Cole. And passion lets people attach import to trivial things. Why didn't they help at the end? People wish to accomplish the truly great things on their own. They didn't give the boy what he wanted. They did? The boy got a family. They gave him a new one. He wanted his old one. I would have done it better. The wise must sometimes give people what they need, not what they want. She wants a chantry, but it does other things instead. She did not need a chantry. She needed to remember her faith. But it also spent time with her. It wanted to fall, feeling. They are always attracted to the world of the living. Why did it only talk facing one way? We all have a face we want to show, and a face we do not. It sees him ready to jump, pain pounding, pulsing, life of frustration can finally fall, to freeze. Ah, yes. It holds him high, shows the hole, where everything falls without him. He never needs to leave. He matters here. That is one interpretation, yes. You think it is different? I think he fell, and it held him as he died, leaving him with images that told him his life was worthwhile. That's much sadder. But yes, calm, comfort, as the cold takes him away. They can only return to the Maker if they become real. Why can't they be forgiven as they are? People say they lack the ability to learn or grow. Yes. But the more contact you have with this world, the more ability you gain. Why would they want to prove the Maker wrong? He's already far away. It isn't about right and wrong. It's about attention when you think you've been forgotten. And rolling the ball so it goes in the hole. A war in the fade, waged with human hate. <sighs> I should never want to see that. It would be a terrible thing. It was wrong to hide it in a child. It hurt her. They left for love, and then love lost them. More pain, more joy than anyone can bear, and yet they embrace it. How could they not? It makes sense. It holds them as they die. But then it's a man, and he wants a woman. Why? When they possess people, they often indulge in feelings they have never before experienced. But it changed. It is blank, black, blunted from being. It never wanted before. Have you felt no interest in women since you came through the veil? No. The two of you make no sense sometimes. That is a matter of perspective. What are you two talking about? It will make little sense unless one has spent more time in the Fade. It's fascinating listening to you two. Like working out a puzzle with only half the pieces. I'm pleased you're enjoying yourself. You should not encourage that thing. Solus isn't a thing. Well said. You're both nutters. You want to be the one with the words that wonder. True. Stop it! There are times I almost understand the two of you. You are a rare soul, Master Tethrus. Right. You two just work whatever that is out of your system. Like poison. Weird-ass poison. It's good. I can explain. I really didn't ask. You're afraid. You don't have to be. My dear Inquisitor, please restrain your pet demon. I do not want it addressing me. He's not doing any harm, Vivienne. It's a demon, darling. All it can do is harm. Cole, Vivienne doesn't want to talk right now. She's afraid. Everything bright, roar of anger as the demon rears. No, I will not fall. No one will control me ever again. Flash of white as the world comes back, shaking, hollow, harrowed, but smiling at Templars to show them I'm me. I am not like that. I can protect you. If Templars come for you, I will kill them. Delightful. 
Stepping into the parlour, hem of my gown snagged. No, adjust before I go in. Must look perfect. My dear, your pet is speaking again. Do silence it. Voices inside. Marquis Alphonse. I do hope Duke Bastienne puts out the lights before he touches her, but then she must disappear in the dark. Gown tight between my fingers, cold all over, unacceptable, wheels turn, strings pull. He hurt you. You left a letter, let out a lie so he would do something foolish against the Inquisition. A trap. Inquisitor, as your demon lacks manners, perhaps you could get Solus to train it. You were not at the spire when the rebellion started, Vivienne. I tried to protect the mages. I would remember you. What were you doing at the spire, demon? I didn't know what I was. When mages were afraid, their pain called me, and I set them free. You helped mages escape? I killed them so the Templars couldn't hurt them anymore. Of course. I should have guessed a demon's help would end in blood. It was wrong. I'm sorry. Cole, you were the ghost of the spire. Yes? Your murders stirred the circle into a frenzy. That was what brought the attention of the Templars. The Templars hurt mages. Stupid, panicking mages who became a danger to themselves and others because of you. You brought matters in the spire to a head. Without you, there would be no rebellion. Countless deaths are on your head, demon. Are you satisfied with the result of your protection? You're lying. You're... Twist the words right and it will show its true form. Blood or banishment, either will suffice. You like the Templars. You think they were right. You don't need to be protected. It can learn after all. A sour smell in the tower library. Rotten meat and ashes. Too quiet without the apprentices. Something crunches underfoot. Burned finger bones glitter in the ash like pearls. Ice in my veins. The archivist. What was her name? Get out. Why did they kill her? She was just like them. They helped her. Just like you did. Anyone who wouldn't fight for freedom was freed by fire and lightning. Stay out of my thoughts, demon. My memories are my own. Are you still afraid of me, Vivienne? Are you still talking? You are no longer in danger of being bound by enemies of the Inquisition, demon. Yes, I am no danger now. No more than you were before. You worried for me. I was concerned about you, demon. You have grown adept at killing. If you cannot be gone, I would prefer you remain pointed at the enemy. No, you were worried. The part of you that forgets I'm me cared. You wanted to go away. You think caring makes you weak. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Why are you still here? If you truly worried about being bound by blood magic, you would leave. Where? If I go, the mages could find me. Then perhaps you should go further. You don't use blood magic, Vivienne. Of course not. Such magic is a tool for the weak. That the warden mages resorted to it is pitiful. Trembling, my knife at his throat. Not this, not this. Swore I'd do whatever they asked, but not this. In death, sacrifice. His hand grips my wrist, pulls the blade across his throat. I'm sorry. As I said, pitiful. Were you sad watching your fellow spirits banished at Adamant Cole? No. They were free, unbound, banished back where they belonged. I liked watching the rocks break the walls. Falling fortress, old dead fears cracking like flakes of blood. It was better than last time. Last time? Are we to understand that you have been to Adamant before? Yes. So your visit to Adamant was better this time, despite the arrival of an archdemon? It came last time, too. You were happy at the Winter Palace, Vivienne. Your point, demon? You were still sharp, but happy. Golden, glittering, everything gleamed. Rules that let you win. One does not wish to brag. That's why you're happier being a noble than a mage. You fear demons, not people. People can only kill you. Gown perfect, shoes perfect, hat perfect, staff a symbol, not a weapon. My room, my people, mine. Out, please. I don't understand Celine and Gaspard. I shall try to suppress my shock. There's no hurt. Nothing there touched you. Did you expect me to get misty-eyed over who rose to glory and who paid the price, demon? It is the game. No matter what transpired at the Winter Palace, I took steps to strengthen my position. How do you make a game that you always win? Practice. Uncultured barbarian witch. I beg your pardon, demon. Jaws ache, dress stiff, binding, years of work, favours fought, deals dealt, and the witch usurped my position. 
Remove yourself from my head. You're angry at Morrigan. She took what you had without working. She took nothing. If Empress Selene wished the counsel of some untrained witch, she was free to seek it. Selene did not make you go away. She respected you. She feared the consequences of angering me. Dorian is like you, Vivienne. I think not. Vivian, the poor thing is trying to pay you a compliment. How so, Cole? The veil sings around both of you. It whispers through you and makes you both brighter. The same could be said of any mage. Beyond that, I have little in common with a noble from Tavinta. No. For most mages, it's a tool, a toil. You make it you. Also, we clearly have the best fashion sense of anyone around. True, but I hardly expect the Fade to notice. Solus doesn't fear spirits, Vivienne. Why do you? Your apostate friend did not benefit from formal training in a circle. How unfortunate for me. The circle makes you afraid. Are the demons stronger there? The circle taught me the tricks demons play to gain the trust of any mage foolish enough to listen. Solus seems to trust you. How long before you turn on him? Solus is my friend. But you'd like to be more, wouldn't you? You could be together forever if you possessed him. Is that not truly what you want? A body to claim your own, so you never have to return to the Fade? I have a body, and Solus has nothing to fear from me. Neither do you, unless you attack first. I like the Fade, but I can help here. I could help you if you let me. Well said, Cole, although I doubt you will ever accept. I can't return to the Fade. Sometimes I wish I could. Ignore her, Cole. She would hurt what she does not understand. Do you feel spirits move around you when you cast a spell? Bits of them push through with your magic, tiny, a wisp of a wisp, free before falling back. They pull around you, water in a cup, defined, deafened, hearing only your song. They want to skate, scintillate on skin. You made them them, their maker. Now I need a bath. With so many rifts marking the world, I'm surprised any demons nearby do not fall back through. It would be a simple matter for such misguided creatures to return to their home and leave this confusing world behind. Would that not be easier for everyone involved, my dear? Demons can't hear you. It hurts too much. Nothing here makes sense to them. <sighs> Nugs are kind. Almost everything is bigger than they, but they're still happy. If you hold out your hand, they will nuzzle it. It's how they call you friend. Remember, Inquisitor, the harmless-looking ones are always the most dangerous. Nugs aren't dangerous. I was not referring to Nugs. Wind is always going someplace. What happens when it gets there? Apparently it dons a hat and prattles endlessly. So many spirits clustering around, pressing against the veil, calling your name. Vivienne, Vivienne, look at me. I get that at court too, darling. They get used to disappointment. Courtiers always do. Grass doesn't mind anything. People walk on it, horses eat it. It's always content. It's probably thankful it doesn't have ears and can't listen to you. She tried. The cookies were good until the hate made them bitter in your mouth. Not there, creepy. Go rooting in that part of me and I'll stripe you up, you hear? Everyone heard. You're scary in another place. There are songs in every part of you, Sarah. Soft, silly, sibilant, sighing in silence, waiting for you to hear them. Look, can you at least not stare past my eyes? Friggin' creepy, that. You're not your eyes. You live behind them. That too. Don't do that. Creepy. Creepy is staring again. Aren't you supposed to be getting better or something? Less like you. I'm still me. I just remember more. It's a bit of a process. Well, do it somewhere else. Ugh. He's still just wrong. You make words into new words, Sarah. Honey tongue, a new name, a new nature. Sweet, smoky, always the chance of a sting. Oh, no. No, no, no. He's ruined it. Creepy's gone and ruined it in my head. I can't think of anything else. Right, now it's teetness. Teetness. Thinking of nothing but teetness. Teetness. A new name, a new nature. Tart, sweet, tiny, between, candy that makes you sick but you can't stop eating. Right, now it's Tadwinks. Tadwinks. Thinking of nothing but Tadwinks. Tadwinks. A new name, a new nature. 
a game or a frog, swimming, playful, wrapped around and joyous. Right, now it's buckles. Buckles. Thinking of nothing but buckles. Buckles. A new name, a new nature. Serious, sombre, strapped for battle. But they come off and it's soft underneath. Right. Now it's inky. Inky. Thinking of nothing but inky. Inky. A new name, a new nature. Short and little, but darkness inside, making a mark and you are the light. Right. Now it's shiny. Shiny. Thinking of nothing but shiny. Shiny, a new name, a new nature. Shimmering, glistening, like a sweat-soaked smile. And you, you shut up. Don't like it? Blame that thing. It was a good name. Shut it. You don't have to be afraid, Sarah. I won't hurt you. Go away. I won't stab you when you're looking somewhere else. I won't do that to your boots or that other thing to your arrows. I don't understand what that last thing is, but I won't do it either. Why does it keep talking at me? I like how you see where the arrow will land without being there. It's falling and flying, free and flight, all the same, like looking through the fade. It wants me to talk, but I'm not falling for it. Sarah, no matter how you turn your head, your ears point to the fade. Do you do it on purpose? It's like its face doesn't know what it's saying. Ugh. Your bow was a tree once. A girl with a long name met a boy with strong hands there. Her body warm, leaning against the trunk, hair tangled in branches and fingers. Forever, no matter what, they cut letters in the bark. When her parents took her away, he cut the letters away to forget. Every time you pull it, the part that was a tree remembers. Can you feel it under your fingers? Its words make my hair stick up. What is that about? Sarah, you're confused. I can help. The joke means the horns on the cow's head, but there are different horns that make noise when you blow them. It's funny because the cow horns and music horns are very different. Cullen explains it better. Can't we leave him somewhere? You didn't know the custard would bring the cats. It made everything different. No one slipped, but the tails were like little people bobbing as they lapped it up. Shut it up. When you fire your bow, it hums after every time. Your mind makes it quiet, but if you heard it backwards, it would sound longer, a thrum through the gut. But don't think about it, or you'll tense your shoulder like you do, and then your shot will go too far left. Make it bother someone else. Sarah. My tongue wants to whistle on the start. Sarah. But it has to stay still, or the R is a D. Sarah. Seda, seda, stada, dada, dada, dada. If you try, you can say it without moving your mouth. See? Sarah. Say it enough and it stops being a word. Sarah, 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 Sarah. Leave me alone. What? What is it? The sky wants to say something. It's trying, tempting, words in the wind, whistling, wandering, wasted. Have we been here? I mean, right here, doing exactly this. It feels weird. Yes, but not how you mean. In the soft, thin places, spirits push with memories that didn't happen, or did, or might, before the door is open. They could let the cat out and it would always be alive. That thing is not right. You like to dance, but can't. You hate to sing, but can. You should not paint. It would be very bad if you did. Could someone please shut him up? Or I'm going to shaft him in his creepy little eyes. You... You called me him... Thank you. Ugh. How do you get so close to being human and then just not? So many masks. At the ball. It's all lesion culture. Get used to it. Not at the ball. Here. Mockingbird, mockingbird, quiet and still. What do you see from the top of that hill? Can you see up? Can you see down? Wait. Can you see the dead things all about town? How do you know that song? It just came to me. Everyone says everyone knows it. The children knew it. 
How do you get the hair on your face? Look, ask Varric. He seems to have adopted you. He doesn't have hair on his face. Is it a mask? No, it's a beard. Look, if you were any other lad your age, I'd tell you that one day you'll probably grow on too. Except I don't know if spirits that become boys get beards. I could try. Right. You go do that then. Good luck. Have fun. We played by the fire so she would be warm. No, it's summer, Liddy. This thing you do. Maybe you should stop doing it? Got her a flower, but they'd taken her. Left it on her bed. Next ate on the sill. Tawny sands, a garden seat, five to chantry altars, one to a child with her hair. The sea? Too many to count. And thirty-six tossed off the battlements today. Go bother Solus. You have many feelings. I'm sorry she died. Your knife is big. <laughs> it's a sword. It's bigger than mine. And now you've made it awkward. How does a spirit become flesh, anyway? I don't know. How does a warden become grey? You know, Cole, you're not so bad. But I'll never get used to the things that come out of your mouth. There was once a man who had bees coming out of his mouth. A perfect example. What are you staring at? Your head. So many tangles. Knots. And that's just on the inside. You need a hairbrush. Hey, Cole, say something interesting. Something interesting? Yes, I deserve that one. When you charge at them, you make them hit you. Ideally. That's why my armor's heavier than yours. Golden, graceful, glittering, but not gaudy. Voice delicate and delectable. What are you talking about, Cole? Sweet, soft and silky. Her dress, and also under her dress... Are you going to talk to Josephine? Make us balls. Get out of my mind, would you? You make me sound like a dirty old bastard. Do you want to hear what she thinks of you? No. You should. They say you're a demon. Yes. Or spirit. I want it to be spirit. Either way, I know you're dangerous. Yes. Like you. What? A sack on the side of the road, struggling. The boy runs from it, crying. Fine. So you're dangerous and insane. You would stop it if you could. That is enough. But don't do it again. Why are you here? Do you even understand what's happening in the world? I heal the helpless. Give hope where there is hurt. But you've killed before. Yes. Before I knew what I was. Why should we believe you can help now? It hurts too much. I can't be me. Have to be someone who never killed. Help enough and I'm different. I'm not me. Believe it to become it. Make us balls. We can change. If we wanted enough. Tell me, Cole. How do you make them forget you? I'm not really real. They already want to forget me. I find the part that doesn't fit and set it free. Their mind makes a shape that makes sense without me. That's not right. I'm sorry you have to stay. It wouldn't work for them. You were trying to fix it. It isn't your fault. What isn't my fault? They wanted Blackwall, not Rainier. That's why the others are angry. Angry? Really? I thought I was just imagining all the frowning faces. Care to tear into me as well, now that you know? No. You who heal the helpless. You're not angry about what I was hiding. You never hid from me. Mockingbird, Mockingbird. Too many voices in the carriage. Make her their young. If I tell my men to stop, they'll know it was all a lie. Cold, trapped, heart hammering like axes on a carriage door. Stop, please. Cole. If you knew what I am, what I'd done, why didn't you tell the others? Everyone hides dead things. Everyone pretends. You wanted to fix it? I'm a murderer. You don't want to be. You made a new you. 
You are Blackwall. You killed Rainier. If only that were possible. You would stand between Rainier and the carriage, but you can't. It doesn't work like that. So you carry the bodies to remember. I suppose I do. I hear you found the Templar that killed you. Yes. His hurt is healed. So is mine. Just like that? How do you forgive someone who does that to you? He was frightened. The other Templars were older. He didn't know what to do. Afraid of them, afraid of me, can't face it. Lock it away and pretend it wasn't real. He fled far away, tried to forget, to be someone new. He deserved to be punished. He was. This Templar who hurt you, you made him forget? Yes. He knows he left the Templars, but I'm not there. He just knows they made him someone he didn't want to be. Why did you do that? You shouldn't have taken that from him. Why? Taking away a bad memory is one thing. Taking away guilt is another. Without that guilt, it's as though he never killed you. Isn't the world better that way? I... I don't know. I understand. Making the Templar forget what he did to me is like making you forget Rainier. I... Yes. Perhaps. My pain was his pain. It made the amulet not work. We both had to let it go. But now he doesn't remember what he did. Isn't me not hurting more important than him being punished? Uh, we are a pair, you and I. The victim and the murderer. If it helps you, lad, then I am glad you forgave him. You think that if you forget, you will become like that again. But you're not him. You have other things to carry. You can put the bodies down. Thank you. I hear you found the Templar that hurt you. Yes. I tried to kill him. I thought it would fix it, fix me. Did it? No. But I'm more real now. I'll remember. Good. Remembering is the only way you learn. It hurts. It does. So now that you've dealt with the Templar, you're a real boy? Realer. Good enough. I suppose you'll stop looking into people's heads soon. And you might want to look into... I don't know... Uh, eating? Blah. Oh, are we at that stage? Spitting everything up? At least you've mastered walking. Soon you'll be eating properly, then drinking, then drinking for real, then girls. You know a lot about girls. You're supposed to stop looking in my head. What do you think your Templar is doing now? Trying to make a new life for himself? Stop. It isn't about you. What? Callier, his family, his children. You wonder if some part of them watches you still. You wonder if they want you to feel guilty. If they want you to make up for what you did, but they don't. If they're watching, all they want is not to have died. It isn't about you. Uh, we are a pair, you and I. The victim and the murderer. If you want to remember, remember this. If you become Rainier again, I will be here and I will kill you. And if I become a demon again and hurt people, you will kill me. I believe I can work with that. I hear you found the Templar who hurt you. Yes, he's dead. He won't hurt anyone ever again. And do you feel better? The amulet works. No one can bind me now. No one can make me a monster. Yes, we wouldn't want that. So, you're Ben Hazrath, huh? The spies of the Kunari. Oh, you've heard of us. I spent some time in Kirkwall. That must have been fun. You could say that. You know, I met the Arashak. Oh, the old one. Man, he had an impressive rack. The new Arashak doesn't have horns at all. Usually means they're destined for something special. I met him too. The only thing they seem to have in common is a tendency to burn things. That pretty much sums up the Antam, yes. You're not the first Ben Hazreth I've run across. Hawk and I went on a caper with one named Talus. You don't say. 
She caused us no end of trouble. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Hey, one time I ran into this dwarf on the road. Short, grouchy. You think you might know him? I'm in the Merchant Guild. Ten Royal says I not only know him, he owes me money. Oh, well, no, I don't know Talus. Sorry. How could you possibly be a spy? Well, it's a pretty easy job. I do some fighting and drinking, and then once in a while I tell Parvalen about it. Where's the sneaking, the, the plotting, the subtle machinations? If you do that, everyone knows you're a spy. Drinking, fighting, writing notes. That's all it really takes. Shit. You're either the worst Kunari ever or the best. I can't decide. Still waiting for me to do something sneaky and spy-like? I'll see magical dwarves flying through the sky before that happens. Good. Because I'm supposed to ask about your friend Isabella. See? And I still can't tell if you're shitting me. Sometimes you're so Kunari it makes my head hurt. So, you're a free man, Talvashoth. Living the life. Unless you think I'm even more secretly a spy now. I think you finally decided whether you care about your people or your people. Hmm. Something like that. You made the right choice. So, Canari in good standing. You must be proud. Tolerably. Not a fan of the Alliance? I got to see enough of the Canari back in Kirkwall. Hey, we probably won't try to burn down a city this time. No, you can always trust the Canari. Until you're between them and something they want. So, your girlfriend is a smith? Yes. She makes weapons. With her own hands. Among other things. That's hot. So, Bull, you and the Inquisitor, huh? Mm-hmm. I'd love some impressions, imagery, something for my next book. Sorry, that room is for him and me. No one else invited. Safe harbor from the storm outside. All right, now you're just making it weird. So, Bull, you and Dorian. Mm-hmm. Two worlds tearing them apart, to Vinter and Kunari, with only love to keep them together. I don't see how this is even remotely your business, Varric. Could you make it sound angrier? Love is a bit soft. Please stop helping the dwarf. How about passion? Yes, that's better. Love is all starlight and gentle blushes. Passion leaves your fingers sore from clawing the sheets. You could at least have had the courtesy to use the bedposts. Hey, don't top from the bottom. <laughs> Passion it is, then. Hey, don't most dwarves have beards? Or at least mustaches, or something? I make up for it elsewhere. You're a damn fine marksman. How do you manage that while staring up at everyone's ass the whole time? In a world of tall people, you find ways to keep them from tripping over you. You ever get the asses mixed up? If I do, Tiny, you'll be the first to know. So in your books, the stuff with the spies is all wrong. If only I'd had you around to consult. That blue swan flies at midnight stuff doesn't work. Most times, you pass information on a dead drop. No meetings at all. Ah, where's the drama in that? Oh, can't you mess up the realism of something else? Like lyrium smuggling. By the way, Varric, you write some nice fight scenes. Well, thank you. I'm surprised you think so. They're not exactly realistic. Hmm, I figured that out when the good guy did a backflip while wearing a chainmail shirt. And that didn't bother you? Back in Zaharon, I fell on a guy who tried to stab me in the gut. I felt the blade chip as it went through my gut and hit my back ribs. But I was alive and on top. I soared through the armor on the rebel's neck, back and forth until it went red. I don't need a book to remind me that the world is full of horrible crap. Well, impossible swashbuckling it is. Hey, Tiny, any chance you could get out of the way when I'm trying to shoot? Maybe you should stand in front of me. I'd still have a clear shot at all the bad guys from the knees up. Hey, Varric, you get that thing I asked about. It should be there next time we head back to base. Not easy to find, by the way. Hmm. How do you guys live without this stuff? I don't see what the deal is, honestly, but different tastes. Ah. <sighs> Now I just need some hot milk and some of those Orlesian Gimorphs to put in it. Hey, what you do with this cocoa is up to you. I don't need to hear about it. 
Why go with iron? Iron is brittle. Why not call yourself the Steel Bull or something? Steel Bull was already taken by a pit fighter in Antiva City. Thought about Viridian, but it turns out there's two exotic dancers in Lomarin who use that one. Identical twins. Hmm. Uh, Silverite? Tavern in Rialto. Uh, <laughs> so iron was the only thing left. Well, I could have gone into textiles, but that sends the wrong message. I've got to ask, what's with Kunari and their swords? That's just the warriors. Ben Hasrath used whatever tools right for the job. Besides, didn't you name your crossbow after a woman? Eh, point taken. Is the Kuhn some kind of big secret? How come no Kunari I've met will explain it even slightly? It's not a secret. It's just too big for a quick chat. Tell me about the Kuhn is like saying tell me about economics. Most Kunari know just enough to get by. It's like blind dwarves trying to figure out a dragon by touch. Only the priests really have the whole picture, and they spend their whole lives figuring that crap out. Well, I'll leave them to it then. You know what I miss? Hornbalm. It's impossible to get it out here. Really? Back in Kirkwall, you couldn't kick open a crate without finding a jar of the stuff. Really? You got any? Uh, no. We usually just threw it away. Ugh. Horns itching. <clears throat> ah, these are the types of fights I love. Really? Every day back in Saharan, I waited for a dagger in the back. Is that civilian secretly working for the Vince? Or is she just scared because she's caught between us and them? Here, the bad guys practically have signs. It's so much easier. Well, it is simpler. I'll give you that. Hey, Varric, are you going to write me into one of your stories? How could I not? When you do, make sure you describe the musculature right. Because this isn't just endurance work. There was a lot of strength training to get here. You want to use words like rippling or ripped. Ripped is good, too. The Iron Bull's belly was prone to rippling after every meal. He rarely wore shirts as they ripped under the strain. That hurts, Varric. That's hurtful. Hey, Varric... I was reading your stuff. Where do your bad guys come from? Well, some of them come from Tevinter, and some are Ben Hazreth spies. But I like the stories where the villain was the man beside you the whole time. The best villains don't see themselves as evil. They're fighting for a good cause, willing to get their hands dirty. All right, that's really deep and all, but I meant where do the bad guys come from, literally. The way you write it, it's like they just fall from the sky and land on top of the hero. I like to leave some things to the reader's imagination. You doing all right, Bull? I heard you breathing a little hard after the last fight. Mm. Lung exercises. Clearing the stale humors. It's a cune thing. Uh-huh. Hey, some of us have to swing a giant hunk of metal instead of pulling our girlfriend's trigger from the back ranks. Ouch. Too close to home. No, no, that, that was good. I should find some way to work that into my next book. All right, but it was my line. You're going to credit me in the acknowledgments, right? I assume you've heard about Prince Sebastian, Varric. I know he invaded Kirkwall. Are you going to blame me for that, too? I wasn't trying to. You weren't trying to remind me how bad it is in Kirkwall, so you decided to talk about it? I thought you might be concerned. It is your home. Of course I'm concerned. I don't need you prodding me with a stick to prove it. I hear reconstruction is progressing well in Kirkwall. I know things are bad there. I wasn't trying to... You weren't trying to remind me how bad it is in Kirkwall, so you decided to talk about it? About its recovery. What you're talking about are the buildings, and even that will take years. People don't recover so easily. Have you heard from any of your Kirkwell associates, Varric? You're asking me? So you don't read my letters? You're no longer my prisoner, much as you like to act like it. Yet I still get all the suspicion. I am not without sympathy, especially given recent events. Why, Seeker, I would never accuse you of having sympathy. By the way, I tend to refer to my associates as friends. Maybe you're not familiar with the concept. <sighs> You know, Seeker, for someone with your tact and charisma, you assembled a pretty good little inquisition. 
I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt and assuming you didn't drag them all here by force. How kind of you. I mean, you never know. You could have kidnapped Ruffles and she'd be too polite to say anything. Liliana recruited Josephine. They're friends. So there's a rational explanation after all. Just when I thought you had layers. It makes sense that Liliana did the recruiting when the Inquisition started. Not everyone can be intimidated into signing up, after all. I recruited Commander Cullen. Lucky him. He's made no complaints about my manners. His last boss was a raving lunatic who turned into a statue. That's not a high bar. Varric, I'm sorry. About earlier. With the table. Beg your pardon? I didn't catch that, Seeker. <sighs> I am sorry. Oh, I'll mark this on my calendar. Cassandra had a feeling. Perhaps not that sorry. Varric, does Hawk ever autograph books? Why? Doesn't your copy of The Tale of the Champion have a big hole in it? Yes, but it could also have Hawk's signature on it. Hawk's taller than I imagined. <laughs> That's the first thing you said to him, isn't it? Not the first thing. Tell you what, Seeker, next time you make me tell a story at knife point, I'll make the hero sound taller. Seriously? Swords and shields. How did you find that cereal? Scrape it off the bottom of a barrel in dust town? It was research. I thought I might learn more about the champion. I did write a book about the champion. You might remember it. Had your knife stuck through it last I saw? I'd already read that one. Twice. I can't believe you picked the absolute worst of my books to read. Why not Hard in Hightown? I have enough mysteries and investigations of my own. What, you don't want to solve more in your spare time? Then you killed my favorite character in Chapter 3, so I threw the book across the room. Ugh, a critic. Say no more. Varric, how could you let the Night Captain be framed for murder? Well, I did spend three entire chapters setting it up. But she didn't deserve it. You'd already put her through more than enough. Look, Seeker, if you love a character, you give them pain, ruin their lives, make them suffer. Maybe even throw in a heroic death. That makes no sense. Don't you care enough to argue? If she had a nice afternoon and took a nap, you'd stop reading. What made you write about Hawk? All your other books are complete fiction. Someone had to set the record straight about the champion. Yet your book is still full of lies. But true ones. That's important. Why is the second, Hard in Hightown, so completely different from the first? Uh, because I didn't write it. Shit, did you pay actual coin for that book? One of these days, I'm going to find the duster who wrote that garbage and introduce him to my editor. By editor? Do you mean your crossbow? No, my actual editor. Best in the business. She runs half the coterie in Kirkwall. Stickler for grammar. She once killed a man over a semicolon. I'd never print anything without her. She has to reach the other side of the hill. Who does? The night captain. But she's injured. <sighs> Good job, kid. Is she all right? Is that how the book ends? Not anymore. Cole, what happens to her? I don't know. The hill went away. I'm surprised, Seeker. I thought you'd take charge back in Redcliffe. Maybe grab Fiona and rough her up. I do not rough people up. Oh, sorry, my mistake. You'd have your men do it for you. You will never let that go, will you? Probably not. I thought you'd have some uh, stronger feelings about Templars joining the Inquisition, Seeker. Feelings that involve stabbing. <sighs> Not all my feelings involve stabbing. Oh, so you reserve those for me, then. Don't I feel special? I am somewhat surprised you didn't follow Hawk to Weishaupt, Tverek. There's a lot of work to do, Seeker. We'll catch up when this is all over. What about Anders? Will he... If he's still out there and justice hasn't driven him nuts, Hawk won't be able to keep him away. What about Fenris? Will he... Oh, he'll go. Once he gets my letter and after he's finished brooding. What about Isabella? Will she... Join him? Once she gets my letter, she'll go whether Hawk likes it or not. 
And Hawk's brother? He's still alive, isn't he? Aveline took him off somewhere when the calling started going nuts, but he'll tag along. He always does. Still alive, still a Templar. He'll go as soon as he hears. Can't let Hawk have all the glory. And Hawk's sister? She's still alive, isn't she? Aveline took off somewhere when the calling started going nuts, but she'll try to keep Hawk out of trouble. Better be. Sunshine will go as soon as she hears. I'm sure of it. Hawk would rather we stay away, stay safe. That won't fly forever. Besides, if I went to the Anderfells, how could I annoy you? You would find a way. About Hawk. Don't, Seeker. Just don't. But what about Fenris? Does he... He knows. I sent a letter. Leave it be. Uh, you may recall, Seeker, that a friend of mine had one of those alluvians. It didn't end well. Are you really going to allow one in Skyhold? You speak as though I could forbid it. I didn't know your friend or see her alluvian. If you have an issue, speak with Lady Morrigan. Um, no. I'll pass. Varric, you are aware that I'm a candidate for the Sunburst throne? So I heard. Not a single snide remark. What? I don't look forward to your needling, but its absence is telling. Am I to understand your Bianca is married? Oh, have we reached the stage where we gossip about each other's love lives? Did you hear that, boss? Don't worry, I'll tell you whatever she says. Forget I mentioned anything. It was a simple question, Varric. There was nothing simple about it. Well, you brought up Bianca, Seeker. Does that mean I can ask about your conquests? I would rather you didn't. No tantalizing secrets to divulge? None. So no one within, say, a five-foot radius has caught your eye? Really? No one at all? This is not a discussion I want to have here. <laughs> Are you blushing, Seeker? Maker, the world really is coming to an end. Perhaps Cassandra and her conquest would rather not discuss this in public. Spoil sport. Nothing? You do know he's standing right there. I have no conquests. How about dalliances, liaisons, illicit affairs? No. Enough poking, Varric. Is it, Buttercup? Is it? Very well, Varric. If you wish to know about men I have known, I will tell you. Look, Seeker, I was only... You were right. I pride first, and fair is fair. Years ago, I knew a young mage named Regalian. He was dashing, unlike any man I'd met. He died at the Conclave. Oh. What we had was fleeting, and years have passed. Still, it saddens me to think he's gone. I'm sorry. Uh, look, Seeker, I... I didn't mean to make you talk about your mage friend. I know. I was not trying to make you speak of Bianca. If I was, you would know. I would yell. Books would be stabbed. Ha 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 I'll keep that in mind. I still don't understand how drakes take that hand. Hmm, maybe we should start you on Shepherd Six. Isn't that a children's game? Yeah. Have you been taking notes on all this, Varric? Oh, you'll need to be more specific there, Seeker. The Inquisition. You're not planning to write a book about us, are you? Oh, don't get your hopes up. You're not that interesting a subject. I am. Feel free to write a book about me. And call it what? The Wayward Magister? I'm not a Magister. Oh, forget it. You just get it wrong. So, as a Seeker, you're the highest-ranked person in the Inquisition, but uh, you're not in charge. Liliana's rank equals my own, insofar as our rank means anything outside the Chantry. But you want to get shit done, right? I declared the Inquisition, but I don't know that I'm best suited to command it. Perhaps you're interested in the position, since you seem so interested. Oh, no, you don't. Leave me out of that mess. There's almost no mention of your part in the tale of the champion, Varric. Uh, I don't want to bore people. You don't want to incriminate yourself, you mean? Oh, same thing, really. 
I'm watching you, Varric, just so you know. <laughs> well, that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. What did I do now? Nothing. Yet. Just keep it that way. Varric Tethrys, paragon of good behavior at your service, Seeker. I spy with my little eye. No. Oh, come now, Seeker. I'm just trying to be friendly. Try to be quiet instead. When you brought me along to talk, perished the thought. <sighs> Is even terrain too much to ask for? Is there a problem? Well, you might be used to traipsing through the countryside, punching dragons, interrogating people, or whatever it is you did before this. I'm from the city. <laughs> Think you'll ever go back to Navarra, Seeker? Why? Are you eager to see me go? I wasn't, actually. But now that you mention it... How do you know I wouldn't just drag you along? Be still, my heart. I've grown on you. Like fungus. I spy. No. But. No. <clears throat> well, you should be good at finding things. Of course, you couldn't find Hawk. Did you really think the Conclave had a chance of making peace, Seeker? You do not? Well, what was the Divine's plan? Bring everyone together and hope really hard they would all get along? Most Holy did not confide her plan to me. Perhaps she thought they were tired of death and conflict. When has that ever been true? For Templars or mages? I will not mock a dead woman, Varric. She did what she could, and that is more than most. I think it's time you stopped playing the wounded party with me, Varric. Ignoring the times you actually wounded me? I did no such thing. I questioned you and then brought you to Haven so you could tell your story to the Divine. Oh, what then? Thanks, Varric. We believe you. See you around. And ignoring the fact you did lie to me. Do not pretend to be an innocent bystander. I could have done far worse with full justification. Well, yes, thank you for not torturing me. I'm so much happier now. How do you write as you do, Varric? I can never find the proper words. You write? Really? I've needed to describe events in reports. They always come off as... Dry, boring, lifeless, stale. You are an ass. Just helping you find those words. You never did tell me why you dragged me to Haven Seeker. I mean, what could I have told the Divine that you couldn't say yourself? I thought she needed to see the chest hair for herself. I... say again? I thought she needed to hear it from the horse's mouth, as it were. I also knew she would ask you to help us. Help the Inquisition? Me? A crazy thought, I know. Yet here you are. Varric, you joined the Inquisition when Seeker Pentagast questioned you. Oh, she was very insistent that I help. Interesting. What's interesting? It's surprising that an elven apostate is the one who joined the Inquisition voluntarily. Is it true that the entire dwarven economy relies upon lyrium? Well, mostly. We've got the Nug market cornered as well. And the dwarves of Orzammar have never studied lyrium? Well, if they have, they certainly haven't shared anything up here. Why? It is the source of all magic, save that which mages bring themselves. Dwarves alone have the ability to mine it safely. I wondered if they had sought to learn more. Uh, the folks back in Orzammar don't care much about anything but tradition. Do you ever miss life beneath the earth? The call of the stone? Nah, whatever the stone, capital S, is, it was gone by the time my parents had me. But do you miss it? How could I miss what I never had? But say I did have that sense, that connection to the stone. What would it cost me? Would I lose my friends up here? Would I stop telling stories? I like who I am. If I want to hear songs, I'll go to the tavern. You are wiser than most. I find the fall of the Dwarven lands confusing. What's so confusing about endless darkspawn? A great deal. Although that is a different matter. Dwarves control the flow of Lyrium. They could tighten their grip on it. It's hard to get the attention of the humans when the darkspawn aren't up here messing with their stuff. You're active in the Carter? You know your people could tug the purse strings. You could claim sovereign land on the surface or demand help restoring the Dwarven Kingdom, but you don't. 
You're not saying anything I haven't said myself, Chuckles. Orzammar is what it is. Is there at least a movement to reunite Orzammar and Kal Shirok? What is it with you, Chuckles? Why do you care so much about the dwarves? Once, in the Fade, I saw the memory of a man who lived alone on an island. Most of his tribe had fallen to beasts or disease. His wife had died in childbirth. He was the only one left. He could have struck out on his own, to find a new land, new people. But he stayed. He spent every day catching fish in a little boat, every night drinking fermented fruit juice and watching the stars. Huh. I can think of worse lives. How can you be happy surrendering, knowing it'll all end with you? How can you not fight? I suppose it depends on the quality of the fermented fruit juice. So it seems. I am sorry to have bothered you with my questions about your people, Varric. I see so much of this world in dreams. Humans, my own people, even Kunari. Dwarves alone were lost to me. Save scattered fragments of memory where some spirit cared to watch. Now I know why I see so little. And why is that? Dwarves are the severed arm of a once mighty hero, lying in a pool of blood, undirected. Whatever skill at arms it had, gone forever. Although it might twitch to give the appearance of life, it will never dream. Mm. I'd avoid mentioning that to any Carter, Chuckles. They might not take it the right way. What is it with you and the Doom stuff? Are you always this cheery, or is the hole in the sky getting to you? I've no idea what you mean. All the fallen Empire crap you go on about. What's so great about Empires anyway? So we lost the Deep Roads, and Orzammar is too proud to ask for help. So what? We're not Orzammar, and we're not our Empire. There are tens of thousands of us living up here in the sunlight now, and it's not that bad. Life goes on. It's just different than it used to be. And you have no concept of what that difference cost you. Oh, I know what it didn't cost me. I'm still here, even after all those tigs fell. You truly are content to sit in the sun, never wondering what you could have been, never fighting back. <laughs> You've got it all wrong, Chuckles. This is fighting back. How does passively accepting your fate constitute a fight? Uh, in that story of yours, the fisherman watching the stars dying alone, you thought he gave up, right? Yes. But he went on living. He lost everyone, but he still got up every morning. He made a life, even if it was alone. That's the world. Everything you build, it tears down. Everything you've got, it takes. And it's gone forever. The only choices you get are to lie down and die or keep going. He kept going. That's as close to beating the world as anyone gets. Well said. Perhaps I was mistaken. Varric, you fought Corypheus once before. Not my fondest memory, but yes, I did. And you killed him. You were certain of his death. Yes. What's on your mind, Chuckles? He survived the explosion that destroyed the conclave. If he can live through a blast that levels a mountaintop, we would do well to determine how. Even if we knew, would that help us? The Wardens couldn't kill him, and they had a thousand years to figure it out. The Grey Wardens allow elves and dwarves into their ranks? Kunari too, I imagine. They don't care about titles or blood, just stopping the blight. A pity they do it so badly, then. Would you care to repeat that? Argue if you like. Your fight against the Darkspawn is noble, but what progress have you made? Uh, give them some credit. It's not like you can study the blight safely. I may not like everything they've done, but without the Wardens, we'd all be blighted by now. They've bought us some time. I will grant them that. Did you see the look on those nobles' faces back at the Winter Palace, Chuckles? They seemed unaccustomed to seeing elves without servants' livery, or dwarves at all. <laughs> Priceless. That's definitely going in my next story. Are you planning a chapter filled with courtly intrigue? Close. I need to describe the face someone makes when they choke down something terrible. Hey, Chuckles, do you ever play Wicked Grace? I'm not much of a gambler anymore. You don't have to play for real coin. That's just for keeping score. What do you play for? Conversation, mostly. That way I win, no matter how the cards fall. That crossbow is remarkable, Varric. I am surprised the dwarves have not made more of them. The woman who made Bianca would rather that not happen. Wars are bloody enough as it is. A crossbow that fires this far and this quickly, with so little training, every battle would be a massacre. Indeed. 
I am surprised, not disappointed. I have heard that your books are very popular, Master Tethras. I do all right. I am glad of it. Really? No sarcasm? No superior attitude? We live in a dark and angry time, child of the stone. So much of what people believe has come crashing down. If you bring them a little peace with the worlds you make between the pages, you have done more than most. So here we are, Elf, cleaning up another human mess. Who you call an Elfie, Jack Hole? Not you, other Elf. What would the Inquisition do without our stabilizing influence, Master Tethras? I assume they'd just start burning things. That does sound like most humans, I know. If you gentlemen are quite finished... Now, now, don't get touchy. We're just here to lend you simple humans our help. Before you cause everything to explode. Again? You know what I like about you, Chuckles? Your boundless optimism. It's comforting that whatever qualities I lack, you'll invent for me, Varric. No, really. Why else would an elven apostate help crazy chantry folk close a hole in the sky? When you put it like that, I must concede your point. By the end of Hard in Hightown, almost every character is revealed as a spy or a traitor. Wait, you read my book? It was in the Inquisition Library. Everyone but Donnan turned out to be in disguise. Is that common? Are we still talking about books, or are you asking if everyone I know is a secret agent? Are there many tricksters in dwarven literature? A handful, but they're the exception. Mostly they're just honoring the ancestors. It's very dull stuff. Human literature. Now there's where you'll find the tricky, clever, really deceitful types. Curious. Uh, not really. Dwarves write how they want things to be. Humans write to figure out how things are. You really spend most of your time in the Fade? As much as is possible. The Fade contains a wealth of knowledge for those who know where to look. Sure, but I don't know how you dream, let alone wander around in there. Especially when the shit that comes out of the Fade generally seems pretty cranky. So are humans. But we continue to interact with them. When we must. So, who do you think is the toughest? Josephine, Liliana, or Cassandra? I'm right here, you know. That doesn't rule you out, Seeker. Cullen's not up for consideration? Curly, they just keep him around to look pretty. So, Enchanter to the Imperial Court. That's a fancy title. How very observant. Why aren't you holed up with the Empress in Halam Sharal? Grand Duke Gaspard laid siege to the city while I was attending to business for the Circle. Lucky for you, I guess. The circle's shattered, the Empire is at war, and the Divine is dead. Only an imbecile would consider this lucky. You've got to have a few good stories about the court. Intrigue, scandals, seductions. I do, but it doesn't necessarily follow that I would share them. Not even an amusing anecdote? You don't want a chance to bring someone down or boast a little? Not to you, darling. Where's the benefit there? Do say whatever you're thinking, darling. If you hold it in any longer, your face will split apart. No, no, I, I don't want to bother you. It's your face. It's just, I was wondering how you got your nickname, Madame de Fair. It was kindly bestowed by a Marquise, sadly no longer with us. All right, that's a good one. I'm writing that down for later. Am I to understand that you are writing a book about me? Well, it, it's just notes right now. What kind of book is it? I was planning on a political thriller, some backstabbing, power-grabbing, maybe a murder or two. The Winter Palace was kind of inspiring, and uh, apparently I've got plenty of readers there. I've never really done an Orlesian serial. It's a gamble, but uh, you never know. And what role do I play in this thriller of yours? Actually, uh, <laughs> you're the villain. <laughs> All right, how much trouble am I in for this book? Don't be ridiculous, darling. Why would you be in trouble? For the villain thing? Not at all. I find it delightful. Seriously? My dear, if I didn't want people to fear me, I wouldn't dress like this. The book is perfect. Varric, darling, what manner of villain am I in your novel? You're the, uh, scheming duchess? Coldly maneuvering her political rivals into a trap? Yes, but what am I wearing? You're not going to describe me in anything less than the latest fashions, are you? I'm uh, going to spend the next few weeks researching Orlesian gowns, aren't I? Yes, my dear. 
and my mask should be inlaid with opals. How many chapters will this book be, Varric, dear? Well, the first one will come out in twelve chapters. The first one? I've read enough Orlesian fiction to know you never tell a story there in fewer than three complete books. They think you're just warming up after one. And what happens to the scheming Duchess in the first book? Are you asking for spoilers, Madame de Fair? Hints, darling, not spoilers. You never answered my question, Varric, darling. You still want hints for how my unfinished serial will turn out? I'm providing you with details of Orlesian court life. Shouldn't you owe me something in return? I already gave you a big one, Iron Lady. Oh, really? Really? If the book is a trilogy, what are the odds the villain can be defeated in book one? Hmm, that will do. Tell me, Varric, who is the protagonist of this serial? You know, we're so far into spoiler territory right now, I think I'd better stop talking. Come now, darling, you can tell me. Not on your life, Iron Lady. The best way to ensure a book's never finished is to tell someone your entire plot. Aren't you rather wealthy to be dirtying your hands like this, Varric? Nobody told me there was a cutoff. Besides, Iron Lady, you're no poorer than me. I just don't see any profit that would motivate a member of the Merchant's Guild to fight. I don't know. Not being killed by rampaging demons seems as good as gold to me. I have a serious question for you, Iron Lady. I can hardly wait. In the Imperial Court, if someone uses the wrong fork at dinner, is that worse than death or just social suicide? It's impossible to say, my dear. Anyone who has ever so misstepped was stabbed to death with the proper fork. I cannot understand, Varric, how someone born into wealth and power would choose to live like a peasant. Let's be fair. I live like a rich peasant. You ignore your peers and spend your time among laborers and criminals in taverns. <laughs> I wish. These days, it's all outposts and marching. You know perfectly well what I mean, darling. Look, all those things you like about nobility, power, wealth, notoriety, those are the things I hate about it. You have very peculiar tastes. <laughs> Just wait until you meet my friends. Varric, darling, what's the name of your tailor? Why? I don't think he makes anything in your size. I want to send a sternly worded letter. Am I to understand, Varric, that you knew the apostate who destroyed Kirkwall's chantry? Unfortunately, yes. What could he possibly have hoped to accomplish with such madness? Exactly what he got. A whole lot of innocent people killing each other. I take it he's no longer on your winter's end gift list. Depends. Does a flaming sack of Bronto dung count as a gift? Only if you tie it with a silk ribbon, my dear. Your accent's not Orlesian, Iron Lady. Where are you from originally? I was born in Wycombe, if you must know. You're a fellow marcher? Wycombe is a civilized city-state, unlike some. Yeah, Starkhaven is pretty much a collection of howling barbarians. Which is just slightly less foul than Tantavale. I suppose you support the Chantry as a business decision, Varric? No, it's more of a personal decision. Really? You can't possibly be one of the faithful. I don't like seeing them explode and destroy cities. Faith's not really a big factor there. You know, Varric, darling, I read your Hard in Hightown. You did? Seriously? Most of the Imperial Court did. It was in fashion a few winters ago. <laughs> Just how much gold is my publisher stealing from me? So what exactly is the deal with the Friends of Red Jenny? Why you lot always on about this? There's no deal. You just do things. Just things? Like, whatever? Just things. Like the, what, hundred or so groups in Kirkwall that sat around all night dressed as guards or exotic dancers, waiting to jump out and hit someone? Nah, a friend shut them out. But they were legends, right? You were in Denerim, huh? I've been lots of places. Well, from what I've heard, the Jenny thing wasn't so playful down there. Right, well, everyone knows an arse or two. I'm just saying it seems like you're not having the effect you could. Well, hello, third arse. Seriously, Buttercup, nothing about the way you run things could possibly work. They work. They've done more. This is just what I do. Well, what you do doesn't make sense. Oh, yeah? Well, you don't make sense either. Yeah. <sighs> Should I push, or am I just setting myself up for your face doesn't make sense? You're... Shut it! 
You're not better than me, you know. <laughs> when did that come up? So what if you have friends who do shit for you and are organized? I'm pretty sure we were never having this fight, Buttercup. And probably still aren't. You know, Buttercup, you might get better results from your friends if you planned ahead a little. See? That's how I know you're not really one of us. You think like a noble. Nah, I'm more of a pretender, really. You what? I'll keep acting like a big shot and hope it sticks. That's pretty much how the surface dwarf thing works. Doesn't matter. Point is, if you put a little work in, you could pull off much bigger pranks. Think about it. So you bagged the silver, sent letters the first night, then six friends by the river? Bartered the keys and never even saw Lordy. Half the fun, but that's all right. Twice the take. Ah, oh, that was just the start, Buttercup. A maneuver to increase pressure and reward in a secondary caper. Yeah. A what? You two aren't causing too much trouble, I hope. Causing? No. Harnessing is a better word. Smarty Pants here really knows how to ring them out. I'm sure this spirit of cooperation will benefit the Inquisition somehow. I would say we have indeed made investments that will flower in future dividends. I'm buying you two crowns. Do you think anyone heard? Yes, but if you plan it right, it doesn't matter. Then you publish. That problem you had down the Banorn? Fixed it. Now why would you think I had concerns out that way? I'm still better at having chatty friends. Anyway, your caravan got away. Hypothetically, how many people did that cost? One angry cook and a side of bad pork. The shit stop a search as well as anything. Not every plan needs days and ropes and stuff. So, Bianca. <laughs> nope, not going there. That's what she said. Probably. Because you two are friggin' weird. Fair point, Buttercup. Fair point. Why don't you have real Bianca instead of fingering your fake? That's complicated. But you handle things. Secret network and all that. Dwarven ways are dug in deep. Let's just say I don't quite have the reach. She lacks a certain flexibility. Pity. Now I wonder how you two look naked. <laughs> We're dwarves, so like I said, I don't have the... You know, I'll just leave that one to you. What? Who names their bow? It's just a thing. That's stupid. It's a crossbow. One of a kind. And far smarter than current company. Oh, kiss it already. And tell Booty, Coty, and other Booty, I'm real sorry. We're a very forgiving family. Dwarves are weird. No argument here. Oh, you're doing this wrong. I think it bugs her that dwarves are so smooshy. We are adorable. You? You're just itchy. With your hair and words. But still irresistibly cute. It's my burden to bear. Be careful, Buttercup. These sorts of romances don't often end well. What sorts? What are you on about now? You've bagged yourself a rare breed, the driver of a story, a protagonist. And a good story. Well, that's about hurting good characters and seeing how they react. I've seen it and wrote it a thousand times. Expect some dramatic bumps in the road, that's all. She's human. Not whatever you said, weirdy. La 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 la, sentinels are shits. Like it or not, Buttercup, that's where you come from. Says the undwarfiest dwarf ever. Uh, fair enough. Paragons can be shits too. Aren't you supposed to tell fun stories? Why are they all so boring? See, I I'd be offended if I didn't know your boring actually means made of words. Buttercup, the kitchen's missing all their lard. Was that you? <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't even want to ask what you did with it. I just want to say, uh, nice work. So why are you here, slumming it with us lowlies? Get your fun that way. You've seen nobles. You think I'd get any fun hanging out with them? Right. Them. Enjoying the Inquisition so far, Buttercup? Oh, sure, right? Happy as a pig in clover. Shit. The phrase is commonly happy as a pig in shit. Really? Ugh. Nature's rubbish. No argument there. All right, why buttercup? Uh, you seem the type. Or exactly not the type. I forget how these things are supposed to work sometimes. You don't forget anything. And you noticed. That's why you're buttercup. I don't know why you're so smug. I know way more people than you. Quality over quantity.
Winner over loser. I read one of your books, Varric. The whole book? Shut it. Anyway, it was boring. Your adventures are boring. I've seen way better just walking around. Well, that's because you do things. Escapist fiction for you would be cross-stitch or knitting. Oh, knitting is brilliant. It's stabby sewing. Oh, I get it. All right. You have better friends somewhere else. I'm not used to being so uninvolved in my own conversations. What did I do now? Oh, growly. Never eye to eye. You miss people. Fine. Are you full up or something? Look, Buttercup, it's hard to start a new story before you set down the old one. Ugh, again with books. Get a ruddy shelf, you know, that holds more than one. That was almost a coherent metaphor. Piss off. Oh, thanks. Oh, piss off. You're eyeing Bianca, Buttercup. She's taken. That thing is too complicated. Lots to break. She's a particular lady, but the rewards more than match the effort. That means you agree, but don't want her to know. But she's just a thing. Someone's jealous. She has that effect. Someone's an arse. You, you're an arse. Stop doing that. I can hear how you're looking at me. You're doing that thing where you describe what we're doing. Narration, and you can hear how I'm looking. That's the thing. Just stop it. I will try my best not to do the impossible. So it was just you, alone in the vast wilderness. What are you on about? The lone wanderer searching the world. What's he trying to find? Love? Absolution? Try someone with a strong arm and stronger will to fight Darkspawn. Yes, but what does that represent? Wanting to kill more Darkspawn. Ah, you're just like Sebastian. Let's talk about your dark and troubled past. Excuse me? Well, you have one, of course. Someone dear to you, someone you failed to save. Or a grave error in judgment, causing too many deaths. <laughs> I've known a couple of people like that. Oh, maybe betrayal. That's always good. No. But you've got to give me something. No, I don't. This conversation is over. Hmm. Touchy. All right, hero. What do we talk about? What do you mean? You don't want to talk about yourself. I can respect that. So what do we talk about then? Uh, I don't suppose you follow jousting. <laughs> I'm a free marcher, remember? We invented jousting. That's not actually true, you know. It is. Before us, no one ever thought to push people off things with large sticks. Historical fact. All right. Greatest night in history. My money's on Lady Honorine Chastain. No one's ever come close to unhorsing more riders than her. I've seen her joust live, and I have to tell you, up close, she has magnificent technique. Her victory in the Grand Tourney of Tantervel is pretty legendary, but I'd have to go with Rivesa. Winning three consecutive Grand Tourneys, who does that? Could you two find something, anything, to talk about? Hey, you know, they're holding a Grand Tourney in Markham soon. I think we should all go. Inquisition road trip. There's got to be trouble or something up near Markham. No. I'll talk to Josephine. I bet she can pull some strings. Winning while barely clinging to your horse may count, but it's not exactly the stuff of legend, is it? That depends entirely on who's riding the legend, hero. <laughs> you can't really think Reevacer is a better knight than Honorine Chastain. Her record is flawless. 400 jousts, never unseated. No one's ever come close to it. Oh, she's easily the most skilled. That's a fact. It's just... Scrappy is better than flawless. I like heroes who try their damnedest, even if they fail a lot. It's easy to be valiant when you always win and everything goes your way. There's nothing great in that. You remind me of someone. Pious bastard. Wore blinding white armor. Told me my shots veered left. I can see how that describes me perfectly. It was just all that niceness. He was just so nice. Nice. Right. I take it you didn't like this person. Sebastian would have taken that as a compliment. Maybe I've been too hard on you. Oh, so you don't think I'm dreadful now? Actually, I thought you were boring before. Completely different. We're all dreadful. 
Every one of us fundamentally flawed in a hundred different ways. That's why we're here, isn't it? Take all the risks so the good people stay home where it's safe. With the whole black wall thing, you told a story so compelling even you started to believe it. That's much nicer than saying you're a dirty liar. I'll take it. A storyteller's got to believe his own story or no one will. Cassandra still not speaking to you? I don't know. It'll take time to earn back her trust, if I ever do. Well, she does hate it when people lie to her. <laughs> At least she didn't stab you in the book. Don't you mean the back? No, I mean the book. Definitely the book. Is it true that Kirkwall's Knight Commander became a... statue? Absolutely true. She's still there, bringing an extra dose of horror to Gallo's tourists. No one's moved it. Uh, I mean, her. And make it impossible for children to play who's brave enough to poke Meredith. They don't actually do that, do they? No. No one's brave enough to poke Meredith. You are quite the artist with that bow, Varric. Well, Bianca does most of the work. You have to aim her. Precisely. I don't think I could do that. To attach to hitting things with your fists? <laughs> exactly. And just being in the thick of it. I'll stick with bows. I really like having my own teeth. I've been to Kirkwall. The Hanged Man, actually. Probably been twenty years now. It was a dive, if I remember correctly. It's the dive, filled with the best and worst people in the world. Yes, I heard it was a haunt of yours. Haunt? Ah, it was home. Have a name for the sword? Slasher? Gasher? How about Pokey? Uh, go with Pokey. You seem like a Pokey guy. I read some of your book. Hard in Hightown, was it? Riveting stuff. And you only read some? Well, I uh, found it in a latrine in a village near Cherno. It uh, was missing some pages. I once met a dwarf who made the best home-brewed ale. I once met a Grey Warden who got possessed by a spirit and then blew up a chantry and killed a hundred people. What makes people think you want to hear what others of your kind have done, anyway? How do you like being described as grizzled or masculine? Do I really have a choice? No, I was just being polite. Going with grizzled, then? All right, worst thing you've ever eaten. I had this imported ham from Anderfels once. It tasted like despair, literally. But you probably got to wash it down with an expensive wine. Mine was two-year-old hardtack. You can't scrape off the blue anymore. You just try not to look. I've got one for you, Varric. Best tavern name you've ever seen. <laughs> I'm torn between the bed and bucket and the bottom of the barrel. Oh, that's a tough one. I think I have to go with the neighbor's house for sheer balls. This guard captain from Kirkwall that you're friends with. She's stronger than you. <laughs> right. Just checking. I know this is a radical suggestion, but have you considered just talking to her? No. Never occurred to me. End of story. So, worst place you've ever been? Well, that would depend on whether or not I was there alone. You're gonna make me talk to her, aren't you? Just try hello. So, Hero, you and Josephine. No. No, you are not getting me into this conversation. Oh, content to pine in silence, gazing at the dear ambassador from afar. Can we talk about something else? Revacer. Revacer is the best. You, you were right. I could help, you know. Nothing stirs the heart like a well-written word. You're suggesting I woo the lady with someone else's words. You really want me on that path again? Oh, yeah, bad idea. Let's just forget I said anything. Ah, yeah, that's some good armor. Are you referring to me? Some high-ranking women wear ornamental crap with tits hammered into it. One good shot, and all that cleavage gets knocked right into the sternum. Real messy. Good on you for going practical. I aim to please. Leave something to the imagination, too. That was some solid work back there, Seeker. You as well. The way you backhanded that guy with your shield and then damn near chopped him in half. 
You and the boss should use that between the sheets. How do you know we haven't already? Ha! Any chance I could have the boss borrow your armor later? For, uh, personal reasons? No. I'd clean it after. Absolutely not. Ugh. Hey, are you as turned on as I am right now? Am I what? That's probably impossible anyway. You know, Seeker, your style doesn't have to be so defensive. Excuse me? You've got armor. Let them scratch the paint a bit. You can wind up for a shot that'll really ring their bell. Some part of you wants to just cut loose. I can feel the frustration in your swings. How odd, since I'm feeling so much less frustrated as of late. Ha! I'd offer to help you get rid of that frustration, but you know, I'm in a committed relationship. Unlucky me. You need any help with that frustration back at camp? Let me know. It's never going to happen. Apologies for giving offense. I will stop making invitations, Seeker. I was not offended, nor did I say you should stop. So long as we're both clear, it's never happening. Works for me. You'd feel far more if I actually hit you. Uh, that's right. Let it out. I enjoy fighting at your side, Bull. Same here, Seeker. But I will also enjoy returning to the base and sinking slowly into a steaming hot bath sprinkled with rose petals. Oh, now you're just being mean. I mean roses. Who has sex smelling like roses? Violets or a nice frangipani, maybe? <laughs> Put some horns on you, you'd make a pretty good canary. I am not certain that's a compliment. You know, the Bin Hasrith are a lot like your seekers, Cassandra. I highly doubt that. Maintaining justice in the ranks, operating under a veil of secrecy, investigating corruption and threats to the Order, and we deal with it all so quietly. Most people never notice. Interesting. Though we do not break the minds of our prisoners. We'll keep at it. You guys will get there. Sorry about your seekers. It's tough when the ones who watch over us abuse that authority. Yes, it is. Always happens, though. Nobody can handle secrets all day long without it getting to them. How do the Ben Hasrath deal with such problems? If the problem's small, they turn a blind eye. Like I said, it happens. And if it is too large to ignore? How do you think I ended up here? So, Seeker, seems you have a thing for Canary men after all. Certain ones. There you go again, Seeker. Getting an eyeful of Inquisitor, but... I don't know what you're talking about. Nice try. You're on him hard. <sighs> Thank you, Sarah. He's not just an object to quench your desires, Cass. Make sure you undress him with your eyes respectfully. I'm sorry? What are you two talking about? Your naked body. Well, I'm talking about it. Cassandra's just glaring and turning red. Respectfully? That's crazy talk. Well then, go wild, you two. Knock it off, Bull. Fine, fine. But she started it, all doe-eyed and crap. See? Now he's ignoring us. You've offended him. Ugh. So, Bull, about Dorian. Yes, it's true. By all means, let's all discuss this together. If you're both pleased. I'm happy, he's happy, everyone's happy. Aw, oh, you're happy. <sighs> Jealous seeker. Jealous? Of Dorian? Who wouldn't be? Look at these horns. I see them. Yes, I know, right? Feel the envy. You are aware his room has a lock, Bull. Sure. Some people might find that useful in future. I'd rather focus on... Yes, I'm sure the room and its contents are very distracting. Thank you. Bull, what happened to the charges? You have my sympathy. They got the job done. You know what it means to put the mission first. Yes, and I know what it costs those who live to see it through. The Inquisition will honor their memory. I appreciate it. The boys would too. I'm glad your men will continue to fight at our side, Bull. And all we lost was our alliance with the Canari. I would not trade the charges for any alliance. Thanks, Seeker. The boys will be glad to hear it. You are considered Talvashoth now, Bull. Looks that way.
I admit I don't fully understand what that means, but I am sorry. The Seekers gave you rules to live by, right? The Kanori have the same. And now I don't. I see. Uh, it's all right. I've got my charges, and I've got the Inquisition. I'm good. So, you ever letting Blackwall off the hook, Seeker? He is a coward who abandoned his men. A man who wishes to atone, but lies to do so. All right. So that's a no. I chose to take him back. End of story. I cannot help but feel as I do. Sure you could. You won't, but you could. Uh, she's not going to change her mind, Bull. Not due to pestering, that's certain. Blackwall isn't even here to defend himself. Not that he would. He cannot. Let us leave it at that. Cullen's got some of those trebuchets from the siege back at Skyhold. Hey, Seeker, think he'd mind if I borrow one? Just for an hour or two. Why do you need a trebuchet? Kremso's a bit. He made these stuffed nugs with wings. I want to see how far they can fly. I don't think that's an appropriate use of Inquisition resources. See, this is why you're not in charge of morale. I am surprised you accept fighting at a woman's side, Bull. I understood Kunari women did not fight. If a Kunari woman really wants to fight and has a gift for it, she becomes an Akunathlak. The Akunathlak joins the warriors and is treated like a male. He becomes a guy, for all intents and purposes. But she wouldn't physically become male, surely? Doesn't matter. In the Kuhn, your role is everything. And do you think of me as male, then? Depends. In or out of your armor. You know, Seeker, I really like hitting things. So I'd gathered. I knew you'd understand. Hey, Seeker, if I hit a guy high while you go low, you think we could get him to flip? Flip? Yes. Ass over tea kettle, you know. I'd expect an ale cask before a tea kettle, frankly. Not over my tea kettle. Now there's a turn of phrase. <laughs> Ass kettle. Yeah, yeah. I... Suppose that could be done. I've always wanted to get a guy to flip. Your family's full of dragon hunters, Seeker? It's something of a legacy. So, when you face a dragon, does it get your heart pumping? Do you breathe a little faster, feel the blood racing? What's the alternative? Relax and let it kill us? <laughs> no, seriously. I feel no great calling in my blood. Sorry to disappoint. Damn. So I hear you saved the last divine from a dragon assault. Uh, yes, in my youth, with help. Nice. You're not going to press for the details. Nah, I can see you don't want to talk about it. Bet you look good doing it, though. <laughs> that move you performed in our last fight was well executed, Bull. I'm impressed. Thank you, Seeker. I'd be happy to teach you. If you had done that in our last sparring match, you might have won. <laughs> then it's time for a rematch. Iron Bull. I understand that among your people you are... What is the term? Ben Hasrath. Secret police. Spies, basically. You spied upon your own people. Is that so different from Orlais or Ferelden? They have all kinds of people policing them. What they say and do, yes. Not what they think. What you think is what you say and do. No. Even the lowliest peasant may find freedom in the safety of her thoughts. You take even that. Surely even you see, Iron Bull, that freedom is preferable to mindless obedience to the Kuhn. How so? Last I checked, our mages weren't burning down Parvalin. You think Orlais and Ferelden would be better off under Kunari rule? Not really my call. I think most people everywhere have a system that works for them. When that breaks, you fix it, like we're doing now. Do not equivocate. Would we or would we not be better under the Kuhn? It's not that simple, Solus. It absolutely is. All right, Solus, been thinking. You want to know how this place would be if the Kunari took charge? Orlay, Ferelden, all of it would be healthier under the Kuhn. But the war to make that happen, that would be ugly. A lot of good people would die. So I'm not hoping it happens. There. You happy? Happy? No, quite the opposite. Oh, come on. I said I didn't want us to invade you. No. You said this world would be brighter if all thinking creatures were stripped of individuality. You only lack the will to get more blood on your hands. 
Tell me something, Solus. Do you think the servants here are happier than the people living under the Kuhn in Parvalen? It doesn't matter if they are happy. It matters that they may choose. Choose? Choose what? Whether to do their work or get tossed onto the street to starve. Yes! If a Ferelden servant decides that his life's goal is to become a poet, he can follow that dream. It may be difficult, and he might fail, but the whole of society is not aligned to oppose him. Sure, and good for him. How many servants actually go do that, though? Almost none. What does that matter? Your Kuhn would crush the brilliant few for the mediocre many. And then people feel like crap for failing, when the truth is the deck was stacked against them anyway. If your Kuhn is so wonderful, so fair and perfect, how does it create so many Talvashoth? There are enough of them to marry and have children, like the man we travel with. And for everyone who turns out all right, like him and his parents, dozens go savage. Most Talvashoth are nothing more than savages. Killing's all they know. The Ben Hasrath are trying to lose fewer people to that sickness. It isn't a sickness. You are losing them because they see a chance for freedom. And most of them are savage, as you say, because your culture taught them nothing else. They know nothing but the Kuhn, so even as they fight against it, they are guided by its principles. Watch it, Elf. You haven't seen the Talvashoth like I have. Try watching the Talvashoth kill a Tamasran and her kids. Then we'll talk. You fought the Talvashoth for a long time, Iron Bull, did you not? Every day. I'd kill some of them, they'd kill some of my guys, and then I'd kill them some more. No man can kill so many people without breaking inside. To survive, those you fight must become monsters. The ones that kill innocent people, yeah. The rest, I don't know. The mind does marvelous things to protect itself. So, you gonna let me have it, Solus? Or do I get to wait and wonder? What do you mean? We've got the alliance with my people. Given how much you love the Kuhn, I figured... Am I to scold you? Berate you for your decisions? Hey, the Chargers died as heroes for the good of the mission. I never said otherwise. The truth is, Iron Bull, you are Kunari. I cannot be disappointed in your decisions. As a mindless, soulless drone, you could never make any. You are not Talvashoth, Iron Bull. Not really. Well, that's a fucking relief. No more than our Inquisitor, whose parents left the Kuhn before he was born. You are no beast, snapping under the stress of the Kuhn's harsh discipline. You are a man who made a choice, possibly the first of your life. I've always liked fighting. What if I turn savage, like the other Talvashoth? You have the Inquisition. You have the Inquisitor. And you have me. Thanks, Solus. How do you feel, Iron Bull? Do you need a distraction to focus your mind? Well, this area's low on dancing girls. Sadly. King's pawn to e4. You're shitting me. We don't even have a board. Too complicated for a savage Talvashoth? A smug little asshole. Pawn to e5. Pawn to f4. King's gambit. Accepted. Pawn takes pawn. Give me a bit to get the pieces set in my head. Then we'll see what you've got. So, where were we? Ah, yes. Mage to c4. A little aggressive. Arashok to h4. Check. Speaking of aggressive, I assume Arashok is your turn for the queen. King to f1. Pawn to b5. All right. You have my curiosity. Mage takes pawn. You call your Tamasrans mages? Hmm. Ben Hasrath to f6. You call your knights Ben Hasrath. Incidentally, knight to f3. Ben Hasrath makes more sense than horses. They're sneaky, and they can move through enemy lines. Arashok to h6. Pawn to d3. Ben Hasrath to h5. Ha! <laughs> All right, take some time. Think about your life choices. All right, Bull. If you are prepared, knight to h4. Arashok to g5. So, you giving up the Tamasran at b5, or the Ben Hasrath at h4? Neither. Knight to f5. Pawn to c6. Left your Tamasran hanging out. And you your knight. Or Ben Hasrath, if you will. Pawn to g4. Ben Hasrath to f6. Hmm. Tower to g1. Ha! Pawn takes your Tamasran, or mage, or whatever it is. I get the idea. Too much time playing with spirits, Fade Walker. We shall see. If you have a moment, Bull, pawn to h4. Arashok to g6. Pawn to h5. Careful. 
you're the one who lost his mage. <laughs> Add a shock to g5. Queen to f3. Oh, clever. Almost trapped my Arashok. Ben Hasrath to g8. Mage takes pawn, threatens queen. Ah, Arashok to f6. Knight to c3. You've developed nothing but your queen. Don't get cocky. You're still one Tamasran down. Tamasran to c5, by the way. Hmm. I will need to consider. After careful consideration, knight to d5. Arashok takes pawn at b2. Mage to d6. Arashok takes tower. Check. What are you doing, Solace? King to e2. All right. Tamasran takes tower. Your last tower, by the way. Pawn to e5. Really? I've got my whole army bearing down on your king, and you're moving a pawn? Are you even trying anymore? Think about it, my friend. All right, Solas. I've thought about it. Ready to finish this? Ben Hasrath to a6. Knight takes pawn at g7. Check. Mm-hmm. King to d8. Queen to f6. Check. And now my Ben Hasrath takes your queen. You've got no towers. You're down to a single mage. Too bad you wasted time moving that pawn to... To... You sneaky son of a bitch. Mage to e7. Checkmate. Uh, nice game, mage. And you as well, Talvashoth. Ah, uh, king me. You're not as flashy as most mages, Solus. The Tevinter mages I fought in Saharan tried to scare us with what they could do. Dorian has this shit-eating grin after every spell, like he's waiting for applause. As any good mage would. Vivian has this little swagger, like she knows she's the most dangerous thing in the room. I am the most dangerous thing in the room, darling. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Not the quiet elven mage, though. No frills, nothing to give you away. Half our targets never even see you coming. I shall take that as a compliment. If you like. So, Solus, you go into the Fade on purpose when you dream? Just to hang out? Yes. The Fade holds a trove of memories to explore. Spirits know secrets lost to this world. Yeah, but they're spirits. You can't treat them like people. Would many not say the same of Kunari? Ah, uh, no. Because Kunari don't go around trying to possess people and turn them into abominations. Instead, you conquer them and turn them into servants of the Kuhn. Oh, come on! You've got an odd style, Solus. Your spells are a bit different from the Circle Mages or the Vince. That comes from being self-taught. I discovered most magic on my own, or learned it from my journeys in the Fade. I've seen self-taught warriors. Even the good ones have something awkward in their style, something that clunks. I don't get that from you. Maybe magic is different. Or, without magical training, you cannot notice the parts of my magic that clunk. Nice job in that last fight, Solus. You really kicked the crap out of that guy. I suppose. <laughs> what? You don't think so? You ripped him a new one. It was great. Unless the fight is personal. Violence is a means to an end. It isn't appropriate to celebrate. I don't know. Gotta wonder about anyone who fights as much as we do and doesn't have some fun with it. We have fought living men with loves and families. And all that they might have been is gone. <laughs> yeah, but they were assholes. Hmm. Something wrong. A man in the last village. Something in his manner troubles me. The baker with the squint and the red nose? Yeah, spy. Probably Venatori. Why do you say that? He watched all of us. A normal guy would focus on you because staff, or me because horns. He had a dagger up his sleeve, which no baker needs, and the knot on his apron was tied to Vinter style. I sent a message to Red. She'll investigate. You are more observant than you appear. The good spies usually are. Hey, Solus, you ever do your fade thing and pretend you can fly? Just flap your arms and zip around in there? Maybe bang some hot fade ladies? No, such behavior attracts the attention of demons. Ah, demons shit up everything. Iron Bull, how do your people put on shirts? We don't, usually. It's pretty hot where we come from. But I can get into anything with a loose collar. Just gotta ease one horn through and then angle it up. There's a term for getting caught unprepared that translates to running around with clothing stuck on your horns. Colorful. You know, Viv, you're not bad with that staff. You will address me as Enchanter Vivienne, court mage to the Empire of Orlais, or Madame de Fair. 
not viv. Oh, right, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Hmm, yes, ma'am works as well. Iron Bull, did you clean your weapon after the last fight? Uh, no. Odds are we're going to be killing something again in a few minutes. Besides, the bloodstains are good for scaring enemies. They see a big, messy blade, and they... You know... Uh, I'll go clean it. Thank you, darling. Yes, ma'am. I wonder what sort of eye patch we should get you. You cannot go shirtless in front of the preeminent nobles of Orlais. Let us see. Hey, I had a shirt in Halamsharal. In Halamsharal, you are a blade of cheap iron. When I am done, you will shine like a gleaming dawnstone saber. Wait, no. No way you're putting me in some puffy-sleeved crap. Of course not, darling. Puffed sleeves would waste those magnificent shoulders. A purple coat, tight at the waist, slashed with silver, emerald accents, open at the collar to accentuate your chest. Every woman will want you. Every man will want to be you. Well, all right. Tell me more about the coat. Now, Bull, the steps of the Dance of Six Candles? Wait a minute. I know what this is. You're screwing with me because you look like a Tamasrin. It's the whole authoritative female thing, plus that hat with the horns. You've been playing me. Well, I was trained by the Ben Hasrath. You think I don't know how to handle manipulation? Bull, step, step, turn. <sighs> step, shuffle, spin, ma'am. Are you sure you're not, maybe, just a little bit Tamasrin, ma'am? My dear, I don't believe there is such a thing as a little bit Tamasrin. All right, point taken. But you're pretty tall for a human. Maybe there was a Kunari in there a few generations back. Bull, darling, I wear high heels and tall hats. Fashion is not, so far as I know, a demand of the Kuhn. You've got a point there. Usually the Kuhn doesn't even demand pants. So, ma'am, you are right with the Inquisition bringing in Templars. Of course. Magic works best when responsibly supervised for the safety and protection of all. So, ma'am, you must be pleased the Inquisition brought in all those rebel mages. Hardly. Magic is dangerous, and with the Inquisition's alliance, the mages are now dangerously independent. Your views on magic don't quite mesh with what I was taught about mages outside the Kuhn. Life is a series of necessary restrictions, Iron Bull. The small-minded beat against every wall they find. The wise learn to make the most of the options they have. I have heard of the life of the Cerebas, Iron Bull, but I'm curious about your viewpoint. It's sad, mostly. The magic appears late in childhood, just like it does for you folks. Some kid's gone years learning to be a baker, or soldier, or builder, and then one day, that's all gone. You sound as though you pity them. Well, yes. In theory, they're no different from anyone else. The Tamasrans and the Ben Hasrath protect everyone from their own mistakes. They're people too, just serving the Kuhn. But too many Kunari are afraid of them. Not you, though. No. Anyone who takes that burden and lives a good life with it has my respect. So, ma'am, what do you think of Skyhold? Why do you ask? Well... I don't know crap about magic, so if the veil is thin or it's weak against demons somehow, I can't tell. It needs gold caps on the towers, bunting in the courtyard, and a great deal of soap. Ah, got it. All right, ma'am, I get that Skyhold needs a fresh coat of paint. At the bare minimum. Ideally, we could have the battlements enameled or sheathed in marble. But it looks good, right? With that silhouette, it's just daring somebody to try to attack it. This is the limitation of your upbringing under the Kuhn, darling. Skyhold must not merely unnerve potential foes. It must entice potential allies. Well, that's why we have you and Josephine, and apparently marble sheaths. So, ma'am, with respect, all that crap at Halamshral made sense to you. Of course. Florian's motives were unfortunate, but hardly inscrutable. But how does Orlé work with all the nobles screwing each other over like that? I mean, give Corypheus credit. If we hadn't stopped him, he'd have brought down the whole empire. Then it is fortunate that we did stop him. 
You really think Orle works the way it is, ma'am? With all that infighting, all those selfish blowhards? Orle is selfish, but that ambition you decry breeds its own strength. Those who rule Orle never fear treachery from the rest of the world. They have already faced far worse. Well, that's one way to train your leaders. So, ma'am, the Warden Mages at Adamant, they don't have to be part of the Circle? Some mages who chafe at the Circle's constraints actually hope to be recruited. Not you, though. Darling, my interests lie in the Circle and the Court. The Wardens are irrelevant to both. Well, after seeing what they did with blood magic, a nice strong Circle looks pretty good. So, ma'am, you've been in the Fade, right? Not physically, as you were at Adamant. Oh. Well, you're lucky then. It was awful. I can imagine. Can you? Because it was more demons than I can imagine, and I'm quite good at imagining demons. So, ma'am, you went into the Fade at Adamant, right? A most unpleasant experience. I know, right? Glad it isn't just me. The water was utterly dreadful, and the lighting was dreary. Also demons trying to eat our souls. Really not sad I missed that one. We have more than enough demons outside. So was it like that when you went through your harrowing to become a circle mage? No. My harrowing was nothing like that. At least I don't have to worry about crap from the Fade trying to kill us anymore. Why not? We kicked the nightmare's ass. You gotta figure any demon is gonna think twice before coming after us now. Actually, the depth of emotion you experienced might draw demons to you more strongly. Oh, for shit's sake. I understand that under the Kuhn, mages are tightly controlled to protect others from their power. You don't need to worry. I have no intention of trying to leash anyone. I never worry, darling. A leash can be pulled from either end. I thought mages in Orlais didn't fight. You're more than capable with combat magic. Mages in Orlais do not fight without permission, my dear. Some are better at gaining permission than others. So, ma'am, with the magic, do you prefer fire, or lightning, or cold, or what? The proper tool for the proper task. Fire reminds an enemy that you can destroy everything around. Lightning puts the fear of the Maker into her. Cold makes her think you implacable, while spirit energy conjures fears of demons. I like cold, because it freezes them, and then they break into little bits when I chop them in half. That's fine too, dear. So mages in the circle really have to defend themselves against a demon? As part of our harrowing, we must prove we can defend against possession and are thus no danger to the world. <sighs> Demons. That's messed up. Don't worry, my dear. Should we encounter demons, I will protect you. So what's it like shacking up in the circle? Excuse me? Well, I assume people do it, and your people, so you have to have... I mean, come on, with those... Just forget I asked. I shall. Iron Bull, stop picking at that scab or it won't heal properly. I know, but the scar will look amazing. You see, it already sort of looks like a wyvern's... <sighs> I'll just put the bandage back on now. Sorry, ma'am. Thank you, darling. My dear Iron Bolt, stand up straight. You're slouching like a sulking child. I keep smacking my horns going through doors. Darling, you are in no danger from a door beam. Just watch where you're going. I may have done it a couple times on purpose to see if I could knock the frame loose. I confess, Iron Bull, I had assumed you would not be comfortable fighting alongside a mage. We use Cerebus when we need to. That is hardly the same. No, ma'am. Fighting with you is more like hitting an enemy while a dreadnought pounds their front line. All fire and smoke ahead of you, half the enemy already on the ground by the time you get there. So I am a Canari dreadnought? I, uh, didn't mean to offend you. Not at all. I am Madame de Fer. Tell me, Iron Bull, is there anything I can do to assist you more effectively in combat? Uh, no, no, I'm good. You do so much fighting at the front. I would help, however I may. If my skills can weaken your opponents to make your fight easier, please let me know. 
Well, nobody fights well when their clothes are on fire. But honestly, I do really like the ice. Whatever works for you, though, ma'am. I'm always happy to help. I assume that between living in the circle and wherever you live in Orlais, you don't get out much, ma'am. It is somewhat uncommon, yes. Enjoying the great outdoors? The next time we make camp, I intend to construct a bath. I will need you to find me fresh water. Yes, ma'am. So, ma'am, what does the Circle know about feed rifts and such? Very little. No mage of the Circle had encountered anything like this before the breach. Well, that's reassuring. I think gold inlaid with glowing lyrium and amethysts. Oh, hadn't thought of it like that, ma'am. You're not going to start that Kyun rubbish where you're trying to convert me, are you? <laughs> uh, no. What's so funny about that? <laughs> you, uh, you aren't really Vidathari material. What's that mean? I could be a Vidi, Vivi, one of those things. Bloody good one, too. All right, why wouldn't I be a good Vidi, whatever? Because you ask questions like that. If it's so hard, maybe it's your stuff that's stupid. Hard to argue. Sometimes. You really believe all this Andraste stuff, Sarah? Well, sure, right? Then you support the Templars and their treatment of the Circles, or that? That's not Andraste. That's Chantry. Then you don't support the Chantry? Of course I do. All right. So, you support the Chantry except for the things that it does, and this makes sense to you? Is it supposed to? It's belief, isn't it? You're weird, Bull. You have all this Kyun stuff, but you think Andraste is confusing. I think you're confusing. How can you just pick and choose what parts you believe in? There's real and there's really real. Or, as normal people would say, real and not real. I know what I said. I do. Quit with the stink eye. What's wrong, Sarah? I don't get how your Kyun thing makes everyone believe exactly the same stuff. But it's the same with your Chantry. Point is, a group needs rules so you know who's in and who's out. Only if the whole point is keeping people out. Yes. And? That's not what Andra stays for. Shouldn't be. Sarah, I had a thought. The next time we run into a line of enemies, I'll pick you up and throw you. Get off. No, this could work. I loft you over the front ranks. You land behind them to flank. Mayhem ensues. I can't fly, you daft tit. Think of the mayhem, Sarah. Mayhem. I'd get a wedge up something fierce. Look, you and Verrick are the only ones small enough, and he's pretty dense. Ouch. We'll do some bloody presses. Hey, Sarah, a few fights back, did you hit someone through my horns? Probably. Great if I did, huh? Mm. What, you afraid I'll stick your head by mistake? What? No, I trust you. I'm just thinking, if you can pull off tricks like that, maybe we can use this. I lock somebody's arms, get my head down, and you go through the horns for his throat. Ew, you're taking all the fun out of it. Bull, you like overthinking, right? I've got an idea. All right, hit me. You're not throwing piss, but I could ride on your shoulders. You run and hit, I shoot. Hmm, you standing or sitting? Sit on your own horns. I stand. Right. Sorry. So we'd be like a mobile siege platform. <sighs> yes, this could work. Oh, wait, no, better idea. Ice cream and beer. Uh, sure, that's not at all the same thing, but all right. It's probably shit. It'll be great. <laughs> I think I figured out how you fight, Sarah. Good for you. You don't actually like thinking about hurting people, do you? Chopping them down? Making the blood spray. It's not the hurting. It's, ugh, parts. Right. So if we hack them up, you have to do it without thinking about it. So? I don't know. I thought it was interesting. I don't need to think about what I do. I do what I do. Wait, Bull, all that rot you said about hacking people. Yeah? You do like it. Oh, yes. Finding someone who needs killing and just taking them apart. Brutally skillfully, so their last living thought is realizing that I'm stronger and smarter than they are. Yeah, I like that a lot. That's weird. 
I didn't say it was healthy. Look, I can either press those feelings down until I snap and hurt someone I care about, or we can go find some bad guys who need to die. Right. Bring on the baddies. All right, next time we fight someone, I'm going to pin their foot to the ground. Then you run at them and shout, flower pot, as you go. What? Why? Because it's funny. Is this because I like cutting people? You're trying to make it less tactical and more funny? Just shut up and do it. Ugh. I'm not sure I get the joke, but all right. Flower pot. You've got it. And thanks. So you're free now or something? Must be nice to get rid of those Ben assholes. You mean getting exiled from my people and declared Talvashoth? Yeah, I should make a cake. You like drinking and singing and breaking beds. You'd already left. The Cune keeps our savage natures in check. Without it, if I lose control... <laughs> Heard that before. Don't worry. You get growly, I'll kick your ass. <sighs> Thank you. So you happy now, back with the Cune or whatever? I never left it, Sarah. Bullshit. Because you're bull and getting people killed was shit. I didn't kill the Chargers, Sarah. The Vince did. They died for the mission. Sometimes that has to happen. The greater good, right? The greater good can knob it. You're bedding the Inquisitor. Sometimes. Usually it's just against the wall. Bull, no. She sort of asked. <laughs> hmm. What's so funny? Oh, because you do it standing. <laughs> Moving on. I usually describe a fireplace by this point. So, Bull, you two are flirty, right? It's just friendly. I won't step in your business. Friggin' right you won't. <laughs> Relax. I don't want you lodged somewhere. So, you and the boss, huh? Oh, that's right. You and she had... Sorry, right? <laughs> hey, no hard feelings. Glad I loosened the lid for you. <laughs> that's enough, both of you. Fine, fine. Touchy. If you're going to gossip, don't do it while I'm here. Oh, loosen up, you. See what I did? <laughs> I did it too. <laughs> loosen the lid. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's turning purple. Not the first time. Ugh. Why does she carry a jar down there? Is there something in her hands? I am decidedly uncomfortable. Mmm, quite. <laughs> so, you and the boss, huh? <laughs> I know, right? Didn't figure you were the kind to bed your way to power. Power bed its way to me. Big, beautiful difference. You tell him. Love you too. <laughs> See? I stand corrected. Not sure I understand, but all right. It's because I didn't want to move up. I wanted you to go down. <laughs> what? Oh, because down. <laughs> Brilliant. That's right. Everyone goes quiet. You friggin' take that back. Take what back? I didn't mean anything by it. That's right, you didn't. This matters. You don't talk piss about what matters. Ah, so it matters then. Good to know. Seems like that business at Adamant really worked you up, huh? And Halam Sharal pissed you off something fierce. We like a guild. The hate this rubbish guild. <laughs> we should get shirts. Probably need different sizes. Mythol was some crazy shit, huh? Not talking about it. Really? That's what's off limits? No, it's just simple. Demons and rubbish. Simple. So, Bull, what are your women like? The Tamasrans. Terrifying and inspiring. They teach you everything you need to know. Give your life purpose. No, I mean, are they like you? Big and four. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> wow. Dwarves are short. Everyone's short to me. Yeah, but dwarves, right? You need two to look one in the eye. Well, they'd both have a good view. Hey, Sarah, you see the blonde a few towns back? She was easy on the eyes. The one with the huge ditties? No. Well, yes, but... What about the fancy bow on her apron, dangling all long and sassy, so someone could ease it open with one slow pull? 
You have to see the little details to get the whole person, Sarah. There's a woman behind those tits. Yeah, way behind. That redhead in the last town, remember her? Too elfy. Your loss. <laughs> How do you and elves even work? Hey, was that you back at Skyhold with the custard? Did you see it? All down the stairs. It was beautiful. You're really good with that bow, Sarah. You lay down solid cover fire. Two eyes. Helps, yeah? So, Sarah, a few fights ago, there was this one guy. I had his leg wounded, his shield down. Oh, him, yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. See, I had him. I was winding up for the killing blow and everything. You didn't need to take him. I wanted to see if I could get him without hitting you. What I'm saying is, please stop stealing my kills, Sarah. That's not a thing. Get faster. All right. You're not stealing, you're helping. Kill helping, that's fine. <sighs> Ew, parts are gross. Really? You kill how many people and one little decapitation bugs you? Killing, whatever. But when a bit comes off, it's not them anymore. You don't see that. It's like suddenly meat. No. No, I've never seen that. Sarah, how did you get an entire beehive into Colin's training dummy? I don't know. Can't remember. Wait. Do you think it was that magic Cole does? Like he helped you and then made you forget? What? No. Piss, now it's in my head. Why'd you say that? You ruined a good beehive. Ass. What? Things can go sideways if you think too hard. But it's a beehive. Full of bees. Most people would pay attention. That's why most people get stung. Or they don't do it. That almost makes sense. Of a sort. Something's funny about you. Oh? Yeah. You talk about Grey Wardens and honor and sacrifice and griffins. But you're still not convinced. Not convinced? Yes. You know what I mean. And you know this because? I'm a people person. Sounds like joining the Grey Wardens is like following the Kuhn. How, do you think? Service. Hard work for a good cause, always knowing where you fit in, what you have to do. I suppose I see the similarity when you put it like that. A little surprised I got there before you did, big guy. So how does being a Grey Warden work? I assume it's more complicated than just signing up. Yes. And how is it that you're the only ones who can end the Blights? Is there a reason for the interrogation? Curiosity. The Ben Hasrath could know more about the Wardens. Also, those ogre guys, the darkspawn that look like messed up Kunari. The Ben Hasrath aren't pleased. Few are. Now, isn't this better? Getting the burden of that lie off your chest. And exchanging it for the burden of everyone hating me? Yes, so much better. Hey, I don't hate you. You and me? We're good. Now that you know who you are, you can stop doubting yourself and start hitting crap again. Why don't we hit a few bottles first, huh? I used to think it was just me who thought you humans all look alike. And now? Clearly you guys can't tell each other apart either. How the crap did you live as some other guy for all those years? I grew a beard. <laughs> really? Put some hair on your face and no one can tell who you are anymore. That's some disguise, big guy. And I didn't talk to anyone for months at a time. All right. That probably helped. So, Bull, how does it feel to be Talbashoth? Feels a bit like I've been living a lie, and now it's coming back to bite me in the ass. What's that like, Blackwall? Calm down. I meant no offense. As you say, I know something of being cut off from a past life, having to find a new way. Well, you could have just led with that. Stings a bit. Thanks for asking. It's a difficult thing you've done, turning your back on one life to live another. You could look at it as opening a way forward, not closing the way back. Thanks. I appreciate the advice. In any event, you have the charges. You haven't lost everything. Yeah, I think I'm good. You sacrificed your own men. I'm Kunari. We don't flinch from duty. Your men trusted you. You betrayed that trust when you left them to die. No. No? Two key differences between you and me, Rainier. First, I didn't kill a wagon full of kids. My men were holding a position to secure an objective. 
I mourn their loss and honor their sacrifice. And second, I'm proud of who I am. I hope that's not a problem for you. Not unless you ask me to hold a hill, Canari. You sacrificed your own men. Yes, I did. And you don't approve. That's odd. How so? I don't know much about wardens, but I do know they're big on sacrifice. My men died with honor, laying down their lives for a greater cause. I figured a warden would get that. You are correct, Canari. You don't know much about wardens. So, if I were to convert to the Kyun, what place would I have in your society? Hmm. Ben Hasrath, perhaps, if you prove yourself. And if I don't? Oh. Laborer, probably. Laborer? Strong back, legs, and laborers are important. You can't have the Tamasrans doing the heavy lifting. Right. I'll pass. Really? You don't want to see our pamphlet, digging holes and filling them up again? You could have been one of the Chargers, Blackwall. You've got the stature, the attitude. And you'd be my boss. Hey, I'm a great boss. I'm a firm believer in No Pants Fridays. And a mercenary. I'm done with that part of my life. Why? Because you're better now. Because there's something wrong with working for gold. The thing about my guys, they're honest with themselves. You could have learned that lesson. I'd rather fight for a cause. Hey, No Pants Fridays is a cause. Hey, Furrows. What? Me? Yes. Furrows between the eyes, moping, lost in your own issues. Can't a man think without being judged for it? I'm not judging. I was gonna say you're pretty good at it. I can't pull that off. A tragedy, for sure. And I mean, if you're going to brood, you might as well reap the benefits. What benefits? The ladies. <sighs> Don't the horns make it hard to lie down? How do you sleep? Soundly while propped up on a bed of oiled, writhing virgins. You're good with that sword. Thanks. I see all that time on your own has given you a firm grip. Blackwall. Iron Ball. We could fight crime. Isn't that exactly what we're doing right this minute, more or less? Oh, yeah. You know one thing I miss about Parvalin? The bananas. They're bigger, less squishy. And Bindia. You're talking about the fruit, right? Please tell me you're talking about the fruit. I'm surprised you don't wear heavier armor on your blind side. If I did that, I'd just be telling people where to hit me. As it is, every half-decent fighter sees the eye and thinks he can faint, then come in with a low stab. Then I'd chop his head off. It's like a gimme. <laughs> that can't work every time. It doesn't, but taking a blade to the ribs is a pretty good teacher. Have you considered incorporating headbutts into your fighting style? Oh, yes. Tried it a few times. No luck. Too easy for enemies to defend against? A little. I'm big enough that I've got to lean down to make it work on most people. You see it coming. I did it once with a charge, though. Got a vent on each horn. Nicely done. Yes. Except for the part where they were both hanging from my head yelling for the rest of the fight. Ah, uh, point taken, so to speak. Hey, Blackwall, what would your ideal blade be forged from? Well, many famous warden blades were made from silverite. It seems to work well on Darkspawn. And you? Clearly a man who enjoys a good blade. Bloodstone, perhaps. Nah, Bloodstone's great at holding an edge, but that sharpness leaves it brittle. You may not have noticed, but I'm not a finesse fighter. I guess I'd go with Dawnstone. Dawnstone? That's even more brittle than Bloodstone. Yes. Really damn pretty, though. It's pink. It's pretty. Hey, Blackwall, what's the most limbs you've ever cut off something in one swing? For the Wardens, battle is a sacred duty. A vigil kept to guard the world against destruction. It's not a game. Right, same here. Do heads count? Heads absolutely count. Then, three. Nice. Down on the collarbone and through, right? That's how I get the good ones. I confess, Solas, I am surprised you decided to remain. Why? The breach remains a threat to us all. Just the same. I wondered if you might leave now that we have a plan to seal it. Ah, 
because I am an apostate. I might flee before the Inquisition throws me in chains. I take my commitment seriously, Seeker. Come what may, I shall see this through. As you wish, though I cannot guarantee what will happen in the days to come. Seeker, you initially believed our Herald of Andraste was involved in the attack on the Conclave, yes? I did. The evidence seemed damning, given the lack of an alternative. Yet you changed your mind. You also heard the voices at the temple. Is it so surprising I listened to them? Sadly, yes. Too few invested with authority possess the courage to alter their course. They fear the appearance of weakness. The truth is more important than my reputation. And anyone wishing to accuse me of weakness is welcome to try. Solas, did you ever consider reforming the circle from within? You have both knowledge and wisdom. You could have made a difference. I admire your optimism. But ask yourself honestly how the Templars would have reacted. You fear they would have made you tranquil. There is no doubt in my mind. My studies threaten established ideas. I would never have been tolerated. I suppose you are right. Repairing the damage done will take great effort. Would they were more like you, Seeker. So, Seeker, your Inquisition grows. It was never my Inquisition, Solas. You did the brutal, thankless work of putting the wheels in motion. Do you feel no regret at letting that power pass to another? I do not always agree with the Inquisitor, but I know well that I am also not always right. Whatever regrets I have, I will endure. The world needs a leader. I did my part, but the power you describe was never mine to carry. I know myself, and I cannot be the leader we need. Thus, I have no regrets. You surprise me again, Seeker. Your opinion of me must be very low for me to surprise you so often. Not low, but realistic. Very few, however honorable, release power they have won. Allying with the Inquisition is likely to give the Templar significantly more authority. That is the likely result, yes. Does that concern you? If I were to be shackled, you would have done so by now. I am an asset, if not a friend. I may disagree with the Inquisition's choices but such concerns pale in comparison to the threat we face. Now that they are disbanded, the Templars are unlikely to pose a threat to apostate mages. I expect you are correct. I thought you would be pleased. I will be pleased when the world we share is not threatened by a blight-corrupted madman. We cannot afford to let political infighting distract us from our duty. Agreed. When it is done, I promise what you have done here will not be forgotten. Thank you, Seeker. I think. How are you feeling, Cassandra, after the revelations about your Seekers? How do you expect I might feel? Most of my life was dedicated to the Order. I did so much I believed was good in their name. Now that you know them corrupt, you must determine which parts of yourself to discard and which to keep. I assume you have advice? I would hardly presume. In our travels, I have been impressed by your honesty and your faith. It is a difficult path, Seeker but if anyone can walk it honorably, you can. I noticed, Solas, that you did not seem surprised by what I uncovered about the Seekers. No, they are an organization. You think organizations to be inherently corrupt? Given enough time, yes. To survive, an organization must devote resources to maintaining itself. Those resources inevitably accumulate, until the original purpose, however pure, is all but lost. You make the Seekers sound like a mindless beast. A beast, no matter how mindless, will die and give way to a successor. An organization is eternal. There are always corrupt men who hoard power for their own gain. And there are always honorable men who hoard power to fight them. Solas, I am sorry about your... friend. Thank you. I knew demons and spirits were similar, but I did not know one could become the other so easily. Not similar, Seeker. The same. The Chantry sees black and white, but nature is, and always has been, grey. A spirit is a purpose. A demon is that purpose perverted. That might be true with the spirit of compassion, but what is the purpose of a hunger demon? Survival. Satiation. The pleasure of taste, of feeding. True hunger, however, is much darker. Think of all those who starve in this world. Mankind has itself to blame for the existence of demons. 
I had not considered how fighting in our world might affect the fade. Is it always thus, Solas? It is worse this time, with the breach pulling spirits through against their will. But yes, every war, no matter how just, leads to hunger and rage, and so come the demons. It is said that generals should avoid fighting in the same battlefield too many times. The deaths, the rage, all of it weakens the veil. But nothing is ever said of the effect war has upon the world of spirits, what we might be doing to them. Every war has unintended victims. All too many go unnoticed. You seem troubled, Seeker. Still plagued by thoughts of your order? I am reminded of what I was told following my vigil. They said my abilities were a gift from the Maker, a reward for my faith and dedication. But it was a trick, wasn't it? A ritual no different than the harrowing, simply magic. You should be proud having accomplished something so remarkable. Not ashamed it was not what you thought. Thank you, Solas. That does make me feel better. Your faith does you credit, Cassandra. I hope your maker is worthy. Solas, I assume you know it's possible to reverse the right of tranquility. I did hear what you learned, yes. I know of only one mage thus cured, and... He had no control of his emotions. He was distraught. Do you think that would have passed, if the tranquil are cured only to end up thus? They would be a danger to themselves and others, yes. It is difficult to say. In your vigil, you were tranquil for but a moment. They have suffered much longer. Such control is like a muscle, atrophying without use. Given time, it might be restored, but until then... That may be a risk we are obligated to undertake. They will be grateful, even the ones who do not survive. I admit, I know little of their meaning, but I did not think it was possible to remove Dalish tattoos. Most Dalish would agree with you, and see little value in doing so. Then how? It was done in a private moment. I would rather not discuss it. Of course, I should not have asked. You seem troubled. Yes. The Inquisitor... He seems... Do you trust ancient elven magic, Seeker? You know me well enough to know the answer. Then you will understand if my concerns are not dismissed so easily. Did the well fill you with a sense of comfort, Seeker? Such rash actions will only... will only worry you as well. Uh, yes, I suppose they will at that. It was Justinia's likeness. If we had not been in the Fade... Tell me, Solas... You met the spirit in the Fade. Could it have been Justinia? If you are looking for certainty, Cassandra, I cannot help you. She helped us, as Justinia would have. Then spirit or no, her actions were worthy of respect. <sighs> I suppose that is all we will ever know. You don't think much of the Grey Warden, Solas. They are fools, a fact only amplified by Corypheus's meddling. I am not blind to their failings. But Hawk and the Inquisitor are alive now because... Because Alistair's actions define a single man. The Warden's insistence on tampering with forces they do not understand. That is what defines their order. A harsh assessment, but after adamant, perhaps not undeserved. Solas, if you do not mind me asking, what do you believe in? Cause and effect. Wisdom as its own reward, and the inherent right of all free-willed people to exist. That is not what I meant. I know. I believe the elven gods existed, as did the old gods of Devinter. But I do not think any of them were gods, unless you expand the definition of the word to the point of absurdity. I appreciate the idea of your maker, a god who does not need to prove his power. I wish more such gods felt the same. You have seen much sadness in your journeys, Solas. Following the maker might offer some hope. I have people, Seeker. The greatest triumphs and tragedies this world has known can all be traced to people. Solas, what do you think this Corypheus actually is? A darkspawn, as he appears. But what of the orb he wields and the dragon he commands? This is no ordinary darkspawn. His true advantage is the red lyrium. It is corrupted by the blight as he is. Thus he taps into its power twofold. Whatever he was before, that is what makes him dangerous now. Solas, the dragon Corypheus commands, could it truly be an archdemon? 
One assumes that if it were, we would be facing a blight. So what is it then? A corrupted dragon? Simply another darkspawn? It is connected to Corypheus. Such a relation goes beyond mere control. It is a bond. It makes you wonder if that's all the archdemons themselves are, pets to beings who no longer exist. I would not go as far as that. This dragon is a replica, spawned from a creature who aspires to greatness. No more. You fight hard, Seeker. We would be dead if I did not. You say you've witnessed past events in the Fade, Solas, or the memories of them. But the Fade distorts reality. Surely it cannot offer a true reflection of what occurred. Are your own memories any different? The truth is never precise, regardless of where you are. It is a comfort to have you present on our journeys, Seeker. You so rarely call me by my name, Solas. Why is that? Manners, perhaps. Manners have not held you back on other occasions. I say what I believe to be true, even if it gives offense to those who prefer the lie. But there is no lie in what you are. Your position is an honorable one, and well earned. Solas, have you always lived alone? Out in the wilderness, as an apostate? For the most part. Would that not be incredibly trying? People can be trying. Mankind, most of all. That is an excellent point. I've wondered, how did you know to approach us, Solas? The breach opened, we were scrambling and barely had time to think, and there you were. I went to see the breach for myself. I did not know you would be there. You must not have been far away. I was not. I'd come to hear of the conclave, but did not want to get close. Hmm. Lucky for us, then. Did you believe the conclave could achieve peace, Cassandra? I had hope, as did we all. The Templars went to war to force mages back into their circles, which the mages would never agree to. What solution could Divine Justinia have offered when all sides rejected compromise? The war was going nowhere for either side. That they went at all showed they realized this. Or they believed the other side would relent. We shall never know now. Your abilities are remarkable, Seeker. It is fascinating to see how you and the Templars negate magic. Have you never encountered Templars before? Only at a distance. I am an apostate, after all. And they never caught up with you even once. I am a very careful apostate. What is it like when Templars nullify magic, Solas? It is as though you are drawing upon the world around us. Mages draw forth the essence of the Fade and use that essence to shape reality. And our powers drive it back, making this world harder to affect? In a manner of speaking. You reinforce reality so it is less mutable. The Fade has nowhere to gain a foothold and the magic disperses. <laughs> no one has ever accused me of reinforcing reality before. You are a seeker of truth. It is interesting to hear a mage's perspective of our abilities, Solas. I am pleased you find it so. I know my abilities do not come from the Maker, as I had once thought. Your abilities declare the world real. Who, if not the maker of this world, could grant such a gift? You believe in the maker? I am always open to new ideas. My dear Cassandra, I am impressed with how well organized the Inquisition was in the aftermath of the Conclave. It was chaos. I would hardly call it organized. Perspective, darling. The Chandri hasn't even found the right vestments for issuing a statement on the Divine's death. Being more flexible than the Chantry is not a difficult goal. Take your victories where you can, dear. Were you well acquainted with Divine Justinia, Cassandra? I cannot claim to have known her well. Few can, except perhaps Leliana. I envy even your slight acquaintance. By reputation, she was a formidable woman. Justinia was a visionary. The Grand Clerics would never have chosen her had they known her intentions. And now they will never find someone to fill her shoes. Oh, they will, darling. Even if they have to trim off her toes and heels to fit. I wonder, Cassandra, that you did not put yourself forward to lead the Inquisition while Divine Justinia was forming it. The Divine wanted a heroic figure all of Thedas could rally behind. How do you fall short of that description, my dear? Did you not single-handedly save the capital of Orlais? That was hardly single-handed, Vivian. Yet still heroic. Many in the Empire remember you fondly. <laughs> a perception that would last until the moment they met me, I assure you. You are too modest, Cassandra, dear. To many, you're a figure of awe. 
You should make use of that. I use it in the service of the Inquisition, when I must. But you don't seem to enjoy it. You really ought to have more fun, darling. How is manipulating and bullying people supposed to be enjoyable? I assure you, there are few pleasures comparable to restoring order with one's own hands. You've done a fine job thus far, Seeker, but you could stand to be slightly more amiable. Were you not suggesting earlier I should be more intimidating? Of course, darling. One must never be too charming or people lose respect. Too intimidating, however, and you'll never be invited to anything. Then you may as well be dead in a ditch. If I am never invited to another Olysian salon, I will consider that a success. The game is played to the death, my dear. Like it or not, you are part of it. Do you actually see me playing the game, Vivian? Not now, perhaps, but you could. Wearing ball gowns and painted masks, decking myself in jewels and curtsying to suitors. It is a battle, my dear. The armor and the weapons differ, but just as much blood is spilled. I never thought of it quite like that. You are a warrior, Cassandra. You'll be one whether you dress in steel or lace. I've thought about what you said before, Vivian. About my suggestion that you play the game. The ball at Halam Shiral reminded me how much I hate all of it. Me? In a dress? It's ludicrous. Don't sell yourself short, Cassandra. Of course, you would say that. He's a man, darling. All men appreciate a touch of skilled artifice. They can keep their appreciation. I like my armor. I'd like to see that. At least once. Oh, not you too. I suggest a vibrant red, darling. Not too deep in the neckline, mind. Ugh. You don't need to prove anything, Cassandra. Exactly. I do not trust any event where hitting someone isn't an option. You're not a battering ram, darling. I am when it suits me. Nobody expects a battering ram to wear a dress. It's disappointing. But perhaps some battles should be left to those more suited. My thoughts exactly. Vivian, about you and Duke Bastien. There's no need to tiptoe, darling. You were together a long time? We were, yes. And I will cherish the years we had. Are you? More questions, my. Aren't we curious today? Seeking guidance in matters of the heart? I only wish to express my sympathy, Vivian. It will be fine, dear. She is also a woman of strong convictions and great faith. A statement one could make about any wide-eyed lay sister. She is also an intelligent woman with strong convictions. Important qualities for whomever takes the sunburst throne. The divine stands apart. She must command respect and attention or she will accomplish nothing. Which means we have two fine candidates, wouldn't you agree? The decision rests in the hands of the Grand Clerics. Such modesty. The Chantry needs to change and I would see it done, but if I am chosen, then I pray it is the Maker's will and not ambition that guides me there. You made quite the impression at the Winter Palace. <laughs> when I punched the wall, perhaps. Not the most distinguished impression, certainly, but given your discomfort, I expected worse. I did not realize it took so little to exceed your expectations. Come, my dear, there's no need to be touchy. You'll do far better next time. Did you think you could dance with one of the most powerful men in Southern Thedas and go unnoticed? They were all talking, weren't they? It was on the lips of half the court before the song was done. It could have taken a day or two for news to reach the capital, given the disruptions of the Civil War. Oh, sweet maker. You weren't aiming for discretion, darling, were you? I do hope you intend to rebuild your Seekers, Cassandra. Rebuilding is not enough. I would see the Seekers forged into something greater than what they were. I'm pleased to hear it, my dear. With the Templars all but lost, we'll need someone to deal with dangerous magic. I fear the Seeker's time has passed. If there was something worth saving, it is gone now. With the Templars all but lost as well? The threat posed by dangerous magic still exists, my dear. Someone will have to deal with it. Then let it be someone worthy. Oh, at least the Inquisition had the sense to ally with the Templars. When this is all over, there will still be someone capable of dealing with magical threats. You know, Cassandra, you really ought to have armor with gilding. Or dragon scales, preferably both. Would that not be impractical? It would be dramatic, my dear. Half the value of armor is intimidation. I prefer the half that keeps blades out of my innards, personally. My dear Cassandra, whatever persuaded you to bring Varric to the Conclave? 
I wanted him to testify about the events at Kirkwall to the Divine. He wrote all of that down, did he not? He didn't need to come in person. The Divine also wanted him to autograph her copy of Hard in Hightown. What? You never told me that. It was a minor consideration. You should feel flattered. That our former Divine kidnapped and brutalized her favorite authors? Oh, yes. <laughs> Thrilled. So you are 78 in line to the Navarran throne, Cassandra. That is rather far off. Even so, many enjoy the idle life afforded by the most distant of titles. You could have been provided with every luxury if you'd remained in that life. I am ill-suited to finery, Vivian. Besides, I can accomplish more as I am now. You pursued duty and responsibility, a path that took you next to the sunburst throne. Well played. I try to do the maker's work. Where I stand while doing so is unimportant. You must admit, it does help. You've adjusted to the Inquisition quickly, Vivian. We must lack many of the luxuries to which you are accustomed. One does not survive the Orlesian court without learning to adapt, my dear. <laughs> Skyhold is hardly the Orlesian court. You needn't tell me that. We all have our little sacrifices. I've heard your uncle is a mortalitasi, Cassandra. You've heard correctly. Necromancy is not uncommon in Nevara. You must understand the rumors in the south surrounding Mortalitasi. I have always found the practice morbid, but the stories one hears outside Navarra. Such fascinations reveal far more about the teller than the truth. You would prefer to have the Templars return to guarding the circles, Vivienne? Of course, my dear. They need better oversight, clearly. But one does not throw away a tool because it was misused. Few mages would ask for Templars in the circle. Speak to Ferelden's first enchanter. You might be surprised. When abominations ravage your tower, suddenly the world holds far too few Templars. You must see the value in restoring the circles, Cassandra. Provided they fulfill their purpose. Too many have suffered since the Mage Rebellion began. But we cannot ignore the abuses that prompted it. Without change, we risk repeating the events at Kirkwall. Or recreating its opposite. An overly lenient circle is a comparable threat. Kirkwall was lamentable, but it was the blithe misuse of power, not restrictions, that led to the first blight. You are not from Orlay originally, Vivian. Neither are you, clearly. I ask because of your accent. I would have thought, once you joined the court... That which makes you different can be a burden or a source of strength, my dear. Which is up to you. I wish someone had told me that when I was younger. I assume your parents were Riveni, Vivian. They were merchants, originally from Desmuid, or so I'm told. You don't remember? I was taken to the Ostwick Circle when I was very young. So far as I'm concerned, my life began there. Cassandra, you do know they still tell tales of the dragon attack on Val Royau. I'm aware. I'm also aware they grow larger with each retelling. Many yet live who saw it with their own eyes. From what I've heard from so-called witnesses, I have to wonder. You are too modest, dear. You could have parlayed that victory into more than a position at the Divine's right hand. If I were someone else, perhaps. I simply did what I needed to do. I'm curious, Cassandra. Why were you not at the Conclave? Liliana and I were delayed returning from Kirkwall. Delayed by interrogating a certain dwarf specifically. A rather fortunate delay, it turns out. I'm not so certain. If we had only... You must not blame yourself, dear. You have done all you could, and more. Thank you. But I suspect I will be telling myself that for years to come. You're smirking again, like in that fight before. What's so funny? The simplest spell had you white as a sheet. I've shrugged off worse in practice. Well, sorry I'm scared of the stuff I've been warned about my whole life, like most people who aren't seekers. I apologize. I could help if you're willing. <laughs> no, I have things to do. You can help by standing in front of me. <laughs> that I can do. You know, you shouldn't make fun of people being scared of magic just because you can scare them back. I take it you think I'm frightening. Not naked, you're well fit, but all armoured up and fierce. What do you think some stable boy sees? A seeker on the side of righteousness. Here's what I learned in the alleys. Ah, mages. Ah, Templars. Ah, Tevinters. Ah, hungry. When you're little, everything is. Ah!
Sarah, I'm sorry. Who's what now? My family is nobility. I've been in secret training since I was six. I walked with the divine. I've never considered what I must look like to someone common. I must indeed seem terrifying. Nah, you're all right. Skip the someone common bit, though. Makes you seem a bit of a shit. What was she like? The divine, I mean. Was she as pretty as her plates? Pretty as her what? Her plates with her portrait on. They sold them down the shops in Val Royo. You'd see them on walls a lot. Cost a bundle and you couldn't even eat off them. Well, part of them. The yellowy brown paint's poisonous. Had to keep your mash off her eyes. They put Most Holy's portrait on plates. You good yet, Cassandra? Can you tell me what she was like? Who? Oh, the divine. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm not used to such unorthodox displays of faith. Most Holy was a visionary. I served as her right hand and would have done so as long as she needed me. But you didn't know her. I just said I served as her right hand. Fine, whatever, I'll ask Leliana. You can tell there was something with those two. Family pain there. I... You were right, Sarah. I don't know that I knew Divine Justinia at all. Shame, right? She was pretty. Sarah, about you and the Inquisitor... Right, here we go. What is it from you? If you are going to pursue this, make it worth it. Be happy. You cagey, boxed up, kissy, romantic. Oh, there's no need to tell anyone that. Who doesn't already know, that is. Who hasn't already seen your collection of books. No need, because it's hardly a secret, my dear. Hey, Inky, we're telling anyone. Does yelling it while we walk around count? No, wait, yes. Sorry, Cassandra, but thanks. Not a soul, Sarah. Ah, but you heard it, right? I heard it. Thanks, Cassandra. You have a thing for the Inquisitor. His thing and your thing doing things. Nothing so base as that. Aw, sorry to hear it. How's that Temple of Demon rubbish sitting with you, Cassandra? I have faith the Inquisitor did as he thought best. Really? Lady trained from birth has no problem with a temple to everything the Chantry says is shit. I did not say I had no problem. I said... I have faith. Stop pointing that at me. What are you talking about? My weapon's nowhere near. Your face, that sobby pity face. Why are you aiming it at me? I know what occurred in the Fade troubled you. If you ever wish to talk... It's nothing. Just scary rubbish demons that are done. We got out. Mostly. There, talked. Now everything is good. Right? Of course. Good. We're all good. Phew. I know what happened at Adam and troubled you. If you ever wish to talk... She came back. That's all that matters. Maybe it's you who's still shaky. Everyone just needs to not think about it and feel better. You're right. I do feel better now. Hey, Cassandra. Were those really all your names, or were you having them on? Having who on? At the Winter Palace. Were you having them on, or are you really Cassandra, Allergy, Porter, Philomajig, Pentagast? I really am. My family is as pretentious as it is large. <laughs> How do you remember them all? I have them stitched into all my clothes. Hey, Inquisitor, is that true? Do they fit across their underpants? You will not answer that. <laughs> no way that fits across your breeches. <laughs> So you and the Inquisitor don't seem so, you know, anymore. Some things cannot last. Right, yeah. So is this awkward, or...? Cassandra and I are still friends. I hope. I hope so, too. That's not so bad, then. Surprising you would say that. Right. Awkward it is. You're making it awkward. I am not. Well, now it is, but you said it. Perhaps this would be a good time to stop talking. Sure. It's fine, Sarah, but this isn't the place to discuss it. You need a drink or something? You tell me. Sarah, I was speaking with Dagnar recently. Did you take some of her tools? Just the thing that removes the screw bits. I thought I'd put it back. I'll put it back. Why did you have it in the first place? Needed it for the hinges. 
What hinges? Like on a door. Don't worry, it's not for you. That's comforting. Cassandra, have you ever punched a bear? What? No, why would I? Well, what's it for then? The training, I mean. You stand harder than Cullen's soldiers. Must be for something. I am a seeker in service of the divine. I am a warrior of truth. All right, all right. Just seems like you could punch a bear if you wanted. Sarah, why would you assume I should use my training to assault an animal? What, the punch a bear thing? I don't know. I just figured you'd want to know if you could. I mean, I sometimes put an arrow just to see if I can hit something. Oh, did Andraste say not to use your training for fun? Fun for you, I mean. Probably not fun for the bear. You've got some reach on you. No. No, Andraste did not specifically say one should not punch bears. Well, there you go then. Sarah, how are you not dead? What are you on about? I was trained from childhood by the greatest swordsman of an age. You were apparently orphaned to the street with your wits and a quiver, neither full. You come from nobles, all right. Get over yourself. I'm not even near the bottom of what real people live through. So, Cassandra, if you were trained young, how long have you been giving Andraste's hairy eyeball? Andraste's what? The sword eye hair thing. You know, knock knock, Inquisition, Andraste's hairy eyeball says, What are you doing? The eye is wreathed in fire. The light of the maker and the flames of Andraste's sacrifice. Oh, you need better painters. I just figured she was ginger. She was. Well, there you go then. No, no, there we don't go. You haven't used up all your guesses. I'm conceding. I wasn't very interested to begin with. Well, then just cross your legs and guess? <sighs> conceding. I'm giving up. Some seeker you are. Oh, come on. Make another guess. Very well. In Thedas. It has to be a place, not every place. Perhaps if you told me the rules. What rules? Everyone knows how to guess, except you. Oh. Here's a guess for you, Sarah. Ansberg. Hmm, not bad. It should sound more southern. Fine, then. Hi, Eva. But you're not very good at this. I, I don't really know Ferelden that well. Just guess. Somewhere fun. Another guess, Sarah. Were you born in Denerim? What? No. Is that what you're trying for? That was the question that began this whole thing. That was your question. I just hoped something on the map would rhyme with us. Besides, I don't know or much care where I was born. <sighs> us. Oh, for me. <laughs> so where were you born, Cassandra? Don't you want to guess? Fine. On a pile of the softest gold, with big hat priests patting your butt, all singing and playing trumpets? What does that even... Uh, I was born in a carriage halfway between Cumberland and val -Chevin. Hard one, you. Right on the floor. So my brother claimed. Not quite the lap of luxury you were picturing, I assume. Three eggs, a canary, and a soggy biscuit. Are we to know what that means? That joke I was telling you where I couldn't remember the end bit. So the man says, three eggs, a canary, and a soggy biscuit. <laughs> Not bad, right? If somewhat blasphemous. It's funny. What's the old Inquisition motto again? I'm not saying it again, Sarah. Come on. Into darkness, unafraid. Around the corner, chocolate's made. <laughs> Maker preserve us. You just hate chocolate. Sarah, I noticed one of my books is missing. Maybe check with Creepy. He still touches everything. I like the stories in her head better than the words on the page. Cole didn't take it. <sighs> right, which one? The one with all the illustrations. Oh, that one was full on. I threw it under your bed. You don't know how to ask permission first? Fine. Please can I not find more of your mucky little books? Drawings, ew. So you spend a lot of time around dead people. Corpses. As Navarans, we pay respect to the departed in family crypts. Pay respect? Like pose them and dress them up and such? Not in the way you're picturing. It sounds like a big dead dollhouse. 
Dollhouses are creepy enough. <sighs> well, now you know. Rose. No, no, wait. Robin's egg. Is this another game? Trying to guess the colour of your underpants. I don't wear underpants. <laughs> Everyone hear that? <laughs> Sarah, was there ever actually someone named Red Jenny? There was. Maybe. Doesn't matter now. You don't ever wonder how your organisation got started? Why? It isn't like a chantry where starts matter. That would be giving it too much credit, that's true. I'd be careful. The one in Navarra's mean. You're from a rich family, Cassandra. Not every Pentagast is wealthy. I certainly was not once my parents were executed. You say that like it's normal. But I suppose you did live with the dead. If by dead you mean a mortalitasi necromancer, a keeper of the dead, then yes. Well, that sounds shit. Hence my joining the Chantry. Sarah, do you believe in the Maker? Yes. Some of it's a bit off, but wait, why? I just thought, the way you've lived... What? I don't belong because I never joined some holy whatever. But you're a thief. I take back. And you kill people. True, but only those I must. Ones who deserve it. Right, we're real different. I am very pleased you joined us, Warden Blackwell. The honour is mine, Lady Seeker. We need strong, righteous warriors. Now more than ever. Righteous? High praise, Cassandra. Many wardens have hardly lived righteous lives. True. Yet you give yourself to an order that would die to protect others. It is never too late to do better and become more than what you are. That is the hope. You joined the Seekers when you were young, did you not? I wanted to join the Templars, but was given to the Seekers. So you knew what you wanted, even if you didn't get it. I wanted vengeance at first, but I discovered a deeper joy in duty. That's good. Some of us take much longer to find our place. And some never find it. We are both lucky. And how did you join the Wardens? It's the usual story. There is no such thing as a usual story. A tavern, a chance meeting, a senior Warden who saw worth in a worthless man. I'm not alone. There is more to this. You just don't want to tell it. No, you don't want to hear it. Cassandra. Seeker Cassandra, if you must address me. Seeker Cassandra. But I would rather you not address me at all. What happened to, it's never too late to become more than what you are? A man who truly aspired to be righteous would not lie. He would earn respect, not steal the respect due another. So? What is it? Nothing. Just enjoying the comfortable silence. What is the matter with you? You mean me? You're favoring your right arm. It's just a slight sprain. Should be fine by tomorrow. I appreciate your concern. You are still a part of the Inquisition and you continue without complaint. So long as you serve, I would not see you injured. Thank you, Seeker Cassandra. Love suits you, Cassandra. What are you talking about? You seem to be smiling a great deal more than usual. Or am I mistaken? Evidently. And the sidelong glances at the Inquisitor? You're seeing things. The humming? I do not hum. Then apparently I should better protect my head. I see the Inquisitor kept you around. I would not have were it up to me. Such spite is beneath you, Cassandra. Is it? What do you know of me? Even less than we know of you. I, I wasn't... You have no right to determine what is beneath me. Not now, not ever. That's enough, Cassandra. As you wish. I was going to pursue it no further. Leave it be, Blackwall. There's no point. I... Of course. You're right. The way you two bicker is quite funny. It isn't meant to be. And it ends here. As you wish, Seeker. I'm sorry about your apprentice. Former apprentice. Daniel completed his training with me years ago. It must be difficult to... What makes you think I would welcome your pity? I don't. And I didn't know him. But it seems we lost a good seeker. I... You are right. He was a good man. Thank you. 
Daniel had raw skill. Everyone could see it. <laughs> he knew it himself. Quite a handful, then. You would think so, but no. He was attentive, to the point of irritation at times. He was under the impression I had something to teach him. Sounds like a fine young man. He was. I should ask Mother Giselle to hold a service for Alistair. We must honor his courage and his sacrifice. You should attend Blackwall. Why do you want me there? You pretended to be a warden long enough. You should pay respect to one who actually served. Would you join us, Blackwall? One of his own should attend. You knew him as well as I did, Cassandra. But I will pay my respects. Alistair speaks highly of you, Blackwell. He does? We just met. You knew his mentor, Duncan. Right. What was he like? Well, Alistair's a good man. He helped end the blight. And Duncan's the sort even he would look up to. I understand Logan is not highly regarded in Ferelden, despite his efforts against the Blight. Traitor is not an easy title to escape. He doesn't deny the claims, but I'm not certain he accepts them either. I wasn't there, Cassandra. Forgive me. He is your comrade. That was insensitive. Ha <laughs> ha! You're going soft, Seeker. Maybe I should have been a warden. Stroud shares your reserved nature, Blackwell. It must be a common trait among wardens. You find me reserved? At times. I was aiming for aloof. <laughs> Keep trying. I'm certain you'll get there. I notice you seem to focus yourself before battle, Cassandra. I still my mind and focus my thoughts on the Maker. I ask for his guidance. I ask to be reforged into an instrument of his will. What about you? How do you center yourself? I tell myself... It's them or you, and if it's you, be damn sure to take the bastards with you. Well, that's... Crude, yes, but it works. Is it true that Leliana knows everything about everyone? Only the Maker knows everything about everyone. But it doesn't hurt if people believe it of Leliana. You encourage it. It keeps people honest. Besides, if there is anything to learn, Leliana will learn it. I've seen her work. Right. Good to know. Could you be a little more gentle the next time we spar, Cassandra? Why? You can take it? Yes, but I'd rather not. <laughs> I did not realize you were made of glass. Bruised glass, thank you. The other day, did I see you punch a tree? What did it ever do to you? Plenty. I see. <sighs> I suffered from hay fever when I was small. My brother joked I should punch a tree in retaliation. So I did, and the sneezing stopped. I've done it ever since. The direct approach. <laughs> I like it. I cannot place your fighting style, and I have studied the martial arts for years. It's from everywhere. I traveled a lot in my youth. I miss our sparring matches, Cassa... Seeker, Cassandra. You were a worthy opponent. I have other duties. Why not ask Iron Bull? He is always willing to hit something. I don't much fancy a concussion. Wouldn't happen unless I meant it to happen. Comforting. I'm sure you'll manage. You had a brother? Yes. Not that it concerns you. I had a sister. A younger sister. She died when I was very little. Is that a true fact or another fabrication? I have no more reason to lie, Cassandra. I often wonder what she'd be like now, had she lived. If you even think about saying she'd be like me, I will hit you. Hitting is better than quiet rage. <laughs> you had a brother? I did. I still miss him sometimes. I had a sister, a younger sister. She died when I was very little. I'm sorry. I often think about what she'd be like now, had she lived. Much like her brother, I would expect. Maker, I wouldn't wish that on her. All this hair. How do you stand the Skyhold stables? They're quiet. I like having time to myself. I can't imagine finding quiet time in that stench. They're only horses. They're not horses. They're dung monsters with hooves and tails. So, you were the right hand of the Divine and Leliana the left? Yes. 
And if you joke about the right hand not knowing what the left is doing, I will punch you. Me? No, I would never make such a terrible joke. That whetstone you lent me, it produces a remarkable edge. Celestine Black, they call it. It's the only stone I'll use on my blades. You know what? Keep it. I'll find another. That won't be necessary. Uh, of course. They say your family almost drove the dragons to extinction. A shame. Majestic beasts. Majestic? Say that after you see a pile of dragon shit bigger than your house. So, an apostate. That is correct, Enchanter. I did not train in your circle. Well, dear, I hope you can take care of yourself, should we encounter anything outside your experience. I will try, in my own fumbling way, to learn from how you helped seal the rifts at Haven. Ah, wait. My memory misleads me. You were not there. You know, Solus, you do an excellent job of spellcasting without any concrete knowledge of technique. Your rigorous training lays a solid foundation true. It also creates boundaries, limits, where none need exist. I do prefer to have boundaries between myself and the demons, my dear. Of course. You endure the harrowing, where your circle teaches you that all demons attempt to possess you. Not at all. Many of them simply want to kill you. I suppose you would claim otherwise. Why should I? You would not believe me. You have learned your lessons all too well. The fact that I, an apostate, have not been enslaved by demons must be quite vexing, Enchanter. Not at all, darling. You clearly have an exceptional gift for the Fade. You flatter me. I'm far more surprised you haven't been murdered by terrified villagers wielding pitchforks. Yes, packing all the mages into towers and threatening them with Templars certainly kept them safe. It did, until a rogue apostate destroyed Kirkwall's chantry and started a fight most mages did not want. Your circle was a tightly clamped lid on a boiling pot. It held for a while, and unless you looked inside, it all seemed fine. Then everyone feigned surprise when it finally burst. So, apostate, if the circle is such a failure, what would be your solution? Would you have your fellow mages live among the people, unguarded, unwatched? Yes. And when they became possessed, or used their power to harm? I would kill them. Magic is more elegant than a blade or a bow, but a murderer remains a murderer. So you alone would pass judgment, repay murder with murder, or do we open this up to mobs and vigilantes? If you're going to dispense justice upon violent mages yourself, you'll need eternal life and omniscience. If only there were individuals dedicated to finding and eliminating such criminals, perhaps they might help. I am certain they would, until black and white distinctions perverted their simple minds. Do enjoy this time, Enchanter. You may miss your freedom when you lock yourself back up in some tower. Imprisonment is largely a matter of who holds the keys. You so often come out on top. You play the political games brilliantly. A compliment, although you speak it as a curse. You could use those skills to improve the lives of your fellow mages. Instead, you have done nothing save consolidate your own power. What if keeping my power might in fact improve the lives of my fellow mages? You honestly believe the world is better off with you setting its course. I need not be in the spotlight. But after watching others try and fail, why should I not have a turn? Then, Enchanter, I leave you with the greatest curse of my people. Dertharama. What rustic elven curse is that, Apostate? May you learn. You must be disappointed, Apostate. Your rebels have not found the freedom they hoped for. I planted no seeds in your garden, Enchanter. You grew that fruit yourself. And I will once again ensure they are protected from a world that hates and fears them. While mages live in deprivation you do not share, you lord their mystique over those not so gifted. Well played, Enchanter. In another age, you might have ruled an empire. You are too kind, my dear. But this age is still young. You must be pleased, apostate. With the Templars dissolved, your rebels will be most difficult to pacify. My rebels? Am I an agent for their cause? Whispering poison into the Inquisition's ears? How comforting. You enjoy seeing yourself as a villain. No more than any other clever man who wonders what he could do if pushed. But I meant you, Enchanter. How comforting it must be for you to see a traitor helping the rebels from within. You need never concern yourself with the possibility that your circle was wrong. It was fascinating to observe you at the Winter Palace, Enchanter. I am pleased that such engagements are enjoyable for everyone. 
Even those with no grasp of subtler social interplay might enjoy the pageantry. It is all pageantry, Enchanter. Isn't everything? I do hope you were not mistaken for a servant at the Winter Palace, Solas. Such mistakes are opportunities in disguise. Nobles say things around servants they would never say to Cassandra or the Inquisitor. Yes. Anyone who wishes to play the game learns to use her servants effectively. Although I am surprised to see an elven apostate catch on so quickly. My apologies. I shall try to live down to your expectations. Your position in the Orlesian court must be frustrating, Enchanter. Darling, I have no idea what you might be implying. With your magic, you are kept at arm's length, never able to play the game to its fullest. Some part of you must always wonder if you could have gone farther had you not been a mage. Don't be absurd. Without magic, I doubt the Orlesian court would have any interest in me at all. That must rankle as well. The Grey Warden mages must be an inspiration, Solas. Free of the constraints of the circle, they have shown that they need no oversight to guide themselves. Ah, but then they behaved rather atrociously. What a pity. I never claimed mages should be above the law, Enchanter. No, darling. You merely implied it while offering no viable suggestions for improvement. Corypheus is a complex creature to draw upon so many different sources of power. He has his own magic. He draws from the blight. The artifact he carries is elven. And now he uses a demon to create a false calling to fool the mages. The false calling was blight magic. The demon merely amplified its power. This ancient magister is like a man drinking from three wine glasses at once. And one of the glasses is poisoned. You disapprove of Corypheus using the magic of the blight, Solus? Every intelligent creature should. Yet you raise no objection to the Grey Wardens using blood magic. Blood magic is no worse than any other properly used, but the blight, the blight corrupts everything it touches. Those who believe themselves capable of using it safely are mad. I understand that Grey Wardens are connected in some way to the blight. Then that explains why we saw no old men at Adamant. You must be pleased with what was revealed at the Temple of Mythal, Solus. Why should those ruins please me, Enchanter? Now you know the elves were once a mighty nation. I always knew, Enchanter. The Temple of Mathal is just another reminder of what was lost. I confess, Solus, I expected you to be back at the Temple of Mithal. Some powerful magic yet remains there, if it can be trusted. For once we agree. Many relics were lost for good reason. You explore the Fade to ferret out such secrets, do you not? When I awaken each morning, all I have with me are those secrets. The power at the Temple of Mathal is tangible, potent, and far too easy to misuse. We are not so different after all, my dear apostate. We both believe magic must be limited safely. Only a fool would ignore such a stark reminder of the destruction of an empire. We may disagree on many things, Enchanter, but neither of us is a fool. You are too kind. Solus, dear, do you find your magic affected at all by the fluctuations in the Fade? Nothing unexpected, given the energies emanating from the rifts. And you, Enchanter? The same. Do you require a mana cleansing to remove the residual energies on your staff? The Circle's training in energy modulation is thorough. I sincerely doubt you could add anything. So you intend for your staff to carry that particular aura? Is that a problem, my dear? No, no, as you were. Solus, darling, if you wish instruction in proper magical attacks, do let me know. I will. Perhaps you will direct me to a Circle mage who does not front-load her barriers. Tell me, Enchanter, do you even bother to explore the Fade in your dreams? I prefer to explore the world I actually live in. A pity. You could be much more powerful if you ventured outside your narrow preconceptions. Ah, the temptation to leave the path. You sound like a pride demon. Enchanter, any pride demon you met would just walk away, shaking its head and laughing uncontrollably. Oh, darling, more than one already has. I'm sure you know exactly what you're doing, Solus, but a word of advice? Oh, I look forward to this. Go ahead, Enchanter. You set your coattails on fire with that last spell. Perhaps what you perceived was merely a figment of the Fade. <laughs> I would not claim your familiarity with the Fade, but I recognize fire when I see it, darling. It did go out eventually. It was not worth mentioning. <laughs> not for you, perhaps. Adathanas Elgara Masula Eva Venan. Excuse me? 
Excuse yourself. Whatever you said and what I did, same difference to me. I'd hoped, well, our people can sometimes feel the rhythm of the language, despite lacking the vocabulary. Uh-huh. No, what else is good? Words that mean things, like these. Words. Then heed is Lhasa. <sniffs> what color is the sky, Sarah? Hang on. It is an earnest question. What color is the sky when you look at it? You know, blue mostly, except for the breachy bits. And when you looked past the breach, as perhaps you were drawn to do? Greenish? And clear a long ways, and kind of felt like falling. Ugh, makes my head hurt. You make my head hurt. We are not so far apart, you and I. We will be. <sighs> Weird. Sarah, what are you feeling? Oh, here we go. It's nothing. It just feels like I've seen this. Exactly this. It happens. Not to everyone. It's not an elf thing. Inquisitor's not shaking. I suppose now you'll switch to how I'm the same but different. You are different. You are the furthest from what you were meant to be. Well, I've definitely heard piss like this before. <laughs> It is a shame, Sarah, that you were denied an elven life. Even one as patchwork as the Dalish interpretation. Who said I was? Were you not orphaned young and raised by humans? Oh, you think the only reason I'm not elfy is because I had no choice? Poor me, right? Well, I've seen, I know, elven life is backwards and boring. It is said that we lived at a pace that sustained us for ages. Well, you go sustain yourself. It sure doesn't sound like living. So, you and the Lady Inquisitor. Interesting. Your interest is not my concern. That's all right, because I meant boring. The elf always takes the elf, so bumping bits will mean something. It is not a topic for discussion. Oh, come on, drop him and rebuild the Empire. Four. Sarah, no more. <laughs> Fine, whatever. Don't concern yourself, Venan. She is apart from herself. <laughs> You're ridiculous. Not me, it's him. And you? Only one of us is looking sad and foolish, Sarah. Oh, go twang your ears. What? Nothing? Like I thought, no fun. Think what you will. It is clear I am not here for you. I am not surprised you were drawn to the Inquisitor, Sarah. Why? You fancy her too? I meant that it seems natural you would desire another elf. Hey, Inky, was I jumping you full on, or did I say something about you being elfy? You were hesitant about me. I know, right? And you're so good. She really is. You were that concerned she was your own kind? That's personal. I'm not getting into it. He made it a thing. Quiet, both of you. As you would have it. Nothing. She's shy like that. Point is, I'm with her because she's her, not because she's elfy. You dislike your own kind so much? My own kind can be a bit of an arsehole. I heard about your organization, Sarah. I am impressed. Is this a trick? Hardly, but it is an opportunity. You have already divided your group's membership. That is wise. No one cell can betray all your secrets. The next step is to establish a rhythm. When your enemies pursue, you vanish. When they become complacent, you harass them. When they are weak, you strike in earnest. Where'd you get all this then? Do you wish to be unnerved by another tale of my explorations of the Fade? Or do you wish to learn something? I don't know. Neither? Once you have the aristocracy weakened, Sarah, you will have to redirect your lieutenants. Oh, this again. All right, what am I doing? Some of your forces, valuable until now, have no interests beyond creating a disruption. Chaos for its own sake. They must be repositioned where they can do no harm, or removed if necessary. You replace them with organizers willing to build a new system and carry out the ugly work that must be done. What? Why? What ugly work? That is up to you. Do you wish to destroy the nobility, secure a title, or change the political structure entirely? None of it. I don't want any of that. I do not understand you, Sarah. You have no end goal for your organization. Nobles get rattled and people get payback. I play in the middle. Why not go all the way? You see injustice, and you have organized a group to fight it. Don't you want to replace it with something better? What, just lop off the top? What's that do except make a new top to frig it all up? I... Forgive me. You are right. You are fine as you are. You hurt my head sometimes, Solus. Yes. I have been known to do that. 
Don't you start. I am reasonably certain I said nothing. Don't have to. You're all fluttery from that Mithal place. Oh, Tavinta took our stuff. Except turns out elves did it themselves. <laughs> oh, isn't it important how grand we were? <laughs> you cannot upset me with what we found there. Oh, why is that? Because, Sarah, my genuine sorrow for the tragedy of our history cannot be diminished by a single moment. That you do not feel this, well, you have my envy and pity. Well, you just... Shut it. Think I could find some sentinel breaches. Do I want to ask what for? So I could wear history on my butt. Butt history. <laughs> Our people used to be here. It is more true than you want to believe. I bet, right? Who wants to think about stepping on dead elves? Dean Elven Emahim. <laughs> yeah, you felt that one. Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> Solus, how do you say excuse me in Elvin or whatever? For you, it would be Ara Saranama. It is coincidence that your name is within. The bait form is common. Thanks. And now when I don't say it, you'll know it's on purpose. Hey, Solus, Droopy Ears says what? Excuse me? Ugh, you're no fun. Have you ever had any interest in learning magic, Sarah? Get off. While it has not manifested naturally, there are ways to determine whether arcane gifts lie dormant within you. What? Don't make me think about that. I have to sleep at night. Sleeping would give you the chance to explore the Fade. I could introduce you to spirits. Right, you're messing with me on purpose. Why would I do that? It is not as though I know who filled my bedroll with lizards. <laughs> Fair point. That was pretty good. Sarah, if you eschew all things elven, why not a crossbow? They require less training. Ugh, too winchy. Ah, yes. Winchiness, a point I had not considered. Sarah, I noticed in a recent fight, you killed someone I was already dealing with. You were doing it too slow. Ah, just to be clear, you wish me to manipulate the delicate balance of the primordial energy of the Fade faster. You're not making it worse. It's bad enough you people do that at all. Not you, Inky. You're all right. That seems unnecessary. My dear, kindly shut it. Ugh. You can make magic anywhere, Solus. Ever piss it by accident? No. Wait. No. What? How would you not remember something like that? We were all young once. Skyhold. How did you find it? I looked. Now you sound like coal. You looked? This world is full of wonders for those who seek them. I am sorry about your... friend. Losing someone is difficult. Thank you. The death itself was less painful than what came before. Seeing a good spirit twisted. It's nature defiled. Those mages knew nothing of my friend. Worse, they did not care. I don't know what to say. Nor will you, until you've seen ignorance snatch away all that you love. Pray such a day never finds you. What happened at Redcliffe? Have you ever seen its like, Solus? The distortion of time. I have seen magic accomplish many things, but no, that is new. Magic has little place in a war between men. Many mages are brutes, seeking nothing more than a larger ball of fire. But those with imagination, those who use war to push the limits of the possible. I wish the Chantry could better enforce restrictions against its use. Such rules never hold. Any who want victory will find some reason their cause merits exception. The best we can do is ensure the world still stands when this fight ends. Those Red Templars. How could any soldier let that happen to him? They were Templars. I suppose you might look down upon them, as a mage. It is not looking down upon them to recognize what they are. Some, like Sir Barris, are thoughtful soldiers doing what they believe is right. The rest, younger sons, petty criminals, thugs, bullies, orphans, Either they are accustomed to a life without choices, to following even the worst orders, or they have learned to enjoy causing pain, to leap at any chance to swing a sword harder. Val Royo, huh? I remember the first time I visited it, some thirty years ago. The market was not half as large, without the garish statues, and far fewer stands selling those ridiculous frilly little cakes. The Val Royo market was once nothing but tents of oiled leather and mud. 
filled with ragged humans, selling strings of beads made of bone. You saw this in the Fade? Yes. I left that memory quickly. The smell. Must have been ages ago. Oh, yes. It's much better now. I enjoy the frilly cakes. Your order, the Grey Wardens. Not my order, as you well know. Of course. But you may still have an answer. What about them? The Wardens see themselves the world's defense against the Blight, do they not? Yes. Why do you sound so skeptical? Doesn't everyone know this? When an Archdemon rises, they slay it. What will they do when all the Archdemons are slain? Uh, retire? Without Archdemons, there can be no Blights. Is that the reasoning? Right. Where are you going with this? Nowhere. I hope they are correct. Sarah and I were just talking about you. We need you to settle a question for us. Sarah's involved. So this question will be offensive. Yes, probably. Sorry. Solus, I have a question. It's probably going to earn me a fireball to the face. But you're going to grit your teeth and work through it. You make friends with spirits in the Fade. So, um, are there any that are more than just friends? If you know what I mean. Oh, for... really? Look, it's a natural thing to be curious about. For a twelve-year-old? It's a simple yes or no question. Nothing about the Fade or spirits is simple. Especially not that. <laughs> so you do have experience in these matters. I did not say that. Don't panic. It'll be our little secret. Ass. <laughs> now who's twelve? I will remember this, when it is over. This? This war? The Inquisition? The people. How you fought against the tide. It is... courageous. Elf root. Do elves just call it root? No, we have another name for it. Well, that's no fun. You spend too much time with Sarah. You've seen many things in the Fade. How do you know they're true? I don't. Everything in the Fade is a memory, and memories are all too easily muddied, just like your history books. They contain truth, but reason and sense are required to extract it. I heard you in the training yard this morning. Oh, I was running new recruits through some drills. Should I be quieter next time? No, no, it's fine. Children don't learn unless you shout at them. You remind me of someone I used to know. He was fascinated with the Fade and spirits too. A mage? <laughs> no, just a man who liked eating these strange purple cactus berries. I don't think he was ever actually in the Fade. Do you have any advice for fighting demons, Solus? Survive the first 30 heartbeats, and you have already won. So I should try not to die. Helpful. I mean that demons are rarely intelligent enough to change their tactics. If you focus on defending yourself, you will see the full range of their abilities within the first 30 heartbeats. By then, you should be able to find a weakness and exploit it. Ah, that is helpful. I will try to remember that. Also, try not to die. I just realized I've never seen an elf with a beard. You haven't seen many elves, then. You haven't said much to me since... well, you know. There is little to say. I assumed we were alike. We'd seen war, knew its terrible cost, but understood that it was necessary. But there was nothing necessary in what you did. You did not survive death and destruction. You sowed them to feed your own desires. I know that. I see it every time I look in a mirror. I tried to make up for it. By wearing another's skin. You ran away rather than face what you had done. You wasted your time. I wish to apologize for what I said to you, Blackwall. You were right, though. I deserved it. My people had a saying long ago. The healer has the bloodiest hands. You cannot treat a wound without knowing how deep it goes. You cannot heal pain by hiding it. You must accept. Accept the blood to make things better. You have taken the first step. That is the hardest part. So, you and the Inquisitor are together? Yes. Is that a problem? Far from it. People should seize any chance for a moment's respite in times such as these. I am glad you have allowed yourself some happiness. I expected you to think I should keep punishing myself. I would be concerned if you forgot your past, but that seems unlikely. Beyond that, guilt is a distraction. 
one we can ill afford. What of you, then? Have you found someone to share a moment's respite? I find my peace elsewhere. You have seen a great deal of battle. We all have. Not all. Not like you. You live and breathe war. You understand it. It is home to you. What's that supposed to mean? I intended no offense. We have both seen terrible things. We have watched death and destruction render that which we love unrecognizable. It is calming to see something familiar in another. You spoke of seeing death and destruction. Did you fight in a war? There are struggles across Thedas at any given time. I doubt you would have heard of it. An elven skirmish? In a manner of speaking. And you? I was a soldier, and I, uh, well, you know how it is. I do indeed. For all your experience, Solus, you don't carry yourself like a soldier. You should have seen me when I was younger. Hot-blooded and cocky, always ready to fight. Ah, youth. It is a delicate balance for those who fight. If they lack sufficient passion, they never become truly skilled and die or leave the life. But too much passion and they end up dead, or monsters better off dead. Yes. It is a rare soldier who can fight without letting it define him. I've heard things about you, Vivi. It is properly Madame Vivienne, official mage to the Imperial Court. Yes, that's what I heard. Not the title, the snotty bit. However shall I recover from your condemnation? You're still doing it. Can you even shut it off? For you, my dear? No. If I might be so bold, Inquisitor, is this the company you would present as the Inquisition? I know, right? You people are weird. Thank you for illustrating the point. What, you think you're better than me? It's nothing personal, dear. I am demonstrably better than most. That you so thoroughly prove it is hardly my fault. Pretty sure she thinks she's better than me. <laughs> oh, this is truly, truly sad. Took your knickers, Vivi. I purchased more of a higher quality. Well, that's... You're not doing this right. Checked your drawers recently, Vivi. Hmm? Oh, yes, my dear. Although I was rather well stocked with that particular shade of viper, so I sent it back. Sent... Sent it back? Yes. It should make its way to you at some point. I was most concerned it might have difficulty on the steps, so I gave it legs. Six of them. That's not... You're making fun, right? Do you sleep with your mouth open? I should avoid that. It was heavy with eggs. Skitter, skitter. Skitter, skitter, skitter. <sighs> Friggin' stop it, witchy pisser. Enjoying your food lately, Vivi? Ugh. Shall I assume you have altered my meals, set the servants against me and encouraged sputum-based rebellion? Of course not. I would never. But you can't know, right? <sighs> Rest assured, I will eat privately from my own stores from now on. Whose idea was that, then? And whose little plan was that? Whose idea? Va mine. You're welcome. My idea? Shut it. Cruel bunch, your lot, Vivi. Don't know how you live with what they think of you. My dear, despite your egalitarian protests, you are ever so susceptible to the opinions of others. I don't give a squirt what anyone says. Of course not. Coherent speech is your nemesis. But it is clear you care a great deal about what they think. Take heart that you are not among the nobility, little Sarah. You would not survive. No one wants to join your stupid club. Of course not, dear. I assume you were properly impressed by Halam Sharal. It is rare to be welcomed in the halls of power. A golden shitter. Their servants come down the streets to drink the abuse away. You can have it. Oh, I will. And I'll be sure to entertain your requests for orphan salve or whatever you're championing on the day. You all think no one can touch you, but I say a kind word to a butler and I'm in your vault because he hates you. And I'll fill it just to watch you scurry from the gutter again and again and again. Big vault, little elf. Yes, well... Everyone says you're fat. I hope, Sarah, that you have considered what damage your dalliance with the Inquisitor will do to her standing. <laughs> oh, yes, please, run your mouth. I didn't expect an invitation. No, no, go on and on about how I'm not good enough. Even though she makes me happy, it has piss all to do with you. And then, when you're all smug and done, I'll show you how my boots learn to shut a mouth in a denim alley. Ah, oh, that was... Sort of romantic. Yes, how utterly charming. On this, 
Try me. That's enough. Vivienne, this isn't up for debate. Of course, Inquisitor. Sarah, relax. Fine. That's right, conversation over, because it better be. Sarah, dear, I couldn't help but notice you took to collecting spiders after the jaunt through Adamant. Some people saw spiders in there. I thought they'd be useful. Adorable, but manipulating fear is a touch more complicated than hoping Corypheus recruited a legion of arachnophobes. You don't need to be afraid of spiders to not want them in your small clothes. Oh, yes, we will be testing that in a most intimate manner. Ew, you're just not right. I bet you left a trail. Whatever you want about now, dear. What you used to be. Wherever you're from. Little people will know about you. We all have something we used to be, haven't we, dear? Done things we would rather let die than have known? By all means, escalate, but I will answer in kind. Armed with painful history, I am sure is better left to your own sad memory. She's freaking evil, she is. I have something for your silly group, Sarah, dear. Right, I bet you have plenty. A simple note for your Red Jenny associates. I believe it may point to anonymous holdings of one Lord Samarath. I know him. Pissheads hard as ice with his people. Indeed. It would be a shame if his involvement in certain activities was revealed. His position at court weakened. So we hurt a real prick, but you swoop in. We help people, but it helps you more. Arrgh. Try not to cry openly, dear. It's ever so demeaning. Everyone, look away. I need to find a place to pee. Could you be more of an embarrassment in what the Inquisitor and I are trying to accomplish? Everyone look over here. Vivian needs to pee. Hey, Viv. Vivi, look at this. I got something for you. Darling, it's your bottom again. As bony and sad as it was the last dozen times you displayed it. It's my butt. Maker, however shall I endure this horror? Someone fetch me a fainting couch. They'll never really like you, Vivi. Sarah, dear, whatever has your scattered mind conjured now? The knobs in Orlais. They barely like their own kin, and you're a mage. Your failing, among many, is that you presume I desire approval. Power does not require that I be liked. Well, halfway there, then. <coughs> Who's a bitch? Charming. Fact. I sent a box of rabbit raisins to some Lord Watts's tits in your name. That explains the letter of gratitude. They were, by all accounts, delicious. Ew! 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 You underestimate both the fragility of his holdings and the severity of tribute demanded of him in the past. Perhaps he was grateful it was not a stew made of some lesser cousin. That's lies, right? Must be lies. Three keys to locks that have been changed, a schedule for a journey not taken, and two names of servants no longer employed. I don't know what you're on about. The now useless items passed to you by those in my employ. I do hope you have alternate plans for the evening. Joke's on you. I only had one key. You're not so scary, Vivi. Maybe I can't bug you, but you can't bug me neither. My dear, I have not attempted to bug you. <laughs> yes, you have. I assure you, I have not. You really well tried and it hasn't friggin' worked. Got it? Of course, Sarah, dear. I understand completely. What is that horrendous smell? Nothing. Where, where is it coming from? Nowhere. <sighs> Are you all right, Lady Vivienne? In our last fight, I saw you take a blow. If I'd been there quicker... Oh, aren't you precious? <laughs> I appear to have offended. No, dear. You couldn't possibly offend me. What fault do you find with me, Vivienne? I've tried to be civil. Darling, your civility has so little to do with your faults. I wouldn't let that trouble you. Then what am I doing wrong? Just keep hitting things, my dear. Don't worry your little head about the rest. Evidently, I offend you just by existing, Vivienne. What is it you want me to do? I'm sure I don't know, darling. Do you imagine I spend all my waking hours worrying about your self-improvement? Look, I wasn't trying to imply that you... My dear Blackwall, there's nothing you can do to make your order relevant to our present situation. You really must stop assuming everything is about you. It's unbecoming. How can you possibly dislike the Grey Wardens, Vivienne? You can't seriously ask me that after what happened at Adamant. Where shall I start, my dear? The blood magic? Human sacrifice? Demon summoning? Or the part where they serve Corypheus? 
Really? How many people do they conscript in the name of vigilance against the blight? Hundreds? Thousands? For a threat that recent history tells us can be successfully ended by just two. Yes, they certainly are heroes, and not at all a wasteful relic of a bygone age. Whatever could I find objectionable? Say that again when a blight's at your door. How ironic that I thought you were irrelevant as a Grey Warden, and you weren't even that! Ah, the lady finds me funny. I have some use after all. From Warden to Jester, what a tremendous journey. You don't need to remind me that I was lying. I always knew what was underneath. More of us should. Darling, none of us need to know that much about your small clothes. Indeed, I count myself quite lucky. Few of us have the privilege of setting aside our masks, don't you think? Well, you two seem to make each other happy. And? Surely you're not ending this on a complimentary note. I was just wondering how you imagined your future. The Inquisitor and the... Well, whatever you are now. Ah, uh, I see. You think we're a poor match. Lady Vivienne, that woman there will stand with Thedas's mightiest because of who she is. She may choose whomever she pleases, even an undeserving nobody. Envy her for her ability to love freely, but recognize that envy is what it is. I am sorry for your loss. Thank you. I do mean it, despite our differences. You're very kind, but you needn't concern yourself. Did you think you were being subtle, Blackwall, darling? Half the servants are talking about it. I have no idea what you mean. I occasionally have business in the Great Hall. We all do. No doubt Josephine is delighted to have a dirty mercenary with a history of deception watch her from behind a pillar. Despite what you think, I am not stalking Lady Josephine. How in the world would anyone possibly think such a thing? It's not as if you shadow her, badly, around Skyhold at all hours, without speaking a word. But if you wish her to call the guards, by all means, continue. So you'd rather I just talk to Lady Josephine? Of course not. I wish you'd stop bothering the poor dear. There's no need for you to terrorise and mortify our ambassador when you're pathetically far beneath her. I must remember to send a thank you gift to the Marquise Tremaine. Something delicious, perhaps? I'm sorry, were you saying something to me? Of course not, my dear. What was that wonderful restorative Bastien had? The one with violets? The Heart of Spring, from Vachelle. Yes! Wait, how do you... I wasn't always a drifter. You enjoy mocking my involvement with the Inquisition. What about yours? People like you, nobles, you send men to do your dirty work, your killing. And here you are, getting your hands dirty. Curious. There is nothing curious about it. So much is at stake. Why would I leave any of it to someone else? Why do you care so little for those in need? You presume to know my feelings? It's obvious. I merely believe the world's problems are more complex than you imagine. I could travel the whole world righting wrongs as you do and still accomplish nothing in the end. Changing lives is hardly nothing. You are naive. And arrogant if you think passing through a life has the power to change it. I wish we had more proper chevaliers in the Inquisition and fewer low-life thugs. No matter how much you pretend I'm furniture, I'm still a person with ears that can hear you. You recognise yourself there? Good. You know, I do have to admire you for your poise. Yes, I imagine you do. And I look forward to the day when that veneer crumbles. We do have facilities available to the Inquisition, you understand? Bathing shows common courtesy to one's travelling companions. But I'm an ill-bred vagabond from the woods. Common courtesy is beyond me. Would you like a silk handkerchief to wipe the mud off your greaves, Lady Vivienne? <laughs> it's just mud. Mud bothers me as much as your clumsy mockery, which is to say, not at all. Will you put your shield down? The light glinting off it pierces my eyes. Says the woman encrusted in crystals. They are fine quality crystals. You must miss the comforts of your mansions, travelling with us as you do. I miss them. I do not require them. But please continue to imagine me a pampered lady if it makes you feel superior. Do you have no sympathy for the Mage Rebellion? It's not as simple as you think, my dear. 
I understand that mages are dangerous. I know that if I had to face you alone, I wouldn't stand a chance. But must it be more complicated than treating people the way you'd like to be treated? You're right in one thing. You wouldn't stand a chance against me. Look at you, all serious. What do wardens do when there's no blight anyway? Whatever it takes to keep the world safe. Like join Inquisition? If that's what's necessary. Hey, you're here too. <laughs> the Inquisition can't be all broody beards like you and Cassandra. She doesn't have the hair for it. Oh, I bet she does. Places. That's enough. Knew it. The kitchen wouldn't give me cakes because Josie, oh so prim, was sending them to allies. Ah, uh, why cakes when you can give them a two-fingered salute and a box full of dog shit? <laughs> you know I hate the aristocracy as much as you do. I hate that they sit in palaces, sipping wine while people starve outside their gates. I hate that good soldiers die in senseless wars over who gets the fancy chair. Still, it's better to have the nobility on your side than not. They're dogs, all of them. And even the primped and powdered ones have teeth. <laughs> Box of dog shit. Oh, that was a good one. So, I've been thinking. No jokes with a lot of you. I thought Josie was kissing ass, getting right up in there, but she's actually been fooling knobs all along. Good too. Milady's adept at her special brand of warfare. All smiles and pleases, like giving us their stuff, does them a favour twice over. And they love her for it. Best idea ever. Have to steal that one. Yes, Sarah. You go right on ahead. Still on about Milady Josie and her tricky tongue, and I've been thinking again. Shut up. Here's how I'll do it, too. I find a knob right, and I seduce him. You'll what? I worry where this might be going. Wait, not done yet. He thinks he's being seduced, but when it's time for slap and tickle, I jump up and say, I like your wife better. <laughs> and the goal would be? He thinks he's in charge, but he isn't. I am. I don't know what to say. Then I'll punch him to make sure he gets it. Oh, Sarah, I do love you. Hey, when this is all done, if you ever need my help for anything, you just ask, all right? Knew it! Knew you could be one of us. Us? That Red Jenny thing, I, I didn't mean. It'll be brilliant, right? You can flip some tables, show some knobs your ass or something. No one needs to see my ass. I know! How are you two? Me and Inky. Good, yeah? I mean, I'm aching. She's a handful. Two of them. I mean, look at her. She's just so smooshy. Everywhere. I mean, we're bony, so it's a little clackety clackety clackety. I mean, she's a leader. She has tension, and I get it gone. I mean, could be naked more. That'd be better. Sarah! Eee, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too much? Too much. She's quiet. Bet she's turning pink in places. Oh, didn't you have something for her? Sorry. <laughs> not really. Nothing serious. It's not about you. Probably just parts. Like the beard and the parts. That is me. Oh. Right. Huh. Hold on to it, Sarah. Good things in wartime are rare as hen's teeth. Who went looking for that? Eh? Never mind. Always knew you were up to something. Sorry. For what? Trying. Better than most ever do. I know what you did. You two, in the loft. Uh, how did you? Just do, because I know things. Could we not speak so loudly about these things that you know? Too late for that. You're the one scaring horses, getting hay up your nooks. Crannies. <sighs> I don't get it. If you want to change, just change. Why this fake warden rubbish? For one, people wanted me dead. Being someone else kept me breathing. And then, knowing that people thought I was good made it easier. <laughs> you needed them to think you could, so you could think you could. <laughs> you're smart, but you're sort of stupid. <laughs> you didn't always have a beard. I didn't emerge from my mother with a hairy face, no. I saw a sketch of Todd Reynard. No beard. Warden Blackwall had a beard. 
Oh, that explains everything. You were in Denerim during the Blight, Sarah. Did you see many Grey Wardens? Not a one. Not in person. They were killed or something. Or something. Betrayed while defending a nation. Right, well, I suppose there's worse, yeah? Yes, there certainly is. Oh, I didn't mean... You know, beardy people are supposed to be jolly. Because if they're not, I'll yank it. Understood? Understood. Right, well, I suppose there's worse. Is there? Well, yeah. Could have died defending some Ponzi fool's hat. Or stepped in shit. Was it raining? Could have been raining. <laughs> Point made. Could have been worse. So, trouble with you and... Don't want to talk about it. Right, right. It's just frig. Friggin' piss-talking frig. Uh-huh. Tavern later. We can drink everything. Pick you out a serving wench. <sighs> Fine. You can pick me one. It's rough, innit, Blackwall? But they come and go. Sarah, don't. Please. Right, right. You're set on being sad forever. But then the sun frigging comes up. Yes, well, it's not that easy. Didn't say it was. I implied I didn't care. Uh-huh, that's right. Implied. <laughs> you better laugh. Had to ask Solus for that one. So, you gonna squeeze up to her or not? What? Squeeze up to who? Lady Josie. I've seen you doing that nightly stuff. Make a Sarah. No, stay out of it. <laughs> You're all shy. What, you think you can't treat her right? No, it's not. I'll show you. I just need a peach, a ripe one, because if you do it right, ripe. Down there. Please, no peaches, ripe or otherwise. Well, I can't teach you bananas. That'd be like showing you swords. Oh, remember, do not use it like a sword. How do I make this stop? Right, how's it end? What, the tavern tale? Come on, you left off elbow deep in circumstances. That can't be it. That wasn't her name, but yeah, that's as far as the story ever gets. Why are you complaining? Because I can't stop thinking about it. I need to know the end. Why would you want to stop? The whole point of the good bit is thinking about the good bit. If I tell the end, it ends. Bunch of moaners, this. Drag out the sad shit, yes, please, but hang on to a good bit. Oh, can't have that. <laughs> Freaking daft. Know what I hear? The only thing scaring nobles more than the baddies is being asked to help us. Typical, right? Wet and running the first sign of trouble. <laughs> I knew a duke who actually had a servant follow him to war with corks in case his bowels loosened. Called him his retainer. <laughs> Did you know that in Ostwick they hold races with greased cheese? That sounds daft as anything. They butter up a cheese about the size of a small wagon wheel and see how far they can run with it. I'd just eat the cheese. It's culture. Well, culture can get in my mouth. Beardy. Fuzzhead. <laughs> Grand. Do all Grey Wardens have beards? No, just me. I stole all the beards and all the power held within. There can be only one. Not really. You should learn to watch your back. Well, you need to... Your ass. No, your mum's ass. Great. I'm glad we understand each other. I once saw the Empress's ass. Congratulations. Well, I didn't. I drew it and someone said it was a good likeness. That's a story about trust. That breach. It's hard to look away from it sometimes. Right, because you know what it looks like. No, no it doesn't. You know. Hey, do you think they'll have pie when we get back? Mm, I could use pie. Or three. That's a lot of pie for one person. You'd understand if you've ever been hungry. In your bones hungry. I like you. You don't ask about elfy stuff. Like you'd know what you're talking about. Right, well. <laughs> is that it? Dare I ask? What you and Josie do. Is that it? I saw you sighing in the wall hole. It's a casement and it's virtuous. Courtly. Couple of weirdies. Maker's breath. So much waste. 
Oh, unbelievable, isn't it? What happened here is difficult to bear. Such destruction. Hard to accept this could really happen. None of this explains how that mark was acquired, however. He claims not to remember. And you do not believe that? It is too convenient. Sometimes the mind buries what it cannot endure. And sometimes the guilty lie. Let us press onwards. Why do you call her Seeker? Because that's what Cassandra is. A seeker of truth. A sort of Templar. Didn't she tell you? I'll bet they didn't even introduce themselves properly. Or mention who all these soldiers are. The prisoner is accused of a terrible crime. But you still need his help. Unless you're taking him into the valley for a brisk walk and some air. So who are they then? Cassandra and Liliana were the right hand and left hand of the Divine, respectively. They were the Divine's unofficial agents, doing things like gathering these soldiers. For what purpose? The Templar Order was once the Chantry's army, but it abandoned them to hunt mages. A replacement was needed. It is more than that. So she claims. Clearly the Divine had something in mind for them. Let's move on. So, you're a mage. Kunari can be mages. True, though every Kunari Sarabas I ever saw was kept on a leash. The Dalish have mages. Oh, uh, I knew one once. Pretty girl. Had a thing for mirrors. You didn't know? I'd assumed if Cassandra's prisoner was a mage, she'd have announced it far and wide by now. Questions yet remain. Just not about his guilt. We don't know why he was at the Conclave, or who he worked for. So, why not ask? So you're not a mage, and presumably not a Templar? Certainly not. So what was a Kunari even doing at the Conclave? Why bother asking? You can trust nothing, he says. You'd prefer to guess? First, we deal with the breach. Then we learn the truth. We were delayed in Kirkwall. By delayed, she means we were interrogating a dwarf. A fortunate delay, considering it saved your lives. There was nothing fortunate about it. If we'd been there, we could have... This might all have... Why would you ask her that? It was a simple question. You don't think she's torturing herself about it? You do not know me. I think he's got you figured out pretty well, Seeker. You'd probably have died along with everyone else. Or stopped you. You really want to torture yourself with what if, Seeker? No, I want justice. So the Divine's closest agent survived because of a convenient delay. What are you implying? Well, survival seems to be evidence. For some people... He's got you there. I don't have the mark. But point taken. I apologize. I did not mean to cause you pain. It is a question Liliana and I will ask ourselves for the rest of our lives. I assure you. So you and Cassandra know each other? You could say that. She stabbed my books. I did no such thing. She questioned me and then dragged me here to give evidence at the Conclave. Which means you are now free to go. You ever get the feeling you're not wanted? With all these demons, why haven't you called for help? We have. Would you wish to come to the sight of so much death? Good point. Still, if they knew there was a chance to close the breach... They don't know that. And neither do we, yet. We had Kunari and Kirkwall. A whole boatload of them. They were your typical cheerless sort, then they tried to take over the city and kill everyone. But I'm guessing you don't actually follow the Kuhn, do you? You're Talvashoth. That's an excellent guess. Surprising you can tell something like that. Afraid I'll try to convert you to the Kuhn? Well, you haven't recited a single quote from the Prophet Kosloon yet. So unless you're trying to stay on the Seeker's good side, I'd say that's pretty telling. Oh, seems you're as talkative as the rest of your kind, though. So let me guess. Fellow surface dwarf, maybe part of the Carta? What makes you say that? I can tell a proper Orzammar dwarf from twenty paces. Also, you have that shifty smuggler look to you. You have keen eyes. And an enormous mouth. And clever hands. It's all part of my charm. I'm not the only one with a shifty smuggler look. Varric did not destroy the Conclave. That you know of. We shifty smuggler types can be tricky. Are you calling me a criminal? You are a criminal. Now, now, nothing wrong with being a criminal. Keeps the guards in business. 
I'll take that as a yes. I'm so pleased. You are Dalish, but clearly away from the rest of your clan. Did they send you here? What do you know of the Dalish? I have wandered many roads in my time, and crossed paths with your people on more than one occasion. We are both of the same people, Solus. The Dalish I met felt differently on the subject. What do you mean by crossed paths? I mean that I offer to share knowledge, only to be attacked for no greater reason than their superstition. Then you know us well enough to be careful. Well enough to be suspicious. Can't you elves just play nice for once? It is silence, then. As you wish. So, I take it you're from the Free Marches. Oh? The accent. I'm from Kirkwall, but you're from, uh, further east, maybe? That's quite the year you have. I'm all kinds of impressive. Huh. You just... Listening to me talk feels odd. Bonsberg? Ostwick? Ah, this is going to bother me. Is this another kind of interrogation? Oh, I'm sure Cassandra has done plenty of that. There's no point in asking, Varric. So, are you innocent? I don't remember what happened. That'll get you every time. Should have spun a story. That's what you would have done. It's more believable and less prone to result in premature execution. So, Solus, is it? You've yet to come up with a nickname for me, I see. I was thinking apostate, but that might make our seeker twitch. It is also meaningless. With the circle of mage I gone, all mages are now apostates. Yet none of them showed up to help. Perhaps they do not see the bigger picture, despite it looming in the sky. So let's say you fix this hole in the sky, seeker. What then? A new divine. Hopefully a new attempt at peace. You think the mages and Templars will come together after this? Mighty optimistic. And that's assuming a new divine would even try. I wouldn't. Of course you wouldn't. See? This is why I stuck around. All the love and respect.